as Duke, I th depending I on where it should it's be targeting central. The, I think it should be targeting the light mechs, because they can be most easily disabled by it. No, I'm looking for the biggest clump of closely things that can be, so the way, if this floats, it floats into things. Yeah, Star Slayer then. Okay, Star Slayer. So we roll? Yep. So you first have to roll the target number. Yep. I failed. So the plane gets shot down. <laughs> okay, I'm fine with this now. Bomb goes off. I think it's a brilliant thing. Hmm? Oh, by one. One. We don't care. No, there's nothing around it. Any. One yep. die six? One. So one. So it lands in between the yeah. star. Oh, so yes, they nice. does. So the central hex that it takes the specialist. No, this one doesn't actually have an area of effect. It's just three damage. So, but but it's got. Yep. Boom! Hits that, and that's that. Yep. So it blows up between those two and, and scares nothing. the pilots. They we both just run away. Excuse me. Excuse me. Our pilots do not get scared. <laughs> yeah, they're the Air Danny Light Horses. That's right. That's right. We are mercenaries. We stay bought. Uh, <laughs> yes. Unless we get a better offer. Right. <laughs> Bought until better offer. That's right. All right. So it's uh, it's shooting time. And remember, we're we 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 still hold them with that case of beer. One, you know, three. Right. Oh, or is this is there a case of beer on this? Well, no, no, no. I'm saying is that so we're we're I'm at medium range. Oh, oh yeah, on the yeah. uh, on the Ostal. Uh, he's in partial cover to me, which means that it's plus one, and his overall defensive bonus is what? Uh, huh? Oh, it's it's a no, no the Ostal three three. three? Yeah. So that's plus four plus two, so plus six plus eight, including the fact I ran. So I need an eleven. Right. So let's fire the Gauss rifle and see if any magic happens. Double ones. So that means the magic did not happen. Uh, so uh, I wasted a round of Gauss ammunition, but this is not a fifteen round game. And, so, and we uh, and, and and our radios crackle with oh looks like those guys we saw yesterday showed up again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. That's it for him. Uh, this guy's gonna torso twist and fire his uh, LRM twenty at, at, the, at the, the same target. Okay. Because I don't think I can see him, can I? Yeah. What level is the star no, slayer or is the? Uh, He's Indiana. level one. Lightwoods. In level Lightwoods. Level one Lightwoods. Okay. So I am going to open fire with the LRM-20. I need, so I'm at medium range, just at the edge of it. So plus two, again, plus four. So that puts me up to plus six, but I didn't move. So I need a nine. No, I need a 10 because there's a light woods in front of me. It hits. So the LRM-20 hits and then ER large laser misses. So the number of missiles is going to be six. So that, I believe that's 12 missiles. And those are two each? Uh, five, five, two. Five, five, two. So. Sorry. So yes, but not in that order. Yes. So 12 damage. So f first set of five damage lands in the nine f on front. Standard front. It left, left leg. leg. It cannot hit your left leg. Okay, so that just goes away. Then 11. Left arm. Left arm. Then the last two damage lands in the eight. Left torso. So there you go. First blood has been drawn. Um, that was to the chameleon? Question uh, mark? No, that was to the, him. He's, he's the main guy I can oh, see. Oh, the quick draw? Yeah. Nice. No, it's not the what quick was draw. The range, on that? Uh, the range on that? Between was, those two? Uh, 14 hexes. Okay, perfect. Yep. So... Um, do you have any fire? I have red? two fires. Um, highly unlikely, but uh, so uh, this unit and this unit can both see the chameleon. This one, because he's elevated so high, he can see over the terrain. However, I believe you get partial. Uh, you get partial cover. Uh, the one behind it, next uh, to it. There, there you, you go. go. Does yeah. it get partial cover? Yeah. Well, he's in. Um, he's, he's in one. But doesn't get partial cover from the legs. Correct. Uh, I don't believe so. He's on a level one. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, what is his uh, movement modifier? Like, what is the, t the it's a two defensive? Two. Okay, so two. And does that include the trees? No. No. So okay. three, including so three. the trees. Yep. Okay. So we'll start off the Roko Rokubi. Uh, his gunnery is a three. He did not move. Defense is a three, factoring in the trees, and then range. Range on this one is at seventeen. That's long range. 
I forgot the number I just said. Four. Four for long range, two for their defense. Yeah, what was the number no, I said first? Three for the defense. Three, 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 three six, four. So that's, that's going to be ten. So ten. One ten on an ERPPC. Do it. No. Does not hit. This guy actually does have a PPC where a 23 hexes away. His range is 23 for the ERPPC. I believe he probably needs ridiculous numbers. He's a two, didn't move. All the same numbers down there. Yep. So uh, four, five, uh, and then range. There may be trees that he goes so you through. Need a, you need a nine. Tell. A nine There's if trees. No, he, that's a lower level. Oh, it is. It has to be at his level. He's on a two. He's on a two. So the and, trees uh, have to be on a yeah, two. Yeah, level two. So are there any level? Uh, this that's is a, a tree. That's, that's a, a level, level three. three. So he can see over, but he's hitting this tree and, and that tree. So plus two so for you trees. you need an 11. Okay. That's nope. not an 11. Some of those trees catch fire. That's the extent of my firing. All right. Okay, so the Ostadl, uh is going to return fire with the two ERPPCs. So I am currently at plus five, including because I have a half piece of terrain in front of me, so I'm I'm in cover. I'm also on a heavy wood hex, and I ran five. So I am five more difficult to hit before range modifiers or your own movement modifiers. So your gunnery is a? Two. Okay, and you ran? Yes. Four. Uh, he's got a five. So that's that's nine plus and range. range. So and that's uh, medium range. So, so elevens. There you go. I kind of hope they do it. It'd be spectacular if they did. Oh, look, look! I, I'm I'm more than happy to watch mechs blow up, even if they're my own. Six, nope, misses. Okay. But it would have been really cool if you did. Yeah. It would have um, been cool if you did. <laughs> I don't know if we have any other shots, because these are level threes. He's on level one, so he's not yeah. going to be able. Well, to get, yeah. This that would be blocked from this way. You, um, I don't think he can see him. The, I thought the only one that he could see was the chameleon. So the chameleon could shoot him if he's got range. Uh, we were 17 apart. Uh, he has got an ER large laser that he could shoot. Bring it on. If that's at long range. He's a three, so, so he's a three. He ran, ran four, or walked. Uh, three, he, actually. Uh, he jumped. Oh, I've got, three, four, five, six. I've got devastator shots on that guy. Um, on he his, has partial cover, so seven, and that's I the only defensive an modifier that he has. Of seven. Cover in front and then of me range. That is uh, uh, light what woods. Be, uh, so that's going to up my defense so. to six. Okay. Eleven. Okay, eleven. What? What? Okay. You count the immediate hex in nope. front. Yes. Yeah, this no, is the way firing hits. normally goes yeah. at this level of the engagement, so this is playing out right. Sure, sure. Yeah. And I don't think the only question we have is can the Jenner see the locust? Locust is standing behind two light uh, light hexes, but and uh, level one. So the if the you're so on, he is visible. So he right. is visible, but it's plus oh. three from that, and then plus three from that, so plus six. Yeah, can the quick draw see him? Uh, no, there's level get... three. There's oh, actually there's that's okay. that's where my devastators got hits. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, this would this would because he's at a plus a plus two for targeting. And, but then he's gonna uh, shoot there, I think there's too woods. many. Too yeah, many yeah, no, woods. three yeah. three but, woods. There's two woods here, and there's at least one wood there. Yeah. Uh, he's elevated though, right? I'm elevated. He's not. Yeah, okay, he's so not, he yeah. would shoot over those woods, but he would pick up these two. Yeah. Okay, so you could you could probably do it then. Yeah, but it's a plus six. Uh, Devastator's gunnery is a uh, three. Three. He ran for five, uh, six, seven for the trees, eight for partial cover. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's long range. Yeah, yeah so you need, you need I'm box not gonna cars. make it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, if, if I, there's no ammo in file, there's no reason. I mean, to there shoot is it. ammo, but right. we're, we're not going to last long enough. That many turns. So. Okay. So I'll shoot both Gauss rifles on yes. box cars. Yes. And, Let's see what happens. And uh, Dude, this is spectacular. Yeah. Lucas just get pasted. Let's see what happens. Box cars. Nope. Nope. Plus, Great he plus. took my money at poker night, so I'm kind of rooting for him to go down. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where we're at for shooting. All right. Dice off the board. All right. Clear him. Are you, you, we don't. We definitely don't have a shot with him though. No, no, no. Okay. It, it goes. It, I, I could have got him at thirteen. So, Brent, would yes. I have dice where we could roll? You have the commander thing? and you have the initiative. So. Yeah, but I don't want to do the thing. Oh, command, uh, initiative! I'm happy to do, the, do yeah. the initiative. It's this stuff that I don't want to do. Oh yeah, yeah I know. We're declaring artillery strikes. I rolled a five. I got a three. Oh wait. 
Excellent. I'll take it. So Just we're the curse of initiative. We're firing. We're firing artillery. Uh, we don't have to tell you which hexes, but we do have to actually circle. Oh, we which have to one. mark them. Yeah. Yep. So I'm gonna be firing for the first one. Hold on. That was. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So we're gonna do definitely this one for this guy. So okay. this one is off well, the board. There were some pretty hot ones on this one. I think you might uh, might want to drop in there. Yeah, we'll fire. Oh, definitely for this one. Yeah. yeah. So we'll fire that one. And then this one we don't. And then this one we'll hold on to. Mm -hmm. All right. So two of them are firing, and they won't show up this turn. You they hear big booms, and in the distance, over the horizon, you see flashes. All right. Uh, so we've got to move four, and then it's two two. Yep. Until we reveal the big guys, which we can which we can reveal at the end of the movement phase or during the firing phase. Okay. Oh, we can reveal them during the firing phase. Oh no, sorry. End, sorry at the end of the movement phase. The yeah. end of the movement phase. They fire the turn. We reveal them. Yeah, but they have to reveal um, during. I don't the know. Movement. I go first yeah, yeah. after slower, every, all other movements. And then we can see completed. a little bit about okay. what they're doing, and then that sounds good. Yeah. They can also accidentally run into them, and then we get a free round of fire on them. That won't happen, but I'm just saying it's it's interesting. Wow. If they you know, bump into you, you get... You yeah, I've never actually played with that, with that occurring, but yeah. that would be pretty spectacular if it did. You know, I really hate it when the enemy plays smart. I Can't know. Can't they just make stupid decisions? I know. I know. It hurts me. Why it's do, almost like they know something about the game. It's terrible. Oh. oh. You're, yeah. <laughs> I said almost as if. Almost. There you go. Yeah. Why is it always the last face on these dice that I find that's the right one? It's. Yeah. I'm with you. So they've got two that they've moved because I'm in a. Much I'm absolutely more... moving at least one of them. I didn't know if you wanted to move one. I don't want to. I don't want to move anything on my okay. own right now until. Uh... Oh no, they've got two more to move. Still, they got two more to move. I keep on thinking it's. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They got two more to move. Locust Chan is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> well, he can play rabbit. He could try. Yeah. He's not a very good locust. He's an old locust. Oh, is he an old locust? It's, he's no, an he's old not, family locust. It's not even a good one. It's like this is a this is a not even a particularly fast locust. He clearly offended somebody. Okay, I move my four. Okay. Okay, I have a question, not my usual mix. So I, my, my question is, what is the front-facing hex? I was assuming this was the front-facing hex. Okay, totally good. I just wanted to make sure that we're all clear with that. Hey, Tex is in the chat. How you going, Tex? So uh, nobody brought a charger. I, I We didn't pick these mechs, so. Yeah, this, this is a scenario that we are we are playing. Okay, yeah, I have moved one. Kobayashi Maru, you know, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the unwinnable oh. one. WD forty will help it go faster. Will it? Will will it? Do you want to try to escape the locust right now? Uh, because it allow these two to to tactically react. And if not, then I will take one of them to sacrifice themselves, on the pinnacle of victory. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> oh no, I'd, I'd probably end up getting shot by something else. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's actually a really good move. So he gets plus three for you walks. guys, not for us. <laughs> there you go. Chase the rabbit. Are you telling me that there's no Ayatollah of rock and rolla, no cream of the crop, no mightiest of warriors, king of elbow drops? My God, he's coming so, in with a steel chair. 
Your turn for two, Mike. Uh, my turn for two. Okay. Um. Even though that bombing didn't didn't work out for us, I'm really glad we did it when we did it. That that was the right move. It would have been nice if it landed. It would have been nice if it landed. It wouldn't have knocked anybody out, but it would have been nice if it landed. My problem is, I'm assuming one of the bombings is coming in here, because well, they're they're looking at the cover, going like, obviously that's where they're going to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I would get him out of there. So what you should do is oh, run I'm right not, in the middle no, where I'm we planning, weren't planning, planning on you to go. Those yeah. out of there. I'm thinking that bringing these up for this move is probably the way to go. I'm wondering yeah. the same thing, Tex. They are stacking the deck against Big Red. 100%. This has entirely been engineered against me personally. I feel personally attacked. Um, I I feel that uh, as though yeah, I have so been I led to the walking. slaughter by Brent Evans. Yeah. I was just luring, luring him in. Uh, okay. All sense of security. Yeah, I got your back. I'm going to fly to the wrong map. You hold line over there. If you can make it. To be fair, I've got all the fast units. So it's, it's actually yeah, you got the reaction force. So, so, you, so where was it? That was right yep. there. Yeah. So one, two, three. But you, five. those guys yeah. are fast. You actually have oh, yeah. the real ability uh, to right. start getting into their flank. Well, I absolutely do. That's why I wanted to five. give them a chance to move more to react. Yeah. I feel like they've kind of committed at this point. How are you feeling about their level of commitment? <laughs> Well, Big Red, if you, uh, well, uh, uh, the Black Pants Legion says, Quiet Red, or I'll throw my shoe. I will have you know, <laughs> I will have you know, Tex, if you throw your shoe at me Wait, uh, right now, you will two. likely hit your computer. Oh, no, you've got to move one more. I do not I recommend doing so at this exact moment. I would say out like, of this and that, if you can. Back in the yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it on turn to move yet? Uh, um, yeah, no, they, they got one more to move. Yeah. Jumping him. Because they've got, they should have six and dice down when they're done, and I only see five. Right there, or right there. I, I even jump getting ready right to activate here, the commander. That might not Good. be bad. Two, three, four, five, six, right there. So there. That's a jump. I won't be activating my one this turn. There we go. Okay, two moves for you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not enough, so I'm going to declare a run. So, and I'm going to activate my mask. I too like to live dangerously, and it works. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And you might be asking, why am I doing that? No, actually, uh, I was asking, did we get one too many turns in there? Nope. I don't want to double be. count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, sorry, ten. Ten, eleven, eleven twelve. Okay, yep. good. Just make sure. Yep. No, we're good. So that's plus three for that one. And then this guy is going to indirect fire. So he's going to go one, two, three. Four, five. Oh, wow. Actually, you know what? One, two, three, four, five. Because I'm just indirect firing with him. So I'll get the, I'll take the How plus interesting. one. interesting. Well, the reason why is because I can't face their frontage. But if they keep coming in, I can yeah. basically, you know, subsume them as they come in. So it's time for your last two, Mike. All right, and that's a walk for three. Um, the Jenner. I once played a game of periphery battle mech where everyone took stock mechs, and if they opted to shoot, they had to sh take a shot of Jack. I am Tactics running. changed during the course of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm not shocked by that. Once. I think I maybe know. turn two, it's With already Jenner, a disaster. What's the Jenner at? 14? <laughs> hey, look at all no, sweaty, seven, barely seven, hanging seven, over the top. Yeah. Seven, though, so you can just jump. Can I jump seven there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good idea. Fairly out in full force that um, game. Yeah, you probably want to be over one more so you can be up on the level somewhere so you can see something maybe. 
Uh, oh, it doesn't I matter. Would not want no, to yeah, seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. Jenner versus Locust is not a good competition for the Locust. <laughs> I, I, I think still being out naked and stuff like that is the only the only nice thing about not being undercover. So is you guys have the flea is the only one left, artillery. right? No, uh, yeah, the yeah, flea is the, the only flea, one left to yeah. move. Okay. And the flea can just run all over the place, can it? Like, it's yeah. got a lot of movement. It's got a lot of movement. So, turn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine, ten, eleven. Yep, and you've got more movement too if 11, you want. Eleven. Yep. Uh, uh eleven. 12, 13, 14, right there. So that's a... Uh, you moved 10 hexes, definitely. Yep. But the red one, oh yeah, you got a red one. It was not the last base I, I found. Yeah. Okay. Just checking these hills so I can make sure I don't go planning movement that's a, that is doesn't work. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, very good. Did you guys hear that? Hmm? No. The Jenner has an active probe. So if it ends its turn within four hexes of anything hidden, Excellent. you have to reveal it. Yeah. Well, you're not within four hexes of I something hidden. I didn't think hidden. we were. No, but... it's, good. it's a good thing to note. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is... Uh, a move of one, of one, two, three, four, five, six. That's two. I'm in trees. That's three. All right. I am now activating the Hell Star, which was right here facing this way. Okay. He's going to step down a level. Well, one, two. That we hear up a level. Fishers, alter three, ego, four. Drunken Fisher. Someday in Texas video would surely be funny. <laughs> and he's going to... Yeah, you know, generally when the recon lance right is there. directly confronting uh, a series of heavy and assault mechs, that they usually don't is stick a modifier around for of that. nothing. <laughs> he is not in any woods. He only moved two, so he does not get any positive modifier. So he's got a walk modifier to fire, but no defensive modifier for anything coming in. And last but not least, Roko Rokubi. Which, and I apologize to anybody that actually knows the correct way to pronounce that because I've never learned. So next turn is turn three. Next turn is turn three. I, I believe you say he's supposed so to be facing the direct the side be, of the gun. Be, well, because the artillery's one, two, coming. Three, four. Yeah, that will be the turn that, that many things are decided. I mean, I think it's not looking good Six, seven, for the Draconis Combine. 10 11. Yeah, but you said that, oh. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice. Have we heard from our recon recon lance lately? No. Well, we Ten. know roughly where the enemies are, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exact. You know, this is the fun thing. Is Have that, a good is one, Jax. We could be sitting here, you know, writing the dialogue and writing the com chatter, which One, would two, be the, three, you know, the great fun of. One, two, yeah, three, four, five. Six. I don't like how this is going. <laughs> Things are not adding up here. Seven, eight, nine. Um, Ten. I'm, I'm seeing many, many odd things. Mm. Three, two, uh, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, screw it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nine facing that way. This is the front facing hex, just in case anybody's curious, right? He was here. He moved one, two, three, four, five, six, right. seven hexes, which is three. He's in wood, so that's four. Okay. And I'm just laying that on there so you don't have to worry about counting the terrain that he is in. All right. So now firing. 
Yes. So um, I will indirect fire with the uh, with the Blackhawk. Uh-huh. I am pretty sure I'm out of range and out of ability to hit anything, though. Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, long range plus 4, eh? So uh, firing <laughs> and indirect, so I need uh, more than 12. And a laser? So that's not a good look. I actually don't think I have anything that can actually fire this turn. So, um, yeah. That upsets me terribly. I don't know I... that you have any shots on these guys from these That's guys, just, too. It's we've this got level the... three. Yeah, well, there's, Wait, two, there's two level threes three. here. Yeah. And, and the question is whether these guys can see each other. If they're at level two themselves, they can see a level he, th Yeah, this on. one's on a level two. This one's on a level one. Well, the hell start level zero. zero. Ooh, so the two can the see three. over, but we it's whether it clips the, the three hex, and I don't have a laser. Uh, what do you think, Mike? Can we see each other? <laughs> I think it's... Uh, well, whoever won initiative... Shall we make a call? Do we want to shoot each other? Well, Man, whoever wins initiative it's calls not it. not mine. Uh, whoever wins initiative that, calls that it. That is not mine, but it also... I don't think it... You don't think so? You think we clipped okay. it? Yeah, okay. I don't think so. We clipped the train. We can't shoot. That's fine. At least I have targets over here, though. Knock yourself out. These guys are going through two trees to hit him. And All right. <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm not saying it's good math. I'm just saying I think that's the only thing we can actually see. Yeah, it's not good math. It's just math. It's yeah. Just math. Uh, it's just math. I do believe uh, he can see the Ost. Ostol? Ostol. Is that what it is? Ostol. Ostol. Who named these such difficult names? Um, I'm going to play Mike. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so defensive modifier on these guys? Uh, uh, defensive is four. Defensive and one. And this one's one. Okay, now this one is elevated. Mechanical correct? fog, yes. we do not so need any plasma weaponry. The trees. Oh, so he's in these trees. He's too, in so. trees, but he's above these trees, and that's yep. what's important. So he has a one uh, plus the trees, so two. Two. Okay, totally fine. Okay, so he's got a two. We can shoot him. Who the the Aust? The Aust. Yep. He's got a defense of two with the trees that he's in, okay. and clear line of fire because we are seeing him over the top of these trees. Because well, I, I can actually fire missiles into him after that too. Okay. So, so uh, targeting is from this guy. He ran. That's what you get. Well, you're the one shooting. Well, I get to shoot him first, but you got indirect. Yeah, but indirect goes after, or it should I'm go after because I do scatter damage. That makes sense. And you do concentrated damage. So. Uh, can, is there any th reason why you think that the Roko Rokubi cannot see him? So we won the initiative, and I, I just don't think I don't that... think that there's any reason he can't see him. Yeah. Okay. Let's go yeah, for it. Okay, so Roko Rokubi then is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Medium Hooray. range. That's medium range. Uh, so he is a 3. He ran for 5, medium range, five, uh, uh, 6, 7. 9. Defense is 9. ERPPC. Do it. No. Does not hit. The uh, Hitatsu Mekozo uh, has, what did we say? It was 13, right? Uh, yep. It was 13? Uh, this yeah, one thir 14. Thir yeah, so 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So he's at 14, so that'll count for your indirect range. Yep, because I should also be 14 uh, away. That's long range for him uh, on an Ultra AC-10. Uh, he is a two. He ran for five, uh, six, seven, eight. No, six, seven. Six, seven for his. And then range would be 11. Go for it. I'm going to fire only one shot, not two. No, no. I'm going to indirect ammo. fire. I'm going to need an 11 with the, uh, with the Blackhawk. That is almost an 11. Missed by one. Missed by one. Okay. Um, he's gonna shoot back. Good. That's not very nice. Which one would you like to shoot at? Um, this one's one less defense modifier, yeah. but it's also one hex further away. I don't know if that puts uh, him over a line. I've got fourteen on the mediums, so I'll oh, shoot him. Oh, then you can hit it totally. Yeah. Um, so I've got two ERPPCs. So we've got two plus a uh, gunnery skill at two, which is four, uh, five, six, seven plus range is medium. Those are nines. Okay. Oh, missed both. So close. Um, 
Don't use those dice anymore. Yeah, okay. Those are going over there. Bad dice. And we can't see over here, and we can't see over here. So um, uh, the Jenner can see. I just don't know if he has range. What's what's the Jenner got? What's the Jenner got? Because you can see these guys. Uh, the Jenner was targeting his plus three. He's a pilot three, so that. But what weapons? Like what range weapons? Oh, oh, he oh he's got. Uh, oh, he's four ER medium lasers, so he swells would be at long range. Okay, so they are. In, well, he could hit him. Hexes. Yeah, he could hit him. You're at 11 hexes He's, with yeah. him and 12 with him. Okay, so, well. And this one's got the easier shot. All right, so this, there would be four medium lasers coming in that direction. Okay, so your piloting is a? Piloting three. is a uh, piloting is a four. I'm sorry, gunnery is a, gunner, a three. Gunnery is a three. You ran or jumped? Jumped, uh, jumped. so that's six. Okay, yeah. three, six, seven, eight for the trees. Uh, three uh, for the so 11. Eleven. modifier is 11. Plus range, right? Yeah, so, so he's an yeah, impossible shot, yeah. so no hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it was worth a shot. Sure. Hey, you take your free shots where you get them. Oh, sure. Uh, now, because he can see, he can be the spotter. Yep. Hell, so if you have any uh, LRM units you want to indirect. I've already indirected with the one, and he missed. No, I'm talking about them. Oh, okay. Uh, but the Hellstar, are you firing at anything with it? Oh. You do have valid targets. That is absolutely correct. And he's she seeing right over the top of all the trees. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, long. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. How coincidental. Uh, but you have an excellent pilot in there, I think. Uh, I have a uh, I have a three gunnery, and that is long range. So three, walked is four, uh, defense is two, five, six. Shooting over the top of all the trees. So five, six plus range is ten. I have four tens. You're shooting at the... Shoot, shooting at the Aust. Okay. Wow, got well, excited there. A six, an 11, boom. First one hit. Second one misses by one. Third one misses a lot. Oh. oh. Fourth one misses by one. So you hit All once. Right. Location. One PPC, 15 damage to your, and this is front side table. That will be the right torso. And you should have plenty of armor for that. Yep. All Looks right. Good. That's our turn for. I don't think there's any other. I think he's out of position for. Yeah. So, but I with the with the Jenner spotting was there. I've got. I only have SRMs and. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, They're not really lerms. Yeah. Right. 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 I don't have anything long range in that in that I, regard. I don't think. Yeah, no indirect fire that's... Uh, we pull in dice? Yeah. No pull in dice. All right, let's clear him. And because, uh, because uh, oh, Captain, my captain, has uh, one initiative every turn for turn three... Um, Do it one more time. Yeah, you, you go till you don't win. I rolled a seven. I got a five. Okay. Uh, I'll go first again to, All right. to get the... I'm the lighter asset, so I should be going... You should be reactionary, yeah. of course. Let's keep an eye on that unit with the active probe. Well, no, this turn I have to reveal. Yeah, but they don't know that. No, I, I have to, though, because there's not enough time left in the game. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get to eight turns. No. <laughs> no, no. This is, like, likely the last turn, if not the second last turn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> left? Yes. Wipe them out. All of that. Was that a walk for four? Absolutely. It's a run for four. Yes, that was we'll, Star Wars we'll, related. Uh, there you go. We'll, we'll pincer her in this turn with. At least I'm learning because we can do the thing. Yeah, yeah. With all the things. Yeah. Uh, my problem is, I can fire over stuff from here, or I can run down and be in the valley and not really able to target stuff. Well, no, just stay up there, man. Or, or at the very least, walk a bit. Maybe if you have a range bracket, you know you want to get into, you could yeah, walk forward we'll a little bit. We'll see what they do. I, yeah. If they're smart, they're going to channel right around those trees. I don't, I don't really think they have the speed to do it. But you should just take the locust, run right in, and block them. You just hate my locusts. No, no, hon. I really just like the look on your face when I sarcastically recommend stupid things. Certain, 
sarcasm. <laughs> that's that's right. And by sarcasm, we mean inner sphere tactics. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, we're gonna re, we're gonna deploy our mocking derision of your they're, yes yeah. they're not clanners come on man <laughs> my scathing disdain for your skills yes supposedly <laughs> you have to say it incorrectly to make it really offensive <laughs> uh. you might be able to get a slightly better bracket on that on that hellstar yeah, honestly, I got a little excited when I saw what they did. Yeah. You might want to not lock everything up, but leave some room for their artillery to drift. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we never... Um, oh, no, that gets resolved in this firing phase. Not in the movement phase? In the no, I, phase? I double or checked. Command? Okay, I double good. checked, yeah. Okay, I moved my four. All right. So we're going to move two, and the first one is going to be the locust, because it can't really do anything. To Are you result. sure? It can sit there while they're charging at you. That's what I was thinking, <laughs> but. So. Uh, I'm not actually recommending that, actually. <laughs> one, you do what you got to do. Two, three, four, five, six. Actually, you know, even just five here. Will he have enough? Seven, eight. <laughs> I love how Brian pretends I know what I'm doing and can yes. leave me alone. <laughs> so that's my move. If you've got one you want to make, or I mean, the Akuma's got to get closer. Yeah, he really, really does. Uh, and thankfully, he's one of those TSM supercharged Akumas that moves really fast. That is a movement of two total hexes. No terrain involved. He is a 3-5, so that was a, a turn. Step down two levels, so one, two, three, four, and then a turn for five. So that is a run of five, no defensive modifier. And now we have moved two. However, I have I revealed, so I think we need to move two more. No, we need to move one more. We need to move one more. So I will okay. move. No, 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 no. I can do it. It's all good. The commander can go. What's the Hellstar doing? The Hellstar has a happy zone. It is 14 hexes out. Which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is the happy zone. So if you move right two there. hexes forward, you are in the happy zone. Yes. 1, 2, 3. That is a walk. Also, 4, 0. Perfect. Okay, we have moved three. You have moved three. All right. And we did it with flair. That's I, right. I was I Elon is what I was gonna suggest. Yeah. yeah, I would do jazz hands, but my hell star doesn't have them. So <laughs> there is that. Ama um, amazing plasma. I would love that. That would be awesome. What? Does the AP and AP Gauss stand for amazing plasma? Oh man, wouldn't it be great if there were no ghost weapons and they were all just plasma weapons? No, I'm just very happy with plasma weapons. Plas plasma weapons. I even are... designed a mech with both plasma weapons on it just to have them all. Why? All right. So you're back. So what atrocity should I commit here? I mean, look. What you should do is close with the enemy because Battletech is a game of blowing stuff up. Just throwing that idea I out I think there. with the two runners, you should just keep going. Because even if we can get two off the map, right. I mean, surely his right. his reveal is going to be right there at the end of that alley, but... Yeah. <laughs> so... Or I you could just pivot that way. <laughs> Try to get right between them. Like, get on this side of the Locust up there. Yeah, you mean on the on the top of the hill? That might be bad but maybe the other side of it if you can get there i'm just i'm like 
40% sure that heavy tree right there is where his Big Mac is. Oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. No doubt about it. But then that sort of leaves me wondering if I don't just push these two ahead to like here and here, they would they would have partial cover because uh, of the stuff in front of them, right? In keeping with the, the standard tactical gaming rule of never interrupting your enemy when they're making a mistake, do you think we should remind them that they have a unit with a probe on it? They know that. We know that. I'm moving them up as fast as I can. But where is he? Uh, he's right here. Is the, 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 that's the Jenner. Oh yeah, the Jenner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I uh, kick him forward to yeah to right over there and and um, yeah yeah you'd have to jump so it'd be one two three four five. Are six. you planning on charging forward? Well, six, that's within his job. Put him, put him in the trees up there, because I'm really thinking about it. We're going to move out of turns should, pretty fast. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, yeah we should charge forward. So, as I said, I we're going to do the artillery. is actually down here. Yeah. So, like, we just kind of move everything. They anticipated and I'm also thinking if we can, we can wipe out the light units. If they, I, I don't know what the defense is. Okay, so, yeah, stay on the map. Yeah. No, that sounds good. If their light units getting off, will be very hard to stop. And that's, uh, yep. Okay. Well, isn't that fun? Well, now I've got a target. Yeah. Yep. And uh, what, what, what is that death stare for? That's no moon. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right. But then my little guy, I can just streak him like right out that yep. way. Okay. So is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Or oh, just go straight out and then like. One, two, Bob three, and wait. Bob and, and wait. Turn. Oh, okay. Just dash into the trees. So, <laughs> so we were there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, he could get the running kick to take the head off the super heavy commander guy. Well, I mean, I can I can actually torso twist and blow those guys off the table. So I'm not that worried about. No, I was talking to them. Okay. Like, I'm trying to tell them to go run so up and try to take your head off. What, six, seven there, I six, think. Six, six. Turn, and then turn. So seven, and then just keep. He promised me a case and of Kabiki turn. Another one there, uh -huh. and another one there. And how many more of those do I have? Um, at, I, but yeah, we'll pull I, these guys 14, in, and we're just so going to take care of business. Yeah, we will. Could I you actually make that guys to go that first? Light? Yeah, your guys going first because my ones are out of position. Yep. Uh, I think I have three more. No, so I can't make it into that. I could make it into that. Yeah, do that. Bang. Which we were running our what? little butt off. What? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. We, we're you're aware. We're, I think, I think, oh, wait, wait a minute, sorry. This one has to go up like that. There we go. I was staring at it so I could actually read what it was. Oh, that's funny. It was important to me. I don't well, know. Well, that map is uh, right there with you. Okay, so you okay. move two now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get those guys in there, and uh, then I can activate the remaining mechs. I am on it. To, to take care of Yay. business. All right. Shit, if he's doing that, I may have to bring those over there. I've got the heavier mechs. Just keep going that way. Get into the trees up here or something. Well, like I say, for this turn, with off-board artillery, I want to stay out of the trees. Well, I don't think they're going to waste it on those one, little one clumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Judas, that's just scary, isn't it? So it's plus three. Yeah, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six hexes, which is a two then, um, in trees, which makes it a three. Yep. Right. And then you which walk sounds great until you realize it completely neutralizes your range increments. Uh, did you did you walk or run to do that? That was a run. Okay. Right. You can activate the supercharger on the other guy if you need more movement. Yeah, and I'm not exactly sure how to do that, but so I so roll two d sixes and on a four or more you get uh, the extra bonus. Mm. 
Yikes. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, then, uh, who's, what kind of a beast is that thing on that? That's a Hadamoto Suna, which is a a slow moving Hadamoto Chi. It goes three and five, uh -huh. and it's okay, just covered in MRMs. It's covered in Gauss weaponry. It's just an absolute monster. Activation of supercharger. What do I have to do? So roll two d six, and on four or more, you're good. You're good. Excellent. So you Barely. just get the extra speed. What that does is it allows me to go like this through here, turn, 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 come back, and get here so that I can kick you, but you cannot kick me. Uh, how many hexes did you move? I was here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. So plus three. So that is a three. Yeah. I had to do a little zigzag around the thing. Okay. So but, then it's uh, your guys' go. Uh, and mine are the last ones. Uh, so. I'm really excited for this shooting phase. Yeah. So am I. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be catastrophic. So, so for everybody. I believe the word you're looking for is glorious. So here's my That's one way to put wondering it. is with my Star Slayer, because I can jump. Yeah. It, can I jump right there so I can be right in his six? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yes, keep in mind his six is this hex. All right, so I. And I think you can still get there. Yeah, this yep. is a jump of five, gets here. Okay. Yep. It's actually worse for me because you're now kicking on the punch table. Yes. Well, there we go. <laughs> and then the last one's the chameleon. And the last one is the chameleon. Uh, let him put his uh, movement modifier oh, right, on so right, his right, defense right. Oh, he's, he's, he's got to go. I got on. it. I got okay. it. And then the chameleon. Uh, I'd say keep going that way. You think keep going that way? Okay. Well, he's got jumps. So, yep. like, if you can get to there, you can still shoot him. All right, let's do that. Or the the big guy, or that guy. You've got all okay, the targets. Okay, so I, there. Got, I've, I have options. What you're yeah. telling me is I have options. Yeah, and admittedly, the chameleon benefits from the fact that there are so many targets in the zone that he's probably not going to get targeted. <laughs> well, there is that. So yeah, so there. So he's going to just hold. This guy is going to go. Oh, man. Actually, we'll first do this guy. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to go one. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, their dropship must be over there somewhere. And he walked. All right. So. We let the artillery drop in. That's sure, just so. going to be ugly. How bad is the damage on the artillery? It's bad. It's I mean, real, for us. It's real bad. Oh, great. So, uh, Hex 2212. Where is that? 2212. 22. Or, yeah, 22. 2212, right so, there. So, these two guys take five damage, and so does he. Okay. okay. No, 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 wait. He might be just, no, so these two take five damage, and he will take it on the rear facing. Yeah, okay. he's taking to the rear. He's taking it on the right side. All right. So you got a table? Well, look at that. Do do we have to roll our own damage location? Uh, No, I'll do it. Okay, so, thanks. Uh, for the Caesar, it's going to be uh, nine to the back. Okay. Nine to the back is the left leg. So five damage to the leg. To, to the he's got the Caesar, right? Yeah, yeah I got it. I've got the and the next up is going to be the chameleon. Yep. Uh, which is going to take uh, five damage to the eight. Five damage to the left torso. Uh, hold on. To which one? This one? Yeah. yeah. That's the right side. The right yes, side. side. To the eight is center, center torso. torso. So he takes five to the CT. Oh. Okay. And it's center torso front. And where is 2309? Hold on. Did he get his five? No, he's out of range. Oh, is he? Okay. He's by one hex. Okay, okay so 2309. Oh, that might actually right be right there. There. So the Devastator takes 15 damage and three okay. sets of five. And this also will be right side. Yep. So uh, first set goes to the 11 on the right side. Right side is left leg. So left leg takes five. Okay. Then uh, eight. The eight is center torso. Five to the CT. And then finally, six. Six is right leg. All right. So before we get firing, I want to do something very important. Yes. Brent, come here. I want to shake your hand. 
I am so, so sorry. I've been paid off. I've been bought. Really? Yeah. 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 But we're still laughing. So we're Donnie Langhorst. I am so terrible. <laughs> News for you. I get in line. I'm going fire on you. Wow. It's honor on you and your cattle. Well, I'm like, I have to make sure that I went on. I had to make sure I looked you in the face before I did it. I'm Bring like, on. I am sorry, but this is how it has to be. Do it. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to open the engagement with the Hotamato Suna, who is going to unleash when an alpha strike on. Let's see here. He's got a lot of guns. You know, the, it's funny because the only person this screws is him tomorrow. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, sorry about that. We were just at coffee and decided to, you know, play political. We'll figure out something. Don't worry about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, you said right. I'm on a yeah. 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 fire. Uh, that's my guy. I'm just targeting. Okay. I'm seeing what I'm going to be firing into you. you know, uh, with <laughs> my minimum range. <laughs> so <laughs> medium range. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to fire everything into uh, this guy. Yeah, there we go. Roku. 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 So you've got a plus three to your defense, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. So I'm a. I didn't move. I'm a gunnery two. You're at close range, so I need a five to hit with the Gauss rifle. Excellent. Gauss rifle on five. You uh, that's sweet. That's nice. So uh, uh, then the MRM these are going to be on a nice. eight. So MRM, sorry, MRM. I'm going to be honest. Roll. Roll. Let him roll. Huh? I, uh, Twenty next. I didn't think he was going to do it. Oh, I misses. Uh, then <laughs> ER medium. By the way, my pilot looks stoically in your direction. <laughs> He's like, he hears the fire, just as he turns, he's like, why? Yes. So, and then finally, the ER medium laser, which is going to be on an eight, uh, which hits. So, the Gauss rifle lands in the five for 15 damage. All right. That's going through. This is 12. <laughs> and three down here. And we'll see if we get any. Actually, I'll first finish the missiles first. Uh, at Adepticon. Uh, MRM, uh, sorry, half, MRM 20 uh, two lands eight. with six. So it We're does have cool. a uh, Apollo FCS, so that means it goes on the regular table. Okay. So that means... No, no, assuming this isn't the hardened ones. armor one, because I don't see any hardened armor you, on here. I so. do not believe you have hardened okay. armor. So you're going to take 12 missiles, so two sets of five. Yep, and then a two. Uh, and so, yep, two sets of five, then a two. First set of five goes to the five. Well, that's not where we want it. It's <laughs> like... <laughs> Well, you've only hit the same level. Yeah. Again with the six. Three. And the space, and I'm like, you, I was bought off. He's like, Sorry. Hey, Brent, I, I hate to say, we offered you five C bills and a case of beer. Yeah. Okay. You know, so. <laughs> to the, to the throat. Oh, no. Here we go. Roll them. Go. Come on, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yes, it was a glory. No. Oh. So, uh, so then we're gonna do the ER medium laser, yeah. which lands in we, the. We need, uh, a, nine. we need a new lance. We're gonna so find yeah, no. the nine, and that's it for the Hotamoto. No, you need to roll for your tricks on the leg. What leg? <laughs> yeah, I guess there's no point to roll the crits. All right. So, I, I'm, I'm just saying. Well, I would. I'll admit that I did not see that coming. <laughs> Always okay. <laughs> All good. I made my own life so much more miserable going forward. <laughs> so I, I assume it is just that single character who turned. Oh no, the Shadow Cat's firing next. Shadow Cat's opening up on uh, your whole unit is traitors. Oh yeah, like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. So the victory condition shift. That's not good for me. Brent, if if you have a single character surviving at the end of this, you call in for more help from the so, CMS. So, yeah. so Gauss rifle hits on the left side. Uh, okay. Sorry, on the right side. Oh, uh, on the right side. Yep. And then we're it's doing nice two medium range ammo. That means ooh, that <laughs> might. I walked. We're at close range. No, that's a hit too. I mean, seriously. So I then I don't think we second ER medium range. The shots is also a hit. Okay. So you got it all. I'm two medium. Yep. I'm sorry, Brent. So now so lands in the. I just don't think you can win on the. Wow. Gun rifle on the right side. Oh, uh, it's eight. right side. Right yep. side eight yep. is center torso. Oh, One, two, three, four, five, no. six. I'm six, sorry eight, because this. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Roll for crits. Can't be fun for you. And I That's really did. I um, really didn't think he was going to do it. Stuff up. You've got a crit, so roll it upper lower. So, oh, um, uh, we'll do lower. Lower for three. Lower three. 
That is a gyro. <laughs> which may make it harder for me to stay standing with one leg. <laughs> no, this is on him. Oh, what? Yeah, so like uh, the shadow cat's firing next. I, I misunderstood. I thought you were saying oh, no. it was. Oh no no! Okay, I, so I, he I was firing on him. Into... Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So, so the... hold on, that's not. So the he took fifteen to the CT on, on the other guy. Correction. So it's another leg. sheet. No, this guy. No no. The Suna is the one who fired. Like he's fought. He got screwed up by the Suna. I'm firing with the shadow right, cat. That's why I'm correcting. Okay. I oh. just wanted to erase. Oh yeah. The oh you okay. Just, yeah. Wait, I got that. Okay, center torso. So center torso. This is right side, so it's not rear. Yep, 15. 15. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So he's still got armor? He's still got armor. Okay. No so, need to roll. Okay, so then ER medium laser number one lands in the eight on the right side. On the right side, eight is center torso. Uh, so that's seven more damage? Right side, eight, yep. center torso. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. It's a medium laser, so it's five damage. Eight. You can get the story out of this. Seven damage. Wait, so you have a lot of laser on the Okay, so roll for crits. And that is. I marked these two pips down by my crotch. So that did not crit. Okay. And then the next one is a ten. Ten on the right side is left arm. There you go. And it's how many damage? That is seven damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then we are going to open my last guy with a target because these are now friendlies. Yep. And so I cannot open fire on them. Is. <laughs> oh my god! The French face is like. Where did it stick? That's not in the script. <laughs> so, ER large laser into the Health Star. Awesome. <laughs> Ah, so I did think that move was suspect. So then, uh, oh my god, bring it on, dude! If you headshot, that would be awesome. Oh yeah, just do it. Bring it on. Head. Hold on, I gotta. Oh, oh, there you. There's one thing I gotta do here real quick, which I forgot to do because he moved three hexes. So I need to make sure that it is people are aware that he moved there. All right, so then yeah, because the movement is the part of this yes. that we're concerned yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in your large laser, that's a hit. LRM 20 needs a lot more because it's three more difficult at the range bracket I'm at. So, uh, but you know what? It's actually not that hard. I'm only plus one, so I actually need a seven with the LRM 20, but I don't get it. ER large laser hits you in the, uh, it's cocked, five on, five on the right side. Right side, five is right arm. There you go. Well, ER large laser is eight damage. Eight damage. One, two, eight three. Eight damage. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All right, and that's going to be uh, that's it for me. And so now uh, you get to fire. Excellent. <laughs> do you, do you, do you, do Commander of the Hellstar you, watching is his own guy. Do your worst. <laughs> yes. The uh, uh, now the question is: Is are you going to stay on objective the road or? It's or going get to revenge. Finish because obviously all firing happens at the same time. Right. So he didn't know this was happening at the time. He's pulling the trigger on the quick. Just as this right, mech right, starting right. to lean down, like okay. what the hell? So he's three. He ran four five. Defense on the quick draw is. Uh, the quick draw is uh three. Okay. Eight. <laughs> this is literally the embodiment of shameful display. <laughs> so Got what that? does Red get out of this? A good meal and an exclusive uh, that was the PPC. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> and that's it. That's his only weapon. This is the sudden <laughs> <of> the <laughs> So the PPC will hit. I am on the so right side. I actually was engineering it from the very moment because we'll I was it, like, uh, we're gonna on pull the in through. Oh, yeah. So fifteen damage. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, didn't go oh, in. I have to pull the locust All right, back. There's the no other choice. Me. Yep. Is firing at the same target. He is, however, I'm getting so the sorry, trees. Brent. Um. So that would be a four. Okay, so he is a two. He ran three, four. Targeting a four. That's eight. It Big is Red is actually range. getting a case of Tupiki <laughs> Dark. So just there eight. Uh, it is short range for the AC-10, uh. for the Ultra AC-10, and he will double pump. And then it is medium range for the medium pulse you know, lasers. I don't think my allies may trust me. Into the same so, uh, two, four. As far as I'm concerned, you're golden. Eight, you know, it's four. <laughs> okay, I've two, got four, some green eight, nine with the trees. Okay. No, 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 no. It was, it was uh, 
Four with the trees. Oh, okay. So it's eight. eight. So ultra Speaking AC over 10 everyone. on an eight. Does not hit, which means the second one can't hit either. I still love the last one. Michael is like, what's going oh. on here? He's looking at the table. Oh. And yes. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Medium pulse laser location to the right arm. Okay, you're in. Roll a crit. How much damage is that? Uh, that is six damage. Okay. You know, when I hit They're the Hellstar helping. with a large okay. laser and it d just scorched his arm, I just imagine the pilot like you dumb son of a bitch. Okay, so he is a th three defense, and he is also a three defense. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, correct. Okay. So Hellstar is elevated on a level two, so he's shooting over the top of all of the terrain. Right. So he is a three, and to get there, he... Tim Binky Dark, locked. that was not Four. a Merrick beer. Three to pass. A purple Five, bird six, fan. Seven. Yeah, it is fitting that a purple bird fan and is range. untrustworthy and easily bought off. <laughs> <laughs> is medium. Seven, nine. Oh, so which, is, which one are you hitting? Never trust uh, Merrick. Glory the Merrick. Glory to Merrick. To this one. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Four <laughs> nines. No. No, so by close. one. No. And no. Okay. He, I don't believe he can see anybody. There's trees in the way. He is on a level one. He can fire indirect as his only option, but he does not have LRMs. So he is going to shake his fist impotently <laughs> and curse in Japanese at you. <laughs> I I for, one, I, for one, feel cursed. What about this guy right here? Well, he, he has to roll to stay standing. Okay. Oh, he's missing a leg. Do we need to do that I'm now? I'm sorry, he has to roll to fall over. He's not standing. He's... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No, he... no, you guys get to shoot. To shoot first. Yeah, by all means, shoot at him first. You know, uh... he might fail his PSR now that his leg is gone. That's yeah. a possibility. That <laughs> would be a possibility. Let me shoot I'm this guy. So sorry, you to acknowledge this possibility. Shoot this guy with my quick draw. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry, I sat down. Okay. Them. You stop talking. <laughs> Very bad, man. Um, so I've got oh, the, the targeting computer for the two ER mediums, and then I'm going to shoot um, I love, the, I love, the streaks. I love Brian's like, I didn't think he was going to do it. I really, I, I, I genuinely uh, was like, to be I later, thought you, you were patronizing us when you were like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was not planning with this guy. Yeah. Okay. From the quick draw. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so uh, with the targeting computer from the two um, medium lasers, uh, that's short range. But I'm in a three with a pilot skill three, so that's six. And then through the uh, through the woods is seven. Yep. And eight, I have a nine. three, so that's ten. So so. Uh, ten. Yeah. Ten with the woods. Ten. You're a three. Uh -huh. Movement. Your movement makes it six. My three makes it nine. Trees make it ten at short range. Okay, and then I've got the targeting computer, so it's nine. Oh, nine. Yeah, yeah, targeting computer, definitely. <laughs> Why did I roll? Oh, okay, they are slightly different, but they are both misses. Now, uh, streaks. Uh, the black dice will be the streak sixes, and the others are streak fours. Okay. Okay, so the... Wow. Uh, something. Eight. Hit. Yeah, no, I got, I got the the streak, uh, streak four. Okay. Do it. Okay. It hits seven. That's the one place you wanted it to hit. Because that's center torso. That's a critical hit. That's roll for crits. But remember, you get three more dice for. Uh, you rolled an eight. eight. Yep. That's you a get crit. one. Upper lower. Uh, six. Lower. Four. Okay. A, I think that's, that's a gyro. Oh, it's an engine. Thank goodness. Okay. I get three more. What? Three? Yeah, yeah you just roll because yeah. you, you streaks. You don't roll location. Yeah, it's a streak four. So, so you, you roll location for each missile. Oh, so yeah, okay. you automatically Six. hit with all missiles. Six. For the next missile. Right torso. Okay. Roll next missile. Eight. Left torso. Got it. Six. And six. Okay. Got him. Okay. Do you want to shoot, or? Uh, do you want to shoot with your guys? Do you want me to just finish up my stuff? Go ahead and finish up your guys. Just finish okay. up All firing happens at the same time, so it doesn't really uh, matter. Devastator is going to hit this fellow with uh, oh, no. twin oh, Gauss wait, wait, wait. rifles. Where are you hitting him? 
I have never hit anything with okay. the damn large lasers. Please do it. Let me let me try and hit something with the lasers. From him? Yeah. It's interesting that in From this situation he's going for sympathy. I'm just throwing that out I'm there. Just, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I am I'm so innocent in this game. Kill me like a man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make Robert Baratheon. Just give me the wine and let me do it. So, so, we're at, we're so you're at you're at zero range essentially. Right. So um, it's three for you, uh, because of your Alex, movement. Alex, it's so nice it's in his friendly movement. face. Six, Love you, buddy. Six. Seven, eight, and it's just eights. <laughs> eights. Okay, so <laughs> okay. things are not <laughs> for eights. It was two versus two, but it's actually three versus one. Uh, uh hit yeah. with both. Hit with both. Excellent. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay. Uh, this is Ro Roko Rokubi. Yeah. On yep. the left side, correct? Uh, right here. It's no, the rear arc. Rear arc. Oh, yeah, you shoot a Star Slayer? Bring yeah. it on. Yep. Uh, so you've got My armor there. Um, <laughs> 16 coming in at the four. Yeah, you do. Okay. Oh, at the four? Hold on. At the four. And this yeah. is oh, the rear. Four oh, is wow. arm. Yeah. You said 15? 16. 16. 16 roll for crits. Uh, uh, eight. Uh, eight got one. So You got one. Upper lower. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. There's no upper. Just, uh, so, uh, just so three. 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 Got it. Lower arm actuator. Okay, and then the second one is goes in at ten for sixteen. Ten rear left arm for sixteen. Yep. You're making it hard for me to stand back up. Okay, roll for grits. <laughs> uh, Seven. No. Okay. Uh, uh, that's it. That's all I need to. to okay. Hey, geology is still not a real science. Bring it on. <laughs> Okay. Words are not real. <laughs> There's no such thing. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the Gauss so, rifles and the snub nose PPCs. Perriman <laughs> specifically mentioned Stackpole did nothing wrong. So it's today. Uh, I, but, you know, I don't actually think that's. I, I don't think anybody was offended by Stackpole. I, I, I do believe. I'm sorry. You that, said two snub nose PPCs? The, the yep. bribe deal. Got two uh, snub nose and two Gauss <laughs> rifles. You and those are on to the left side of the Roku Roku. Purple bird. Yeah, what do you want? We're mercenaries. Okay, so these are going to be the Gauss rifle, and these are going to be the snub nose. Okay. And it's uh, two, five, and they're both at short range, so it's just fives. Uh, did you run? Yes. Okay, so your gunnery is a two. Oh, it's a three, so it's sixes. No, no, not a six. It's five. Your eights, gunnery is a eights. two. No, my gunnery is three. Gunnery is so a three. You walked around. Ran, so that's a five. Four, five. And then you've got three. I've got here, three, so eight. that's eight. And then if it's short that's range, all short range. That's it. there you go, eight. <laughs> and the light colored dice of the Gauss rifles. So missed with the Gauss rifles, hit. I'm like, we got to do something hit special with one on the snub thing. It has to be one for location. more than bribery. It's about this is yeah, left side for me. special. Yeah. Left side, five. 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 Left side, so five. Ten, left arm. Missing if you're not here. Oh, uh, one, two, three, that goes <laughs> off. Treachery. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. <laughs> I'm still standing. Figure out speaking. The two medium lasers. Do it. From who? Same place. Same guy. Okay. Same guy. Two medium laser lasers. Do it. So it's it's eights. I hear the old John sing song. You know, I'm still standing. I'm yeah. still standing. One hit. I got one. Okay. So <laughs> roll for location. And that's going to be seven to your seven. Uh, seven. So left torso. One, two, three, roll for crits. Six, missed. Okay. Well, you got through. You know, I'm even wearing the purple bird hat, you are wearing the which means bird. treachery should always be in consideration. There we go. Okay. Caesar is going to shoot uh, with the Gauss rifle. Okay. And that's going to be two with the gunnery of two. So that's four, five, six, seven, medium range. So that's sevens. So he's also got the Gauss rifle, the snub nose, and the two medium lasers. So let's go. Bring it on. The 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 dark one's going to be the snub nose. Remember, guys, if you're watching in chat, don't forget to announce Purple oh, Bird is wow. in fact strong. Okay, so they both. Uh, no, so the snub nose misses. The Gauss rifle hits. Okay. So that's fifteen to seven. Ow. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Roll for crits. Miss. No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Then the two medium lasers. Seven's, also from the Caesar. Yep. Okay. Sevens to hit. Cool. 
Uh, one hit. Do bring it. So that's. Uh, I still suck. Got some armor on my right torso. And five leg. Five to your five. Five to my five. No. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Purple okay. bird basket okay. case. Oh no. Uh. I already shot with my quick draw. Who do I have left? Um. Oh. I don't. Well, I could. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that's all my targets. What else do you have, Mike? Uh, I don't know that uh, you know he might be able to hit that. I, I, I he can. Yeah, right. you can. Big Red. Let's be honest. Stuff. It's not that House Merrick is inherently treacherous. Oh, of course not. Uh, it's uh, it's that your Mech Warriors were denied leave uh, too we many times. We get. Uh, I can hit him with three <laughs> pulse lasers. Probably that probably ought to be pretty easy. Okay. Yep, that's the range ER is mediums. one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be at medium range. Right. So uh, you've got your three. Your gunnery of three is six. Right. And that's a nine. So you need nines to hit. Nines, but, uh, but and it's pulse, medium. Pulse. Pulse is minus is minus two. So it's okay. Seven. So it's. I'm sorry. It was three. No, no, no. Okay. So gunnery is three. You jumped is three more. So that's six. And then my nine. defense is nine. So it just uh, if it's short range, range it's medium range. Medium range, then it's nine. It's nine. It's nine. Okay. So you've got three of them. So uh, there we go. And you're hitting me on the front, so it's st straight war normal front table. Uh, so we got six, seven, eight, eight. Nope, misses. Oh, no. misses, misses. Okay. All of them. Yep. That that would be that. All right. All firing done. All yeah. firing done. So okay. now we go over to the uh, physical phase. Well, before that, piloting skill rules. Piloting. Yeah, we've got piloting first. So I'm going to fall on my five. Which is, I believe, left side. You want to? So this, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, one, two, three, four, if... five. So I fall this direction. And uh, let's I see don't know what this is for. Falling direction. Well, it, it doesn't matter. You oh, rolled I rolled this hit. Gotcha. Okay. So then you get so, to uh, roll your pilot consciousness. Oh, so uh, damage. damage is applied to the left side, correct? Yep. Okay. So left side torso. I am a 35-ton mech, so I'll be doing uh, four damage to the right on the left side torso is left arm. Left torso. <laughs> Two, three, four. You got to roll a crit. That is that is good and bad in so many ways. <laughs> uh, it was exactly the amount that it needed to kill the torso and snap the arm off. Uh, <laughs> I could roll for crits, but there's nothing in there. It's all gone anyway. anyway. There's nothing that can explode. So you Randall? That will be three more engine hits. Oh! You Randall. Died gloriously? You Randall, yes. You, you Randall. Uh, I'm That's three. Is, so wait, out me? is that three engine hits? Is that a stack pull? It might be. No, that would be exploding and blowing all of you around. No, but like we've got the chance of a, a stack pull occurring if you've got three engine hits. You need four? Four engine hits. Oh. I thought it was three, but I could be wrong. Uh, well, I'll be honest with you. I was told by Michael Stackpole that doesn't really happen in gaming and you're not allowed to do that. So stop it. <laughs> So you're gonna you're gonna let him talk. Bless you. So <laughs> now hold on. I believe this one took more than twenty, so he also needs to make a PSR. He absolutely does. And he passes. Exactly. What's a couple engine hits between friends? All right. Yeah. And I did take his heat. I will factor it in here. Uh so it's four, four engine hits and a ten plus roll according to the crowd watching. Uh, who is suddenly very invested in well, Brent's survival. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. That's okay. the last and that's that. My order stands, sir. <laughs> and we succeeded at the number one goal of Battletech, blowing stuff up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was so funny. I'm sorry. And, and unfortunately, the GMs are now going to have to figure out what the hell. How they're going to make us pay for this tomorrow. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay. Okay. Do you think the Korean forces make me in a bit of a worse spot? <laughs> no. no. This was simply the cost of a mole out. 
So one of our warriors got the, the death he deserved. His family will live in honor. So it's the tonnage divided by two for... <laughs> so I get all the glory? You get all of the glory. I get what? Uh, I mean, I got five points of damage on this guy. Oh, that's the one. And so nothing on anything. Okay, so <laughs> repair max entire armor. Uh, so we're looking at um, just the tonnage. So this guy is going to cost 100. Okay. And this guy's... Hold it. It's tonnage divided by two. If it's just... Um, what am I doing this for? Uh, if it's just... Oh. Oh! That's... If it's just in one location. It's, it's better on it's here. It's just okay. the tonnage. So in mine, it's... So it's going to be 25. Right? Don't think so. Uh, and that's the... Which one was that? That was the chameleon. Then we erase that for next time. All right. Yeah. Admittedly, we did not roll. You got your uh, quick. No, he can't kick. Oh, we did. There's no physical from you guys. Okay. Well, it wouldn't have matter if they kicked anyway because there's a triple engine. No, one's kicking over the top. One was one couldn't kick. So yeah. Yeah, I could only punch. Or kick on the punch. Uh, do I need to roll to see if my pilot survived? He survived. He would eject. He okay. survived. Mike is waving at us. Apparently, he's really excited about the game. I don't know why. <laughs> Well, we've only ruined his content for tomorrow and the next day. Yeah. Good man. Look, a, a, a seal of honor. If I agree that I'm going to do something, when Michael's like, we'll pay you off, I'm like, there see, you go. I always wanted to be part of the air. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And then what? And, which, this, and this becomes the Eridani light. Did you have any other repairs you needed to make? Yeah, I was untouched. Okay. The light horses are known for such underhanded tactics. There we go. So we need to rearm for all of the ammo that we used. So it was just a lot of Gauss rifles from me. I didn't use any ammo. Okay, I did. <laughs> oh, I assume he survived, and our techs are going to have it up and running. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Oh, this is an awesome mech. Unless you got one Should of these with hardened armor. Turn up all of our gunnery and piloting skills. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Oh, you have a what? Piloting skills, just gunnery. So we've got three pilots with that is pretty cool. But this two, one's awesome. So we so can make. I get, I get three pilots. Oh, wait. With threes. <laughs> I've got I've got one pilot with two. Everybody else is a three. So the gunnery on the Devastator is a three right now. So to make it from a three to a two is four hundred, and a two to a one is eight hundred. So why don't we spend all twelve hundred to make that a one? I, I'm good. No, that's not a quick draw. That's a Devastator. <laughs> All right. And then... We should probably if, take if all the three. He asked to Red. Two. Okay, that sounds he, good. And that's he, 400. He read, asked so Brent. Oh, one, three. How, oh three, I think he means, hey, six, hey nine, Red, ask Brent how right. the inner shield deals with inner. No, I mean, I, I am most definitely a traitor, if that's what you're asking, Besker. This is the definition of treachery. This is, this is, I was literally paid off oh, no. Four, eight, to actively 12. betray my commanding officer. That is that is the literal definition. I do not think that you can have a more textbook definition of treachery <laughs> than I took money and or favors to right. betray my friends and unit. Okay, so all of our pilots now have gunnery two. All right. Except for the Devastator, who's in a gunnery one. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so... Okay. okay. Excellent. We could buy more mechs okay. too. So that is <laughs> Oh Lorkin comes in. I didn't realize the red mechs were the North Wind Highlanders. Oh. 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 
Oh my. What'd you end up doing, Brent? I earned a lot of uh, uh, of stuff to improve my pilots is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so we should take all of the pilots to the three, too. Anymore? Yeah. So the four to three for piloting is a hundred. So that's one. That was two, awesome. Though. That was hilarious. Or, 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 to take them down to threes. Uh, I would need three of them, so they'd be so three. Points. So that's five hundred total, right? So yeah, let's do that. All right. They've got another. All right. Okay. Well, that uh, was Frank, certainly. Can you pass me that dice uh, tray. No, that okay. was certainly a thing. <laughs> And here's Brent's dice. There's one of those. Right Thank there. you. Yep. My first thought when when Michael asked me to betray the team through bribery was, would it, which would be more entertaining? I'm like, well, it is definitely more entertaining if I betray the team. See, there you go. Are you all not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> like, I will have you all know. It was funnier to betray my own side. <laughs> Are we still? We're still going. Are right? we still going? We going to the yeah. top of the hour? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we okay. hit the hour oh, before we. That's right, and then we have to do the book signing. Yeah, so we do. If you were here at Adepticon, there will be a book signing. So. Yeah, and it is still snowing. So this has been a monumental day for me. Not only did I have to post artwork that I really didn't want to post, but I also actively betrayed my partner in the middle of a battle. I noticed that. I'm See just... how much access and help you get from the art department at Catalyst now. <laughs> it's really... And I, I, it is it is incumbent upon us to point out, Brett, you handled that. You handled that with incredible aplomb. Why, thank you. Uh, like... I still feel terrible, should... and I'm going to be apologizing for this for literally the rest of my life. <laughs> Like, you're not like the smile on his face was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> there was this, there was this, you were looking like somebody invited you into a television studio and it was, it was Maury Povich and he had an envelope. Yeah. You know, and somebody you remember from college. Yeah. Why is my wife sitting on stage? <laughs> why does my child have mostly darker skin color than mine? Right, right. So the campaign stuff, uh, yeah, this is chaos campaign stuff. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's the, where's that sheet? I don't know what camera's on, so I don't know what, uh, so this, we're just spending support points for having fun and everything. So we repaired all of our mechs, we re-outfitted everything, we re-armed everything, and then we, there's functions to, you know, reduce your pilot and gunnery skills, which Mike and I did. So tomorrow's going to be even more fun. In the campaign, Mac Frog's going to throw a tantrum on your behalf, Brent. Well, there we go. Thank you. The downfall is one of my units. Yes. My four pilots got better. Those two are left, and they're all traders, so I don't, I'm not upgrading that. And just aside for everyone watching, the actual scenarios we're playing in these campaign days, I should point out are from the mercenaries box. So you will be able to play in these style of scenarios, which are typically, you know, set turn limits and things like that from right out of the box. So we're not just playing random games. There are uh, objectives for us to achieve and, and right. stipulations for us to follow. Yeah, None of those stipulations might not have been to betray my ally. However, that wasn't on the page, so I was able to get them. I mean, like, one of the things that we, one of the things our side was supposed to do was we were our goal was to find out where they had a drop ship, to reveal their stuff, and to get our people off this side. So part of the reason that we went this way is because you had the slower mech, so we were hoping we would not run into you. Yeah, well, yeah, that's smart mech. You did exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm not certain. We'd, start, we'd have started to get mechs off the field. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. He's actually removed the Akuma from the battle. Yeah. And anytime you can ignore an assault mech, uh, I recommend it. Yeah, I mean, that was... <laughs> Yes, my, my two little, very fast little little ones were going. Yeah, honestly, I'm just going to have to wait and stop them. Not with the deployment that we had. Yeah. Oscar, how am I supposed to say no to Michael's backbone? 
<laughs> it's so it's easy. It's just no. <laughs> uh, no, it was. I, I imagine from your setup perspective, not counting the plotted betrayal, um, it must have been hard to try to figure out like how do we take what mechs we have and actually create a, yeah. a, a reasonable screen. The, well, and honestly, we'd like we called it right off the bat yeah, yeah. W with the estated deployment options. Um, the intelligent thing for your force would be to overload one side and make a make a run for it like that. There, there's no way if you had spread it all the way out, that would have been just you guys being nice and I mean, stupid. Fine. To yeah. be honest, yeah. the one thing we should have done is the Akuma should have been put closer to the middle of the battlefield, so that way it could have more easily pivoted to one side or the other. Yeah, I, 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 command, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, right in, you know, putting it right in here, essentially that or or right here would have tied it. To that. It gives it the greatest overall. Yeah, yep. potential engagement rate. With that said, it's easy to to critique battlefield tactics in hindsight. Oh, I agree. So, I guess I said we yeah, should have done this right, right in the middle. However, it was a, it was a good move. I have some great news for everyone, which is that we're wrapping up this segment. Oh, I, I see Alex is here, so I assume we get to talk about cool art stuff. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we were uh, we we looking at the content here on Tumult. I listen to the content gloriously. Everyone else here has uh, opportunities to tell us. My uh, cat series is his other events that are happening on screen going forward.
Like, you, you, there's other places. We are live. Uh, right. uh, so I assume this is the camera. Cool. So hello, everybody. This is Brent Evans and Alex Iglesias here. Hi. Uh, generally talking about art. And the truth is, we're totally open to a voice in the wilderness. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're totally open to, to field questions and do anything. Um, I've been the senior art director for Battletech. Before that, I was one of the core illustrators back when the line was black and white. Uh, Alex is one of our absolute legendary uh, cover artists and stuff, and he's also the, uh, the been the art lead on MechWarrior Online and MechWarrior 5 forever. Yeah. So, yeah. We, this we guy's have been to... feeding me work and is responsible for the existence of my career. Yeah, for... I will never forget <laughs> when we hired you. You'd spent like a year and a half rendering trees and bushes for a video game. You're like, please let me draw mechs. Please let me draw mechs. <laughs> like, dude, I can hook you up with that. Yeah, no. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, so you guys have been hearing from me a lot. Uh, I'm more than happy to let you just rant and, and, and go and, and talk. Oh, the oh, question for Brent. Can you use your art director powers to get the side windows put in on the Marauder? You know, that is a continuing battle between Ray and I. Ray thinks all side windows and top windows are armor. And I told him um, not all of them. Some of them should be glass. And uh, so typically I have them done as glass. And when they get sent in, sometimes Dak will redirect those files over to Ray and then he'll highlight them and convert them to gray to make them look like armor. So that's just part of the loving back and forth we have here in the creative team. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, no, like per personal head cannon, I guess. Uh, I, I always kind of consider most of the doesn't make really much sense, but most of the cockpit armor is being CT and only the little bit that you eject out of being that yeah. kind points. But yeah, the truth yeah. is, any player can paint their cockpits armor. Yeah, they true. can paint them glass. But we figured, you know, the mini's going to come out, and the players on the out there on the battle battle table battlefield tables are, uh, uh, you know, they can paint it however they want to go. Yeah, that's that's really player's choice. Okay, wow, we got lots of good questions. Uh, let's see here. Favorite artwork you've done for CGL? I'm going to flip that. I'm going to say some of the favorite artwork that Alex has done. I love Alex Alex's uh, eye for design and his uh, your ability to ta to like redesign stuff that nobody would think would be cool and make it really, really cool oh, thanks. is just epic. Like, for instance, um, uh, Small Craft. Hmm? You like, made Small Craft look so cool. I actually oh, like wanted air to play it. The aerospace fighters? Well, no, they're like the big chunky. They're like aerospace RVs, really. Oh. You, know? <laughs> you made the Rattler look cool. Like oh. you have the ability to make even the weirdest, clunkiest stuff look just awesome. I'll let you know. The <laughs> trick is, I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. <laughs> just... That's a mark of true genius, my friend. Mark of true genius. I, I, I look at a bunch of tanks and then like. I have no idea how they work, but like I try to make some sort of thing. Yep. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> There's see. Proto Mech Art Refresh. The truth is, uh, on the that upcoming schedule for the next couple of years, uh, one of the items in there is um, a uh, Wars of Reaving mm. pack, and it will include Proto Mechs. And I fought super hard. I got almost all of your redesigned uh, Wars of Reaving Proto Mechs in there. There was one that we didn't, but that's just because we had to balance out some of the other. There was some excellent Proto Mechs before you got to touch them. But, but yeah, I, I, I'm super excited. You laid down such an amazing visual style for those unique ones. Uh, and, of course, Anthony and his team are going to do a little little facelifting and stuff as they bring them to life from a 2D image over to actual you know three-dimensional models. But that's going to be a fun thing. Oh yeah, um, I mean, I I, I kind of did some fan art dabbling on on the Proto Max like eons ago. <laughs> nice. Uh, I don't know. Might be fun to tackle that again. Uh, I asked Ray about a standalone art book for BattleTech, including FASA art from the '80s and '90s. He said yes, and yes. Thoughts on that actually happening at some point? Oh, absolutely. 
at some point, we we can commit to it. Some point, yes. Yes. <laughs> the next six months, I don't know. We're we're busy breaking Ray over the things that are currently on his desk, but eventually, absolutely. The timeline for redesigned dropships and warships. I'm sorry, which one? Uh, what's the timeline for redesigned dropships and warships? Uh, already in the works. Already in the works. I don't know when that will actually equate to actually being delivered to you guys. Um, and I, I imagine a certain part of that, because, you know, committing to doing one or two, that, that's easy. Uh, actually committing to, like, the whole list the of whole aerodynes list of, and ovoids. Yeah, that's and... really requiring, um, we won't really commit to that and dive all the way down that rabbit hole until we have uh, an aerotech, uh, a new aerotech uh, system to redesign that we all like. Uh, question for both of you. If you could do any piece of artwork for the setting that you haven't done, what would it be? Mm. Mm. I I think I would actually like to uh, dabble in like components and stuff. Oh, that would be fantastic! Like weapons. It's and... been a long time since we did like the like yeah. you know, the laser and then the exploded views and that yeah, kind of stuff. It's yeah. been a long time since we did that. That would be a great thing to do. Uh, for me, um, uh, one of the things that we have on our on our current like near future radar is uh, the new RPG. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and by that, I don't mean Destiny. I mean a, a time of war. And so, well, a lot of those old classic like like markers from the 80s and early 90s, all the character designs for all the uniforms and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, all the equipment, the weapons, the handheld weapons and things that infantry had and stuff, all that stuff is really old, but we're finally getting a chance to do like, you know, full body images and update all of that old stuff, redesign those uh, th th those canon uniforms and stuff. Yeah, so uh, I'm really looking forward to that, and, and, I, and I would love to have more of a hand in that, particularly all the gear. Oh, yeah. You know, like the... Like the comm stuff. What what if you've got the stealth suit? What if you like? There's so many things in there that we've mentioned, but never really. It, we haven't drawn any time recently. Um, so yeah, it'd be really cool to see all the little technical doodads and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I also uh, I w I would say stuff like the um, like the civilian exosuit yeah. type of uh, type of stuff. Like I don't know. If, uh, like a, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that was in the um, vehicle annex is you know just fascinating it's interesting that that's where your mind went because i was kind of tracking there too like uh we have mentioned that there are hover bikes and yeah. i assume that there are you know dozens of different hover bike designs and and in gameplay they actually have a unique place you know outside of mechlix but like, like no it, especially when you're talking about an rpg level yeah. game then yeah you know it, it's more than just steal the big van and go smash it into something like you have a whole different kind you know variety of types of, of units i know when we did the 3085 mm -hmm. um you know oh. like there was the the fire the four-wheel drive fire oh, car yeah, yeah, the the, off-road uh, off thing and the, the mechanized infantry squads yeah that. yeah i know um uh we were talking about doing miniatures you know continue actually fully into production a line of destiny scale miniatures for the rpg line mm. uh you know we had those prototypes done up last year here at adepticon we had those marauders that were this big uh and they actually for those people that were looking the like there was a uh, you know roughly a uh a 33 millimeter 28 millimeter scale uh mech warrior character and then some elementals in in power armor next to them and you realize how much bigger the elementals are not because they're a whole lot taller but just the the sheer mass um so there's so many different elements like we have really cool we have got the dragon rider infantry mm -hmm. um we've got an in infantry they ride on like giant um uh ostriches oh yeah yeah yeah. Like, the, the oh, beast mounted infantry thank yeah, you yeah, beast yeah. mounted infantry. yeah so there's so many different types of units that we could do at the at the mech you know like the, the character scale i um, there'd be a lot of fun w one of the things i uh, just fascinating in both like real life and in BattleTech and any medium that ends up like exploring that same kind of territory but like the sheer amount of insanity that you can get exploring technicals yeah and like I, I I know in in BattleTech there's like a very blurry line between what counts as infantry and what counts as yeah. like a combat vehicle and like some stuff just gets in. Especially in that once blurry you get zone. into irregulars, irregular forces like there's yeah. you could you couldn't draw that line if you tried. But like yeah, I I think it would be really fascinating to I guess explore like you know someone slapping a bunch of armor on the side of a space yeah. pickup truck and mounting like. 
I don't know, an SRM one or two on it. And, yeah. Well, and it, it could yeah. be anything like we yeah. saw in, uh, uh, you know, decision at Thunder Rift, even all the way back to the, you know, those early novels, yeah, it was yeah. basically grab any truck off the street and slap some stuff on it and yeah, it can yeah. go. Of course, the PPC will just <laughs> all the oh, way man. through. But, oh, we've been ignoring the questions. Uh, you guys are doing great. There's a ton of good questions here. Oh, how do I scroll up? I think we missed. Oh, I don't think we can. Oh. If it if it went past the top, we don't get it to answer it. Oh wait, no, we haven't missed anything. Okay. Uh, as much as I love the old unseen designs. Battletech love... the musical. Does CGL have the necessary rights to produce this? Got gosh, that is a glorious question. We should redirect that to Lauren. Um, nice new art for the Great Death standard battle armor would be awesome. That is actually in the in the works. That is one of my favorite oh, color mine pieces too. from MechWarrior Two. Uh, I'm yep. sorry, uh, from the Field Manual Mercenaries. Yeah, like, awesome. I love that. That's so good. Lives rent free in my head. <laughs> uh, uh, as much as I love the old unseens, it, I love the redesign of most mechs, especially the LRM shell. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm glad you guys are enjoying that. Um, will there be more art of crowds of people? A and what not oh and what not like in some other oh i don't uh, know that's got, that's more of a source book focused question i know uh, we have been dealing with some of that with the last three uh, of those major books for the like you know tamar um uh, dominions divided and stuff like that um admittedly i don't really care one way or the other my artists can they can handle anything i just take whatever the developers throw us uh, uh, does that mean the updated War of Reaving Wreck Guide? I'm not committing to that. We're just, the, at that time, our focus was on identifying the miniatures production of the box sets. Uh, a War of Reaving Mech Guide would be, it would be something that came from the developer team, and I don't know how closely they are working alongside the release of the miniatures boxes. Hey, David Rossi. <laughs> hey, Dave. I specialize in mechanical internal drawings, Brent, just saying. Good. <laughs> you know what? You should work with Alex on my exploded views. That would be awesome. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, warships. I know the old art, the fan art, deviant art. Will there be? Uh, will be interesting to see if new official art when it comes. You know that's been interesting because warships, dropships, jump ships. Um, in truth, you know we don't have an aerotech game for those, and yeah. in a lot of ways, warships neutralize the the mech scale game. So there's a reason why. As a game, we've kind of moved away from. But with that said, we really need them for the illustrations. So yeah. as we've been do doing more space scenes, uh, the artists have been creating 3D models, and you would be blown away. So we had an artist, um, I believe, out of Brazil, and I and I asked him if he could do an image, and it had a, an amazing dropship in it, like like sails deployed. I'm like, that is fantastic. How did you do it? He's like, oh, I just built it in 3D. And I'm like, you just randomly built it. I didn't pay you to build like 3D models or stuff. Like, really? He's like, can I buy the? He's like, oh sure, I can, I can sell you that. I'm like, I'll pay you for it. But uh, uh, so I downloaded it and it crashed my computer. <laughs> so I sent it to DAC and it crashed DAC's computer. So I finally figured out how to open the thing up. And I'm like, why is this thing so big? And I scrolled in and I accidentally scrolled too far and moved the camera into the ship. And I realized he had modeled the interior compartments. He had bulkheads, and I'm like, this I, is so far beyond what I was expecting. I was really talking to someone today, and they were talking about, like, some guy that has been making, th like, 3D-printed dropships yeah. for his tabletop games. I'm wondering if it's the same person. Uh, I don't know. Let's leave it a mystery out there. Uh, what I will say is some of you will be seeing, have been seeing shots uh, out on social media and stuff. Uh, we have on display a big damn around, a diorama of the upcoming lunar ma uh, a lunar map side of the uh the next bfm and that has a crash dropship on it that covers six different maps it's that big when we had that modeled uh I, the assignment went i want you to redesign uh, this dropship so he modeled the dropship great now i want you to model the interior of the dropship so he's like looking at all the old you know like matt plog exploded views and stuff it did all the the compartments and like great and like okay now I want you to cut into a bunch of little pieces, going to crash it into a moon. He's like, seriously, I just <laughs> finished this. So yeah, so we we actually have that whole thing 3D modeled. It is spectacular. Oh, so yeah, that's what's on there. Nice. Uh, let's see, Death Kangaroo Merc Unit. Oh, uh, yeah, I think they're talking about kangaroo mounted infantry. Uh, uh, yes, there is stuff coming for the Death Kangaroo Merc Unit. Not a box set though, so don't go there. You said you didn't know how tanks work. When you get to aerospace craft design, please learn how aircraft work. Basic air, aircraft design knowledge goes a long way. Yeah, well, 
That would have been good advice maybe 10 years ago when I was doing the aerospace. I think they just aim for the, the command center of any regional warship or dropship and just run right into it. I think that's what the aerospace fighters do. Mm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Rassi did most of the encounters. Uh, Battletech equipment cards. Oh, nice. Nice. Hey, Derek. How's it going, buddy? He said you didn't know how tanks work. Uh, let's see. Where, where are we now? Point to it. Oh, oh, is there new art for the society coming since the pro? No, it's about uh, bringing the uh, the artwork that we already have to life um, in plastic. Let's see. Uh, when More. you do technical readouts, could it be possible to draw the variants as well? I have the Dire Wolf and Pr Lone Wolf and Prime, and there's a distinct difference between both. Uh, you know, that's a great question. The artists love that. It tends to get in the way of the writers and the developers who need space for uh, for, for the words, the background, the, uh, the the game stats, that kind of thing. So uh, I, I would love the idea of actually when we generate those, we all should do, you know, kind of like in the Project Phoenix era where they did the section in the back with all the different variant configurations yeah, yeah. shown. Um, with some of the ones like the rec guides, some of those when they were modeled, the modeler then went through and we just paid some extra and they did all the configurations, um, but they just weren't shown on the page. But as a general rule, we're trying to find that right balance between how much you know, the, the ever ever vigilant fight between the writers, the developers, and the artists for who gets paid space. Oh, any new special artwork for the 40th other than the new box art? Uh, actually, yes. And I assume these photos are going out on social media to some degree. Uh, we have been asked many, like for 15 years, we have been asked to do really, really high-end art prints of our artwork mm -hmm. for the very first time we have pulled that off at oh, this thanks. show we have eight different prints uh like full movie poster size super high end uh not uh, 10 color prints um of redesigned original covers so the original oh. the original warhammer box set cover uh the 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 first let me count the first five t technical readout covers. Oh, yeah. I saw the uh, the one with the bushwhacker. Yeah, so that's what those are. And then the two new technical readout covers. All of those with the new redesigns, all completely redone. Uh, this is something that actually uh, Florian uh, Spooky, uh, Florian Meles and I uh, have been working on for like six plus months. And we just had this log of building them up. We're like, we know we're going to use them during the anniversary year somewhere. We have no idea where. But, uh, yeah, so at this show... Uh, we managed to pull those off, and they are so cool. Special shout out to I, Echo Chernick and her husband Laz for helping us with the printing and shipping and getting those on overnighting to us in a miraculous time. I had, I had to do a double take on the 3058 bushwhacker. Right? I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, that looks a little bit different. Oh yeah, they're all they are so spectacular at IRL. So. Uh, let's see. Yeah, some warship, jump ship, and drop ship art seems to have the decks aligned along the wrong axis. Example, windows and aerospace bay doors facing the wrong way. Are these details kept in mind for new art? Always. Uh, and we always have the internal argument behind the scenes of the truth is those ships are, we think of them as we stand like the Star Trek yeah. ships, but the truth is they're not. They're fl like flying buildings where all the floors go this way uh, because that's how you get the, the, yeah, the, the gravity. gravity. But, yeah, yeah uh, very, few, uh, very few of the ships actually show like, vertical rings of windows because that's actually what would be real yeah. it's one of those things we just call hand wave him and and rattle always comics is like yeah everybody always asks if we could do them the correct way and i say no yeah i i i know that the the leopard would have to be like built either flying like this <laughs> or all of the uh all of the floors uh being you know like everybody's sideways. beds would be on the wall yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I'm aware of the problem. I have no fix. Yeah, suspend your right disbelief. Now. We're just trying to make it look cool. Uh, Tariq and the other, Bre yeah, see exactly. Those infantry would be fantastic. Where's the Ganon's cannons at? I'm not familiar with that one, but it sounds familiar. Is that a Merc unit? That is a Merc unit. Uh, Alex, what are your favorite moments from the lore? Uh, Joanna barbecuing Natasha Kerensky. Uh, really? Yeah, I, I, wow. 
just Joanna's a jerk, but she's a lovable jerk. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, there's one one of the short stories I can't remember the name of it. Uh, was about like a bunch of auxiliary mercs that were helping out the wolves dragoons and liberating a um, a word of Blake re-edu- reeducation camp, and the overall gist of the story was that they were constantly being harassed in this jungle like day in and day out and there was this one particular scout mech that was just insufferably annoying because every time it showed up artillery followed and like spoiler alert by the end of the story like the main character finally 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 gets his hands on that light mech really and just just he's so pissed off that he clotheslines the 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 uh, I think it was a light ray or one of those like okay. little light mechs. He clotheslines it and then like shoves the uh, his weapon barrel right into its face wow. and deliberately just unloads even though he knew it was going to destroy the weapon and like wow. flies right there. It was like that was such a satisfying kill and nice. Yeah, that was that was really cool. Nice. Um, I I I enjoyed the. Uh, I mean, I I haven't read them in years, so I don't know if the nostalgia holds up. But I really did enjoy the uh, the Comanchos Caballeros, yes. uh, Victor Milan novels, um, just because they were all such like a quirky little like band of misfits, and I will always fall for that uh, fall for that trope whenever it's yeah. Used. I love the scene of a of a just freshly out of the shower, Casey Southern <laughs> jumping out of the window to attack a mech with their bare hands. I'm like, you know what? That is just so wickedly awesome. What a great character. Um, one of the ones for me, I was thinking yesterday, um, uh, uh, when, uh, when the Inner goes to fight the final, um, uh, battle if, uh, against the clans, they had that scene where the Nekakami are, are going into a building, mm. uh, to, to, to you know, to sneak in and, and do terrible things. And all of a sudden, Lincoln Osis comes, you know, the doors to the elevator open and Lincoln Osis steps off and the, the Nekakami leader says, you guys go, I got this. And, and he dies gloriously, you know, but the whole, like, th- that that whole scene, he's, he's just, I, I got, like, that, that was just such a great character moment because from what we'd seen building up, I mean, it's a weird, stupid thing to do, yeah. but it made so much sense for this character at yeah. that moment to make this choice you know, against the face of Lincolnosis, which, if you were to imagine really coming face to face with Lincolnosis, oh yeah, you're in screwed. a dark hallway, like, <laughs> I, like pee my pants, throw up. I don't know what I would do, but I'm like, man, I wish I would have the forethought. It's like I'm gonna pull my sword. Okay, no, I I definitely have my favorite one now. It was, it was in one of the, uh, I forget what book it was. It was this weird little side story. Yeah, but it was like a a a squad of elementals was sent into a city where um a star of mechs had like basically gone no contact had disappeared into okay and the squad of elementals comes into the city and it's a ghost town and they find all the uh all the uh the mech wars basically dead and crucified on a hill and when they are like trekking back through the city they're getting ambushed by like civilian from like every direction wow. bombs are going off left and right and like the elementals are just cutting through people like a hot knife through butter like people just exploding um into salsa and everything but attrition wise they're slowly oh, yeah. getting picked off like someone gets too close to an exploding car someone catches a rocket to the faceplate like this that and eventually it was down to like the uh the last guy and he rounds some corner and there's like an old guy with like a homemade arquebus or something that wow. shoots at him and it just like boom and he's like okay that was a nice try but yeah. i'm gonna have to kill you so he goes and he runs after this old guy bursts through some doors only to find that the old guy and i'm guessing his uh grandchild or something were behind the controls of wow. a giant leaf spring crossbow made out of oh. like, truck suspension and just like shoots shoots the elemental square in the chest, knocks him on his back, and he's still alive and being pumped full of combat chems 
up until like all the civilians start going at him with like sledgehammers and that stuff. That is pretty savage. It was it was so so metal. It was crazy. Oh, I also gotta say Vlad crushing the life out of the con of the sm- uh, of the Jade Falcon, you know, <laughs> under his, just by stepping on his throat and grinding oh, yeah. him. Into, like, what a fantastic moment! Yeah. And it was a character that I absolutely hated. I'm like, man, now I'm actually rooting for Vlad. I can't believe I'm rooting for Vlad. But oh man, that was awesome. Vlad and Vlad kind of occupies a sort of like Vegeta position in my oh, imagination. Oh, so good, so good. Uh, Okay, I've, uh, I I was still focused on his answer. I stopped reading, so I apologize if we missed your question. Uh, let's see. Love to see the artwork of Phalon's Wolfhound versus Vlad's Timberwolf. That yeah. would be a good moment. That would be fun. Word of advice during the live streams: try to avoid saying J word Blakest era. Uh, I guess. Good point. Okay. Uh, Whatever. Ever since dropships and jumpships in the past two days, it's canon that aerodyne dropships fly horizontally when they're in transit and vertically in combat and the atmosphere. Okay. Joanna gets no glory for killing Natasha. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Natasha even asked me one of my favorite movies, too. Really fun. Yeah. Uh, you said you were part of the uh, MechWarrior 5 team as well. Will MechWarrior 5 cover all, cover all lore until Civil War? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Caballeros are the worst. Cassie Southern is insufferable. All right. I mean, I guess. Like I, I, I don't, thought she was awesome. I don't want to lose my my nostalgia by going back and reading it again. Yeah. I was in high school. I also got to tell you, we read the cover for that. Tano Sim did the new. One. It's so spectacular. Oh, oh nice. man, the Caballeros cover is so cool. So let's see here. Best of Zendente. Yes, David accepted. Oh, that scene is in Grave Covenant. Yes, Grave Covenant. Yes. Yeah. Uh... Into Salsa. <laughs> the worst scene in the novels were Victor surviving a Gauss rifle to the head. Oh, yeah. We're not whining or bitching. We're, we're just talking about cool stuff. How are you covering Leviathan's The Great War? We're not. Uh, Hail to Mark Pride. Malvina yeah. Hazen, morally correct or just plain expert. Okay. <laughs> uh, see here favorite mech redesign or favorite original design i had so much fun finding out your favorite mech was the crab that was oh, so cool bo- simultaneously the crab and the king crab which I just, is fair i, I, I like the crab yeah. uh original design wise i really liked working on the corsair like that was just nice that was fun uh let's see i really like tinkering with tanks too uh let's see uh if you were to design a heavy crab, a heavy class crab, okay. uh, in any way, shape, or form, and it couldn't be the Marauder, oh, I mean, you can actually say it would be the Marauder, and, and I'll and I'll accept it. But if it wasn't the Marauder, how would you do it? Oh shit, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's got to have the crabbies. It, it has to have pinchers. Um, well, like the hermit crab is basically an energy loadout. The crab is an energy loadout, but the king crab is mostly ballistics on the majority of the variants. Um, I guess I would have to make it ballistic, so it could be like the little brother to the big to the king crab. Okay. I don't know. I guess the ballist ballistics in the arms probably not AC twenties, maybe something a little smaller. Um, well, you could do Ultra Tens. You could do yeah. an Ultra and an LBX. There's there's options there. I will admit, um, ever since playing the new Plasma Rifle, I love that I weapon. I like Plasma Rifles. Plasma Rifles, man. PPC damage plus heat. That's just, that's so golden. And honestly, the whole idea of the pinchers actually have like soot, half-melted blackened tips because of the, there's flame lips coming out. I just think that's so cool. Uh, there, there was some custom print I saw of a uh, of a king crab that I don't know where they got the parts from, um, but like they had like multiple, like I think it was like three or four way claws on it or something. Oh, like really? That. Yeah. I hadn't seen that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty gnarly looking. I, I really yeah. dug it. Uh, yeah, one big claw, one little claw. That's funny. Oh yeah, that could. <laughs> yeah, the Marauder is the heavy crab. Yeah, uh, Ray is convinced that the Marauder is the heavy crab. Yeah, I mean, it kind of. Maybe sucks. we just need a Marauder with with clab carapaces on its arms. Oh yeah. Uh, basically, rip off clamps from Futurama for the heavy crab. Yeah, crab this, crab that, Bubba crib. <laughs> Mantis shrimp mech. 
with one big pincer and an UAC-20. Plasma rifles are based. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, one big ass pincer with an AC-20 or something. I mean, you'd be competing versus the, uh, what you might call it, the Berserker, I suppose. Yeah. But. Here's an interesting one at the top from uh, Mike Vasta. When doing redesign art, are you thinking of color schemes, uh, or just thinking of it as a black and white design? Uh, just thinking of it as a black and white design for the yeah. most part. For I think for me, it's mostly about. Uh, I actually think about uh, a a rookie painter painting the miniature. Yeah. And, and trying to give details and access panels and things in ways that, you know, like someone new to the game, now that we've been doing miniatures and stuff, focus on getting new players, you know, finding those shapes and stuff that they can easily just accent and make it look pretty cool Yeah, yeah. from a basic level. Uh, what was the hardest art you had to do and why? What was the what? Hardest art you had to do and why? Hmm. That's a good one. I don't know, like, I've had, it depends on what you mean by hardest, because yeah. there have been some covers that, like, have taken me a long time to finish, because, like, I... Well, and part of that is because you have done some spectacular covers. Before we had 3D models, you were my go-to for the truly complicated compositions. You know, the, uh, what was that one where the um, the House Steiner forces are fighting the House wolf or the clan oh, wolf force while the yeah. falcons are coming down from the sky and you're looking down pat down like under the uh, the weapon arm of one mech over yeah. the top of the downed wolfen in the four middle ground at the uh, like that one was pretty complicated yeah. uh oh I, man I, the redone uh uh kai on the cliff with the falcons jumping up to to ambush him and you did all the custom configurations yeah. the jump packs that that one was pretty tricky uh the God, I had it on the tip of my tongue. What was it? Uh, it evades me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I know that the, the Atlas busting through the wall was a hard one. Because oh. like, it was originally like supposed to be a Warhammer. Yeah, and, and... and then we had to redo it. To, can just change the Mac. Well, you can't. <laughs> you can try, but... Yeah, there was a lot of back and forth of that one. And honestly, a big part of that is that we were, we were really overthinking it because of the importance of that original image. So uh, some of that stuff is actually hard to work on just because there's a huge enough fats out and geek out nostalgia factor, you know, on our end as we're doing it. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, the uh, the Emperor uh, the emperor mech uh, oh, was dropping. Yeah, that was excellent. That was a that was a hard that was a hard drawing to figure out. Yeah. It was like, all right, this thing has to look like it's dropping from orbit onto a planet below like how the hell do i compose this image and like i yeah. busted my head against the wall trying to figure that one out and i'm happy with how it turned out it, oh, I think it definitely. turned out really well you know it's but, funny because you, know, you tackled several that were um they were really complex like the technical readout where it's got the uh um the legacy on it oh yeah you know, yeah the and, and, and the 3067 yeah, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'm blanking on it. I, I can picture it in my head, but I can't think of what era it was. But the uh, the key for it was, you know, we want to show off the legacy, but we want this jihadist era um, bat scene where there's a city that's kind of torn down, but not too much. But And honestly, stuff like that, it's so easy to pour all your time into noodling all the little details of rubble. Um, but you didn't. You, like, found this great way to, like, quickly block in the stuff so it gave the impression of it without actually over detailing it um Thanks. but it, yeah it was it's still one of my favorites because the the colors were so vibrant it was so visually grabbing and that was before we had all the tricks that we have now with oh, yeah. you know 3d models and stuff so it was really epic uh that's on big red shirtless alaric pick i'm sorry I, what which one this one i don't know i haven't seen uh it. that's something on the side. Don't worry about that one. Uh, 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 when the plasma rifles and MMLs were introduced in Wolf and Blake, we had a lot of fun. I was constantly spamming my friends with plasma and infernos, and they couldn't get their mechs below 12 feet. <laughs> a lot of new mech models have small thighs and oversized calves. 
That's cool for some, but it's so common on the mechs, it's unrealistic. Can you have one um, mechs do the th not? That's all the questions really for the redesign team and the nuance. And a big part of that is now that we're focusing on, um, you know, redesigning these with an eye toward plastic production. Mm -hmm. um, we've had to intentionally go through and, and, for lack of a better word, inflate the thin parts that would ultimately have not either produced well uh, or, sh or, or survived the rigors of shipping. Well, mm. um, so a lot of those, uh, we, we used to be able to get away with a lot of really thin points because we knew in metal, oh, yeah. the metal will hold up and then the, the player can actually like bend those and pose them without like warping and distorting. Mm. Um, so it's just nuance of that. Okay. Uh, adding features that are easy to add accent colors to is greatly appreciated. I'm, gl I'm glad you guys here. appreciate that. Uh, most difficult for, for you to put pen to paper. Okay. Uh, what was the most difficult for us to actually? Mm, interesting. Pen to paper. Mm. I, I don't know. I'm having a hard time coming up with anything. Oh, the quads. At least for my side. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the classic quads like the Goliath and the Scorpion. Yeah. Um, ultimately, I was glad that that fell to Anthony because for a while before that, um, I, I, you know, like anytime it would come to me is I'm like, the truth is, I, I don't know how we want to go with this one because we were producing them in min in plastic. We knew we wanted to pl produce them in plastic, mm -hmm. but the feet wouldn't fit on the hexes. Oh, you know, so just the sheer logistic of how do we pose, how do we model and pose something without making it look really derpy? Um, and it, it actually really did take Anthony a lot of trial and error and then back and forth to the, the producer and they figured out, well, we can do a clear peg in the middle and not worry about it. Like, okay, that's the answer. There we go. Uh, let's see. What are your favorite liveries, both canon and fan made and which ones look surprisingly well on mechs you designed? Mm. Uh, I have a huge soft spot for, um, warrior house Haritsu Cause it's got that, that green color. That's really a silver with like a green wash where the metallic really comes through and no matter like, I'll be honest. I'm a decent illustrator, not a great mini painter, but man, I I did those for my, you know, like the, my Lao forces and they came out looking amazing on the battlefield table. I'm like, okay, that usurped my inability with skill. So that was a good one. And they got a cool logo. Uh, I like, uh, Hisaian's hotheads. Um, no. just the, the, the basic, uh, you know, black with flames and the, the white head. I okay. just think. Looks uh, pretty rad. Robinson's Robinson's Rangers, uh, uh, the red with that the, the black white. and then the little white dots. Oh, I okay. think that comes out looking really good, regardless of if you have any skill whatsoever. I'm, you know, not for me speaking from personally or anything. But... Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, oh, TRO thirty sixty seven revised. That was the legacy yep. cover. Thank you, Lauren Lorcan. Who we got on camera right now, art director and, yeah, that's me, Alex, <laughs> flying debris. Uh, let's see. Talk about plasma rifles, including color. How would you describe a mech being hit by one? Is there one in design element that requires consistent changes? Actually, the one that comes to mind is um, auto cannon muzzles. Yeah. Because... Uh, Anthony came early on with the idea of the the the, the staggered circular hole vents. Yeah. Um, but we don't want everything to look the same. You know, like auto cannons produced on the various houses won't all look the same. Auto cannons produced by the clans won't all work the same. Do we want the you know, like the classic auto cannons, the ultra auto cannons, and the LBX auto cannons to all look no? Like they should all look different. But it's really easy to say auto cannon. Oh, let's just do this one because it looked really cool. And and it is amazing how how far we overthink auto cannon muzzles now, because we're trying not to make them just look like one way. Mm. Uh, as far as the uh, the plasma stuff goes, I, I would almost imagine it like like sticking a bunch of uh, like just burnt. Oh, can't, it's not really burning gel. Uh, like. I don't know. I, I imagine plasma rifles, even though it doesn't make any sense, I would imagine them almost being like sticky on the target. Yeah. Uh, like 
hitting them with a burning loogie or something like that. But eh, I'm I don't happy know if to that's let accurate. the our authors take over that one. We'll just draw it and make it look cool. Um, color wise, probably blue or white. I don't know. Um, I don't necessarily that the think that uh, I don't necessarily agree that the thighs should be at least as thick as the calves. It depends entirely on where the jump jets are, <clears throat> and whether there's supposed to be an enhanced, um, you know, like a shock absorbing system in that. Uh, we've had a lot of things where we had like the the, the zigzag legs, yeah, because that'll it, the, that will allow for a lot of flex. But a lot of these mechs that are standard humanoid, mm -hmm. <laughs> we try to pretend there's some kind of a shock suspension in there. In there. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I, whenever I, whenever I draw jump jets in the legs, at least I do try to include some kind of, at least indication of a vent visible somewhere on yeah. the front. At, Definitely. Just to show that there's some kind of intake involved, at least. I try to make allowances for, for the space on those. That, uh, How did you guys like the lasers in Dune 2? I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, me neither. Um, I only saw Dune one so far. I haven't had time. Uh, let's see, are CGF and CSJ getting new fancy Ill Clan paint schemes, or are they bringing back to originals? Don't mind me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was the question? Are Clan Jade Falcon and Clan Smoke Jaguar getting new fancy Ill Clan paint schemes, or are they bringing back the originals? Can I have my pen, <laughs> John? Can you can you get my pen? He's got it. Any love for Nova Cat's Alpha Galaxy? I found a He's surprising number of mechs look great in it. Uh, <laughs> is that the? I'm trying to remember which one that is. Uh, do you do you remember which? Um... Which paint scheme is the Novacast Alpha Galaxy? Is that the one with all the stars, or is that? Yeah, the... I thought that isn't that the the blue black th one with the stars on it. I think so. I think so. I could be wrong. Hmm. The one I remember is I think the Z Galaxy one that's just absolutely wacko bonkers, like crazy color schemes. Oh yeah, that one was really cool. Uh... Let's see. One of my best friends is a Robinson's Rangers player, and despite not being a great painter, he has a decent-looking regiment. Yeah, see, that paint scheme just looks good, regardless of how good a painter you are. Uh, the AutoCAD design thing is super cool. It's always amazing to understand the scope and depth you guys have to look at things. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with uh, with AutoCAD. The thing I've been trying to do with uh, whenever I've been drawing them is try to like give the implication of just like nest the the barrel being like nested within a much larger cowling yeah uh because yeah battletech barrels are crazy big for minis purposes and and the cannon calibers are like 120 so well, and honestly yeah. you look at this one that's the ac ac20 that you did without the cowling yeah the idea that there may be multiple barrels within that yeah um so there's a lot of hand wave in there. I, I personally, I like the old school chunk mm -hmm. of the bigger auto cannons. Yeah. Um, regardless of the fact that I realize the, the unit, the things coming out of those may be significantly smaller. Yeah. But uh, yeah, j just a nuance. Uh, let's see. Mech that you'd personally like to redesign. I don't know. I'm I've... sorry, what's the question? Mech that you'd personally like to redesign. I just recently got to have Anthony redesign the Dola. The Dola? Uh, yeah. Is that the, the one with the... the it had the Vibro sword. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, it really, all it is is just a, uh, an overhauled mongoose. It was basically like, I got tasked with back today, let's, you know, strap great big jump jets on the back of a mongoose and change its head a little and give it a sword. Uh, but it was interesting because when we realized moving forward into the Ill Clan era, by that point... Um, the Capella Confederation and uh, the Rosselhawk Dominion had been producing this thing in mass, like multiple production lines for decades. So, like, er, they, this thing would have been all over the place, yeah, uh, with or without the Vibra Sword, you know, a variety of different configurations and stuff. But yeah, having seeing that one redesigned was really exciting. You guys will get to see the artwork for that in an upcoming, upcoming product. They uh, are bird mechs. They are 
bird mechs, bear mechs, is their lizard mechs. The sloth is kind of shaped like a lizard. Uh, that, oh, that's a power armor. There's a lizard proto mech. Yeah. Yeah, the basilisk. Uh, that I really, well, no, yeah, yeah, the basilisk. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And um, um, we we try not to go too overly into the the totem direction, uh, mainly because you know the line did that in the past, and it it may have seemed cool at the time, but it started feeling really dated really fast. Yeah. Uh, so we try not to overdo it with that. Let's see. Uh... Nova Cat Alpha Galaxy is blue and Star Torso with the black limbs. Yeah, yes. so it was. Oh, good. It was, yeah. Uh, In terms of a combat vehicle design, uh, do they all have airlocks or something? Because they have to operate on worlds with non-breathable atmospheres. Um, don't hmm. overthink it. Yeah. <laughs> it is whatever it needs to be. If if they have special seals or whatever for a, a hazardous conditions or whatever, fine. Uh, yeah. V2Ls have no rotors to work in, in zero G, so you gotta kinda hand wave them your units when you're doing that or deployment stuff. Uh favorite interaction you've had during Adepticon? I don't know, just meeting lots of people. Uh ran into the I ran into the couple I was sitting next to on the airplane. Oh, that's yeah, fun. They they had submitted something to the uh to the Golden Demon booth. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh Favorite interaction. Let's see. Last night I got to hang out with the Wolfnet guys. That was a lot of fun. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, great to see Nick. Uh, the 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 BattleTech pods are here across the aisle from us, so we actually it's been fun. Uh, I guess Catalyst paid to have them here, so all the games are free. So just when the doors open, people would jump in and start blowing each other up. And there's obviously crowds of folks that are standing by watching all the battles going on on the screens. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's a great oh, to see, Nick. You know, good to see old friends that you only run into a, a time or two a year. Speed paints work great on B, on the BT models. Had a lot of fun painting um, up a set. Ultra light mech designs that you'd like to see redone. Ultra lights. Mm, oh. No, I'm happy with. Isn't there like? Uh, uh, there's only a handful of those, really. There's only a few. Yeah. Uh, the biggest problem with that is scale wise. They start filling the role that Protomex did, and for those of you that don't know Jordan Weissman, he's actually said multiple times that, uh, in his opinion, creating the Protomex was a mistake because they functionally reduced the seeming scale of Battle Mechs. Mm -hmm. uh, Bat the character Batman in comic books only looks big because they gave him Robin. They literally interjected and created Robin as a character yeah. to give Batman a way to look bigger than life, because otherwise he's just a, a regular human guy running around in a in a funny suit. So by the same token, uh, you know, battle mechs feel big because they're next to infantry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so adding a middle ground element that may it ultimately he felt when you're, you know, as a game designer and and the orchestrator of of the universe. Uh, on on a tabletop battlefield where you're looking across the thing at all the forces, if they're standing next to protomechs, the mechs stop feeling big and giant. Hmm. Um, so that was one of the reasons why, uh, kind of in, to honor his insights on that one, and I'm not saying that he's right or wrong, but to honor that, we're like, you know, we're just not, not really going to go there much. We may dabble one or two because obviously it's a complex universe. There's always something weird. Hmm. But, uh, but yeah, we try to generally stay away from things that are smaller than 20 tons for that reason. Hmm. Well, I mean, I I kind of find them, I find them fascinating in the, in the aspect. It, it, there's a lot of stuff that's interesting about them, but like the, one of the things that I do find interesting is when you have that overlap between, the upper end of uh, of power armor yeah. and the lower end of the proto mechs, because they're both trying to like. Yeah, and they totally they, overlap. They they overlap, but they're fighting for the same niche with different design constraints. Right. And like those different design constraints mean like there are different sacrifices being made to oh, yeah. achieve like overlapping ends to an extent. And I, it's yeah, it's you're neat. totally right though. They they end up in the roughly the same place, but coming from dramatically different directions. Yeah, like like the Protomex at like two tons are can be blazingly fast, but they're like armored like paper, and the and the power armors and the two ton range 
are like tanking stuff that like would kill a light mech in yeah, some cases. Totally. And it's, 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 it's weird. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the old Ron, Ron is a regular source book mentions a mech warrior named Aaron Ling. His Kintaro was painted with this. Painted like an 18th century steam engine. I'd love to see the pilot card for that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Love the art. It's well done. Thank you very much, Black Pants Legion. I love the mechs that have auto cannons in the torso, being able to see the assembly of the guns either poking out of the back or fully on display on, out the side is awesome. I agree. Uh, we totally agree, actually. That was, that was definitely one of those elements uh, that, that we wanted and Anthony's team really ran with and has tried to stick to. I understand the stance on protos, but I love them. I did not care. That's really good. <laughs> hey, that That's means legit. Lots of fun corners in this. And same with the super heavies. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> What do you think about drawing transparent armor like the Void system? Was it transparent? I thought it... Light bending. Predator yeah. light bending kind of thing. Yeah. Uh... Uh, you know what? Yeah. I love that it's there and what it can do. Uh, I thought the way it was introduced in the, in the video games would have, you know, did all kinds of stuff. And then ultimately, you know, Battletech kind of brought that to life in, in things. Um in particular, I really like the way it is been brought. It has been brought into the BattleTech rules mm -hmm. uh, because, as with anything, you can do really cool stuff, but there's a cost, yeah. and the cost of that one is you know tonnage, equipment, expense, heat. Uh, but if you need to sneak into some place, it's hard to think of a better way to do it. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, let's see, more tripods. <laughs> yeah, okay. I got yeah, I got clear plastic against. would be awesome. Yeah. Uh for what it's worth on that, uh Ironwood Metals had this really cool miniature they did of uh I wanna say the exterminator. Mm -hmm. Uh that they cast it in plastic in clear plastic because they wanted to do the, the ECM version. But then they they ended up with this issue where like uh what five minutes or wrap it up. Oh, we're going over, that's on you. Uh, so yeah, so um, that's my ride over there. I is gotta, it okay? Yeah. Well, we'll wrap it fast. But all right. Uh, so they cast them in clear, but they get like uh, three out of four of them were coming out with this defect with a bubble in the head. Oh no! So they actually painted to have those uh, where there was a Gauss rifle shot coming through. They did the line that they did like special effects, and then they had the uh, the Nelsig failing for like you know, like three or four millimeters around all the parts that were suddenly materializing. It was really oh. cool. If you guys ever come to a show where Ironwood Metals is, they usually have that miniature in the display case, and it's just awesome. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. Working with what you got. All right. Well, I well think I gang, we're going. told it's time to cut it. Thank you all for, for listening and viewing, and I, I hope you enjoyed it.
and welcome back to Adepticon 2024. We are in glory at Schaumburg, Illinois. And it's it's absolutely with only like two inches of snow on the ground. Yeah. Only uh, not even that. It is it is snowing. It's trying. Yep, yep. But it's doing a pretty good job. Um for those of you who weirdly may not know me on the stream, my name is John Helvers. I am the executive editor of Catalyst Game Labs, responsible for hurting authors and creating great fiction for the Battletech, Shadowrun, and Leviathan's lines. I am with a man who technically needs no introduction, but we're going to do it anyways. My name is LVD Command Kuba. Battle to I'm just going to keep using the title now from now on. Hey, nice. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so my name, <laughs> my name is Randall Bills. I'm the creative director at Catalyst Game Labs. Uh, I have been uh, playing Battletech since 1986 and working on it professional, professionally since 1996. I just kind of follow it around like a vagabond from company yes. to company. Uh, I can't get out of it, and it can't get out of me. Or an adorable bearded puppy. Yes, yes an adorable bearded thing. puppy. And then I, I really touch all aspects of Catalyst. Almost anything that goes out the door, uh, I touch it or influence it in some fashion. So I, yep. I just have an amazing group of this fantastic, weird family uh, team that we have, and uh, we get it done, make cool stuff. We are a great dysfunctionally loving family yes. absolutely yes but good we, way to say you know, some great stuff absolutely yeah. so uh so randall how's your uh, adepticon been going uh it's actually been going fantastic uh adepticon is i mean i've been to cons all over the world uh and this is my favorite convention there's just there's wow. a there's a there's a well <laughs> so, yeah so there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is similar to like, I have a pretty wide listening palette of music, mm -hmm. but in my heart of hearts, uh, it's all about prog. Uh, it's all about prog rock or prog metal. Uh, and the same thing, I, I play every type of game there is. I love every type of game there is, but in, a, in my heart of hearts, it's tabletop miniature games. Uh, and this is a show of you know, while it was five to six thousand people, they're saying that maybe we're reaching a past eight thousand, which is really? amazing. Wow. Uh, Lauren's just kind of coming down the side. We'll ignore him. Um <gasps> and, and, for a I know. And the whole to have the whole show be nothing but tabletop miniature play. Yes. That just makes it extra special. And then a huge shout out to the Adepticon team, in particular Greg and Shelley. Uh, they just make it, they are so laid back. They are so awesome. They make it so easy to come and be here. And it's really uh, just so, the excitement. We're in day, I mean, technically for us it's day three. Yeah. Uh, because it, there's a day seven show that no other show has. Right, right. <laughs> but the energy here is still as high as it was yeah. when we first came in and made our first sale. So yep. it's been incredible. Yep. Uh, I guess, from what I understand, this is primarily kind of a Q&A, but also you're going to do a little bit of talk about... Uh, Kickstarter. And it, well, uh, well, I think yeah. it's post Kickstarter. Yes, yes. Like you know, what what's it's like in the post Kickstarter world? Post yeah. Kickstarter world. Uh, yeah. So we will uh, see. Uh, thank you, Randall, for finally finished Clan Founder trilogy. Uh, yes. Thank you uh, for staying all these years to finally see it finish. So we'll we'll. Uh, sorry, I I looked over there and suddenly saw a ton of questions. We'll come back to that. Yep. I'll get in the post clan. Dad, believe me, Mr. Post, we'll be asking yours very soon. Not me. Yeah. But why don't you give uh, the folks out there an update on where we are, what's happening? Yeah. So, really, the, uh, you know, this Kickstarter was just something, something to behold. Uh, we were here, we were here one year ago as record after record after record fell. Uh, uh, we, shattered. We, shattered. we made it into the top 20. Kickstarter funding of all time, right? Yeah. Uh, there's been, let's see if I can remember these numbers. There's been oh, something like 400,000 successful Kickstarters. Somewhere around there. Wow. And we were in slot 20, right? And, and you guys did that. Yeah. You yeah. helped us do that with this. And yes. so that was... That was really a stunning moment that that will never be taken away from us. We get to glory in that for all the rest of time until the you know coffin nails start being hammered in. But don't worry, um, we'll with all playing. my minis That'd and my dice. Yes, yes, exactly, yeah, I will be playing in the afterlife. Yep. If there is no gaming in the afterlife, I don't want the afterlife. Well, you're going to create it anyway. So <laughs> that's right. I am for you. Get into this world with dice in your hand. That's all the same way. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so a spectacular time. And That's so amazing. Uh, we, uh, again, softly said 
because shipping is just horrific in this current world we live in. Uh, but we seem to be on track for starting to deliver in June. Uh, I've talked with a lot of other people in the industry, all of whom kind of are a dog that this size of a Kickstarter has delivered that quickly. And uh, usually my response is, well, that's because we spent the two and a half years from the previous <laughs> quick Kickstarter doing nothing but preparing for we this Kickstarter. We can learn. Yeah, so Anthony, well, but we can't yeah, learn. So Anthony and his whole team, we kept chained in the basement. Uh, generating STL after STL, and that's really what allowed us to uh, get to this point. So it's it's going to be glorious. Um, well, everyone, I wish for those that aren't able to make it to the show, it's just so amazing. I don't know how many people I talk to who are like, I've been around for Battletech. Well, one, we have some people that are like, I just started Battletech. It's yes. awesome. Yes, the thank you. This is wonderful. But we have plenty of them that are like, you know, I I I've been here for 20, 30 years. And it just wasn't all that long ago that I couldn't get the time of day from anyone. Yep. And now I'm showing up to the show with a group of friends and unasked, they're like, hey, I'm going to go check out the Battletech. Yep. Right? And so yeah. it just, Battletech seems to be on the lips of everyone of late. Yeah. Uh, and again, huge kudos to all of you. Yeah. You participated in making that happen and getting us where we are here. Do you know how many demo tables we have running right now? I don't actually. I don't know those specific. But it's like the, it's, 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 yeah, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's expanding and yeah. it's expanding. Yeah. We keep going bigger. Uh, we've talked with uh, with Adepticon, and Adepticon absolutely loves us here. We're going to be here for years to come. Uh, if you love me, I, I know travel is hard. I know taking the time off is hard. But if there's any show where you would like to try and come and you love Battletech, man, this is a show. Oh, this, this is, is so this awesome. Is Absolutely. So we are going to hopefully deliver this summer. It'll all be on your sh on your tables and on yep. store shelves. Uh, what comes next? Um, mm, yes, do tell. Well, uh, hopefully we all maybe get to sleep in a few days. Right, yeah, yeah. A little bit of time. Uh, just, just, just a little. Uh, well, not not so much for me because I signed up for this ridiculous traveling. Uh, oh yes, yeah, your tour. My my, my giant tour. Yeah. Uh, if you if you are not aware of the meme that I have become of late <laughs> on the interwebses, uh, I have I announced a tour uh, that I'm traveling to more conventions than ever, and then after the conventions, trying to hit as many local game stores. Yeah. So, for example, right after this, uh, right after Adepticon, I then am going to Michigan and then over into Indiana and then uh, back over to Wisconsin and then also here in Illinois, like six days, six stores. And every place that I go, I'm going to do that. Uh, all you have to do is go up to CatalystGameLabs.com and you'll see a graphic that's up there. Also, uh bg.com or really just type onto the internet you know randall bills tour I, I really hope they're using as you go to store to store there's like a mech tracking across oh that'd be cool yes, yes, here's here's well, santa yeah. you know <laughs> sasquatch this day you'll but, be here this day you'll be there I, we gotta make that happen just i you know this has been a lifelong passion of mine um and you so many of you have been along this path with me and I just think we have the coolest, best community that's out there. And I wanted to be able to shake your hand in person and thank you, sit down at your tables, toss some dice with you, share stories, and uh, give you a cool uh, collector's patch. Yep. So I'll be doing that for the rest of the year. Um, the biggest thing I would say coming out of the post Kickstarter world is that we don't need the Kickstarters anymore to produce plastics. Um, we said the first two times very clearly that molds are incredibly expensive and to be able to produce these new plastics, we needed to have the community step up and help us. And we don't need that anymore. Uh, that doesn't say that we won't do Kickstarters in the future. Of course we will. They're still the best possible marketing that this entire industry has. Uh, but we don't need that necessarily for force packs. And so we simply have a big old pile of force packs that are in development and in the works. And we're simply going to be releasing them straight into channels, straight into you guys, straight into the local game stores across the next few years. I believe the photo was, and by the way, folks, if you cannot understand me, please uh, hit up on the chat because I hit a comment that someone said they can't. 
Um, so I need to make sure that our, our tech is working. I believe that someone may have, may have put a three year no, no. three year plan there. Oh yeah, they we only had them two. It seems like it seems like they snuck out of it. Uh, when we were at Kerensky Con, it uh, I shared the entire spreadsheet and I said, take a photo, share it. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to be, I want everyone to be super excited um, about what we have coming. I mean, if and, three years of force is getting people excited, I don't know what will. Well, when we wanted to show the sheer breadth of what you guys have all allowed us to do, what all of you have unlocked effectively. Yeah. Um, and as I, uh, every time I get the chance to talk about it, uh, I don't think that 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 list is not a. It will exactly be like this, and it will come out exactly in those dates. Oh. Um, uh, there is it, it, it's in the place. Uh, but it, but I do believe every one of those packs will eventually see the light of day, and you'll see a couple of more packs that will come along. There you go. Um, so we have a huge spread of that. We have the combat, uh, excuse me, the force manuals coming, which are kind of a spiritual successor of the combat manuals. Uh, House Davian is in the warehouse and is going to be releasing relatively soon. Oh, that's uh, ready to go. Yeah, it's it's yeah. in the warehouse. It's good. Okay. Uh, force manual House Cur or sorry, Force Manual Curita is uh, being printed right now. Uh, the next one after that is already being worked on. So as the faction force packs are rolling out, these force manuals will be rolling out as well. And we're super excited for, for what those are going to do. That is fantastic. Um, we also waiting for that too. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, then the universe book. Uh, I can't grow about that book enough. Uh, I was able to add some magic to it, uh, but absolutely... Uh, Nearly every last kunos of that book is owned by Ray and Aaron and the team that put that together. Um, it is just stunning. Uh, you as a longtime player or a brand new player, this will be one of the coolest Biotech books you've ever had. And you will finally have a place where somebody goes, hey, I grabbed a game of Armored in combat. It's awesome. I'm loving the lore. Where do I go? And normally you have a 10, 20 minute discussion about, well, if you're kind of like in this, you go here. And if kind of like this, yep. grab this yep. novel. But and this is thing. Exactly. exactly. And instead, universe book. Yep. Uh, and it will, I think it will do more for this. I think this is the biggest thing we have done since uh, the those first two beginner box in the game of Armored Combat with the new plastics. I, mm -hmm. I really do think it will be that. I, yeah. Uh, that important, and I think it will go down as one of the best Baltic books ever, and also just one of the best gaming books ever. So no argument there. Yeah, it is it's absolutely gorgeous. So just yeah. can't cannot wait for that. If, if you are here at Adepticon, we have a copy to look yes, through. Yes, absolutely. Look, please please, please come by, pull it down. It is amazing. Yeah, it's just so cool. Amazing. I've I've flicked through it so many times, and then and then the thing I was able to do is for the backers that got it. As well as then we will have, you know, X number after Kickstarter fulfillment and stores and for uh, on our web store is a presenter Marshall edition. That's where I got to go and run amok and have a blast oh my God. on the production side. Uh, and uh, everyone's heard me. Uh, if you've watched any of the uh, unboxing videos, you've heard me giggle as I lift the lid and hear the MechWarrior 2 startup sequence. Uh, I giggle every time. <laughs> Because uh, it just, it's glorious that we could be in a place that I get to make something like that. And then I get to make something like yes. that, right? And if you haven't seen that video, you owe it to yourself. You oh, should. Find it on YouTube. Uh, it, and it's endearing and hilarious. It, it's awesome. There, there is it's time. No one ever has any doubts about how much love uh, I have for this game and for this community. So hopefully. Yep. Uh, okay. So, yeah. And then on the fiction, no, we should have a whole. Yeah, there is a ton of stuff. Um, we've given out a lot of it in ebook and stuff on uh, for the case server, but we have plenty. We we're going to do a fiction panel right after this as well. But I have plenty of fiction coming out from the likes of um, Phil Lee, uh, uh, Craig Reed, who I think is also on the on the chat there, right there is Turbo Turtle. Um, we're also doing a trial of Birthright, not Bloodright, Birthright by Michael Sciarella, the big yeah, yeah, yeah. EO novel that's going to be kind of our spy novel this year. Going back to Terra, very excited about that. I'm and, excited to read it. Yes, and then uh, we're doing. Thank you, thank you, Brian Young. Sequel to uh, Question of Survival without question is going to be coming out in May, so I've got plenty of work to do. But yes, and of course we have to finish up the Fortunes of War novellas. Yeah, and get that out in a collection eventually as well. So that's going to be good. So I got to ask um, Michael Stackpole this question earlier. I'm going to ask you the same thing. 
since you two have kind of been intertwined in early Battletech from forever, whether oh, playing or time, yes. Chicago to, to uh, join Jordan in his quest. Yeah, yeah. 40th anniversary this year. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. From the first time you either played a game or let, let's say your first day at FASA. Did you ever, did, I know, I know. Going back a ways. In, in, in another time, did you ever think you'd be sitting here at the 40th anniversary? No. Not a, no. Not, not my wildest dream. I, I, I could never have imagined. Yeah, I, I just. What does that mean to you, 40 years of Battletech? Um, well, so I got the chance to. So in the Presenter Marshall Edition, yeah. uh, there's another book. So there's the universe book that has some extra cool stuff added to it. But there's a second book called The Remembrance where Ray and I spent most of a year hunting down absolutely as many people who had worked on Battletech in some fashion. Yep. Authors, developers, artists, presidents of companies, you name it, uh, to write up what Battletech meant to them. Right. And it actually took me a while. Wow, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> It took me a while to write that because my life has just been so intertwined with this game and with this community. Uh, you know, uh, two thirds of my entire life is baked into this experience. Right. Uh, my kid's birth. I can think of like, you know, uh, Bryn, my oldest, who's 27 and a game designer in his own right and, yep. and running cons in his own right. Yeah. Uh, when I, I would get home from FASA and I would put, you know, three month baby Bryn into a little snuggle <laughs> and then I'd rock him to sleep as I was writing uh, chapters for the a Northwind Highlander scenario pack, right? Uh, when I met my wife for the first time, Tara, uh, sh I met her at a convention while I was playing Battletech. Now, her comment to her friend was, you brought me here for that, right? So luckily it took a while for that to get passed. Uh, I think on the old bills. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, most of my high school friendships that I still have now, 40 years later, began associated with Battletech. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite parts of convention season is coming and seeing people that I only get to see at conventions that I have known for decades at this point, that we give each other big hugs mm -hmm. and then share stories about gaming and about Battletech. So outside of like my faith and my family, geekdom and of course battletech as that is a just a pillar of my life and so it's yeah. it's hard not to get emotional absolutely thinking about that there were many years where it was a long dark oh. tunnel and i'm up <laughs> on the palisade with a couple of guys and it's lonely and raining and ice cold and, and, and we never so, if the dawn was actually, we never knew if the dawn was going to come yep. now to be sitting here where we have the greatest resurgence that this game has ever known. We we have other companies coming up to us, asking us constantly, "How did you do it?" Right? Yeah. Um, and we and, first go through a decade of pain. Yeah. First, <laughs> and, 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 oh, first you have a a, a thirty year old, thirty forty five year old property, right? Yeah. Uh, you then have the coolest uh, consumer base, the the, com yeah. the best community ever. Absolutely. And they go through a decade of pain. Yeah. So Where everyone, we're going yeah, to no. Head, so it, it's and then the revenge. I mean, resurgence. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. If if uh, if you ever see me get pretty emotional, it's it's hard not to, when this just means so much to my life and so much of the milestones. Like when I finally wrote that article, which you will all get to read that are getting this, yeah. you'll see that I actually decided to kind of do it as a mile post through my life. Yes, across yes. forty years, to just show how much this game is is yep. part of me. I'm 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 genetically baked into it as much yep. as it is into me. Yep. And, right uh, cyborg. And then, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to join that as well. Um, I, when I was playing in high school, I would have never dreamed this is where I'd end up. But I'm right. so happy to be here among the greatest uh, the greatest group of designers and talented artists and layout people. Everybody. It's just it's a great team. Yeah. Great I team. love our quirky, wacky family. Yep, absolutely. As you said, slightly dysfunctional, but, but loving. we love it to death. We, we love this. So working together and we put out great things. So yeah. we're at yeah. the halfway point. Yeah, we're at the halfway so point. Get the questions. I'm going to start with the first one from Mr. Popo. So, Randall, when is your next novel coming out? <laughs> it's just cruel. That is cruel. You see the space? Uh, so, uh, I, 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 no, 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 I'm going to answer 
as we discussed, that the Baltic Kickstarter sucked the oxygen out of the room, like last all of, us. Uh, of yeah. all of us. Yes, and it's just such a beast to get through. Uh, so I am. I have like two or three short stories that are on the cusp of being done. Yeah. Um, one of the nice things about this little tour that I'm doing is the first half of the day, there is nothing and I'm in a hotel room by myself. So I'm actually hoping to use this as an opportunity to get back into the flow and starting by wrapping up these short stories, which John and Ray would, or and uh, Phil would love to get their hands on. Yeah, yes. Um, yes. And once that then is done, that can then be that opportunity to just keep going. Uh, I had started on the Novacat novel. Uh, the outline is about 70% done. I have to break it apart a little because it's actually been so long since I re since I first built it yeah. that some of the some of the storyline doesn't work anymore or needs to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am very much looking forward to this. Uh, I, I will also say part of the delay is simply um, for those that have read the Founding of the Clans trilogy, particularly that last book. Uh, I I'm always incredibly ambitious. And that book was ridiculously ambitious, oh, and I God. hopefully yes. I pulled it off really well. Uh, the Nova Cat will be just, if not more, ambitious, because looking back, the Nova Cats, especially the Spirit Cats, go all the way back to the very start of the Dark Age. Yeah. So there are plot threads that are woven all throughout that time frame, and I'm trying to sort all of those and pull them all out and wrap it up in a book. That will be a magnificent story wrap up to so much of those elements. So, so you're actually going to answer a lot of uh, kind of hanging threads. Uh, I, of I threads plan to answer most of them. Okay. I doubt I will answer all of them because I don't okay. like answering all of them. And that would be a 200,000 word book. Exactly. But but no, I, I am hoping to answer a good chunk of them. Okay, fantastic. And, uh, and that just means it's, you know, I think I have to read like nine or ten novels. A dark age novels because I, I feel strongly enough that I really have to reset that in my head. So that's one week. So, <laughs> so the novels, so I can't say when it's going to be delivered, but I hope by summer that I'm well into this novel and, and banging away on it nearly every day. Okay. Well, I love editing you. I love working with you. See what you're going to put out. I cannot wait for this one. That's why I'm bugging you so much. I know, no, no. Everyone, Brent, I think, is the biggest fan that is just camped on my doorstep. Wanting to see this novel, and I love that. That is, I'm incredibly grateful for that. Okay, okay what fantastic. else we got here? Uh, there was a question about Kickstarter payment, but that's been answered by someone else. Daniel, thank you very much. Okay, question from Randall from Rob Schubert Which character holds the esteemed title of best beard in the inner sphere? In the inner sphere, yes, yes. Ooh, I'm not sure I know. And by the way, I'm going to send a shout out to our artists who are giving us these fantastic. Oh, my God, yes, right. There's so amazing. I love it so the, much. The, the level of art that we are getting now yeah, yeah. is stunning. And we are course, so grateful to have the just stunning quality. And I guess artists, it's, it's really nice to think of a shout out to Brent for oh, yeah. all that through production. Always. And yep. Finding these talented artists who do such, such good work. I, there are too many to name. I can't yep. name oh. them all, but they're fantastic. Did you wear matching shirts on purpose? The color scheme. The color, color kind of matches, but, but not really. No, no, That's no, the, no, the no, uh, yeah, he's not planned. Uh, okay, it says see. sound quality is buzzing when Randall moves a lot. Just stay still. Well, I, don't, I know you're excited. I'm like, I don't, I don't do that very well. Uh, real question for Brendan, the Michael Snackpole Red Corsair novel, we're still working through contract on that. So patience, I mean, he'll get to writing as soon as we've ironed out the details. So I'm going to work through his agent, who I've known for years. It, it's going to happen, just a matter of when. Believe me, we'll be announcing when that's been finalized and more information on that very soon. Oh, there's a, uh, did someone answer when we have to pay for shipping? Um, well, there's uh, Dana Robinson right up there. Mid-April email will go to finalize payment, et cetera. Et cetera. Yes. So, yeah. so it's mid-April. Lauren answered that in a live stream yesterday. It should be coming within the next week or two, both the emails warning you it's coming and then the actual payment. There's uh, Norbert. When is when is the first Star League box hitting retail? That's a good question. Um, th that I'm not exactly sure. It should be in April. It is... It was supposed to be here at Adepticon, and they didn't make it. Uh, shipping, again, is just terrible. Uh, if it is not at the end of April, it'll then be right at the beginning of May. But we're really still hoping that it'll be available in April. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, that. Uh, where was their Sask? What is Michael's Stackpole's Red Corsair novel? Oh, you addressed that one. Oh, yeah, address that one. Okay. Down. Matching shirts. Past that. Um, Wandy Lismus. Why do you authors hate the Falcons or House David? They don't. <laughs> wow. If you haven't read, obviously, go pick up a Question of Survival by Brian Young. Okay. And, and there we are. Some the great Jade Falcons are coming. Yeah, out. great Jade Falcons stuff in there. Had a clan at a crossroads now, and where do they go from here? And that's a big thing. But no, we, the authors don't hate them very much. They're, Brian is doing some of the best Jade Falcon work I think I've seen in a long time. Well, and, and personally, I love the Alina Mercantile. Yes. Uh, that, I think they're just fascinating and different. And like one of the... One of the things that I found most exciting in the Ill Clan era is we get to start and explore what we're calling like post clan yes. stories, yeah. right? Yeah. What, and and uh, you know, speaking of you know those things you never thought you'd be able to do, right? Um, you know, when I was there with uh, Stackpole and Lauren and Jordan as we're developing the Dark Age, um, and we're all like, well, what if the, what if the, you know, and we're like throwing darts at the board right. as we're generating a whole bunch of story ideas to then condense those down. And one of them was, oh, well, the, the Sea Fox, what if the Diamond Sharks change their name to Sea Fox? And what does that mean? And so then I got to write uh, the Hunters of the Deep, which really was the entire transformation and creation of the wackiness that is Clan Sea Fox. Yes. Never, never imagining that nearly 20 years later, the Sea Fox would be a beloved faction that is spread throughout the universe and is an incredibly port, important element of that. And But that is, was kind of that post-clan development and evolution. Yep. And so I love seeing, like, the Ghost Bears, obviously, they actually kind of started at first uh, by moving to the Inner Sphere. I love the Aoyina Mercantile Association. Uh, I just really love seeing these new factions that are evolving within the universe and how the fans embrace that. Right, right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Someone did answer everything Battletech. Someone did answer about paying for Kickstarter further up in the stream in yep. the chat. Jeremy Thompson, this this also came up with Michael Stackpole. If you were to write a Battletech alternate history story, which what if would you explore? This I'm really interested in looking at and hearing this answer. Uh Huh. You know, I, I kind of think I already did that with my gene cast. So wow. for, for those that are not aware of it, I like the fact that Ray's walking by right as I say gene cast. <laughs> so in uh, Interstellar Players, so <clears throat> speaking of like, we're just big geeks that, that yes. love gaming and, and we are inspired by other games and other companies yep. and other yep. amazing things. And we're and, sure have to make a living at it. Exactly. Again, and at, thanks to you, fam. Yes. And at FASA, uh, for Shadowrun, Mike Mulvihill had created the Threats book, which was just a series of dangerous organizations that were a little more unusual. And so when I got uh, after FASA closed and we went over to FAMPRO, I'm like, I want, I want to make one of those for Battletech, which nice. was Interstellar Players. And when I did that, I created the Gene Cast, which is most fans hate them. <laughs> uh, I had an absolute blast. It's as close to real aliens as we've ever put in. And so I think if I was given the opportunity to actually write fiction as opposed to just a what if source book, I probably would go right back to the Gene Cast that I've created. Well, really? you know, if you want to do a, a what if anthology, I would be all over that because I love the Gene Cast. I'm. Thinking about it. No, no, that's very, very, very cool. The visual ideas. Uh, real quick, Lorcan, by the way, good luck on that Dublin tournament you're running tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, Lor Lorcan Nagel. Gene Cast is in the Ill Clan, Ray. Randall just said. <laughs> He's and, ignoring me. And yes, Bondi, yes, Shadow is always open to submissions. Please submit. And we are we are working on cutting down our re response time. We do apologize for that. For those who've been waiting, Please bear with us a little while longer. We are taking steps to cut down our submit our response time. But yes, we are always looking for the next great Battletech writers. We uh, break one to two new authors every issue. Yep, absolutely. And so then, uh, let's see, best scar sixty six safe. 
Uh, have you seen the shirtless uh, Alaric artwork, the Big Red? Big Red, yes. Oh God, Big Red first look at his shirtless Alaric Fair. illustration. Yeah. And I am why he had commissioned them, and I now do not unsee it. So, thank you to the community that made that happen, and it's now burned into my retinas. Uh, oh, wait, there's another good one. Oh, there, uh, 30th century Fosht. By the way, awesome handle. <laughs> uh, will there be additional asset cards for vehicles on the MUL? Absolutely. Uh, we are working with a team uh, on upgrading the MUL uh, really across the board. Uh, the MUL has proven to be just a linchpin of the community, and we want to see that grow on the classic Battletech side. Uh, we are working on getting all record sheets added to the MUL, but then also all of the Battlefield support cards will also be added. So regardless of the style of play that you have, it'll all be right there at your fingertips. Okay, uh, tech folks, we got a comment. Sound is going out a good bit. So if we could please kind of correct that. Uh, Test Square, you've been very patient about asking about audiobooks. Let me address that. That is kind of on me. We've had a little bit of a bottleneck there. Uh, but we're going to be releasing to the um, Kickstarter backers uh, our first novel, which took a little bit longer to get, because we want to do it right, which is Close Quarters, the seminal uh, Caballeros novel by Victor Milan. We want to get that one down and wanted to get it good. So that's going to be coming out to the backers and releasing wide very soon. And hopefully the floodgates will really start to open after that as well. So we thank you for your patience. The audiobooks are coming, I promise. Yeah, Surreal said, uh, like people who gene-formed themselves to hostile planets, that's exactly it. Yep. Uh, it, it. It pushes a little more hard sci-fi. And get, getting uh, a gene it, cast the story out of it yeah. makes that anthology a little bit more real now. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I would and love it, to what, see that. Uh, to be honest, as a kind of a fun shout-out, uh, the gene cast were an homage to the Hyperion novels by Dan Simmons. Oh, wow. Uh, so anyone who... Want some a lot more of that? Go read his Hyperion Canicles. They are magnificent. Okay, what's the next one we got? Uh, so, so with El Elric, are we talking six pack or love handles? I believe you just put it out. You can see it. Yeah, yeah, I think and it's on. Uh, it's on the interwebs. I just had a very evil idea. I'm going to go talk to Red about later, and that'll be a little surprise coming later. Uh, let's see. Is there current Dana Robinson? Is there currently room for BattleTech fiction, be it shrapnel or otherwise, which focus on mystery, treasure hunting? A thriller tragedy. Look, them short stories that can cover all of that. Yeah. We still have um, uh, uh, explorations. No, explorations unlimited. What is it? The uh, the guy, the guys that go run around. Uh, Explorer Corps. Explorer Corps. Explorer Corps. Or or in the interstellar expeditions. Both of those are. Yeah, yeah. High end cash. If anything, someone needs to pick up Georgia regulars that are always in the midst of finding strange things and doing things with that. So there's another option there. there yes. Opportunities are wide ranging for sure. Yep. Uh, 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 I've mentioned that more than once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm all for that. Um, audio drama like big finishes, Doctor Who audio. So the funny part, I was at fourth place on that Dragon Con because apparently those kind of full voice, full sound effects are a different rights thing from straight audio. And I've been looking at that. Not sure I knew that. It's a separate thing. I've been looking at that. Of course, that is a possible vote for doing full cast, full that, but it, it, it's on my list of things to investigate. So let's put it that way. There's been some questions about the Irby Lamb. The Irby Lamb did not make it here. Uh, I had a few copies that I, I have been judiciously sharing, uh, but we did not have it here to sail. That is on a ship, and so I would expect that in the next month or two. Uh, Randall's mic is fine. Your partner's is out. Can't. Can't. Oh, did we all die? Oh, well, we'll uh, can you, uh, can you guys hear me? Is my mic doing okay? Uh, let's jump back in here. Can't hear John. Am I back? Uh, my explanation for not, okay, first of all, can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, I am, am I back on? One, two, one, two. Let's see, I, I, they, I think they dropped me. Randall's yeah, good. Yeah, Randall's good. How about me? Randall's I mean, I'm always good. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, of course. That is, Denby is one of my friends from high school. Oh, my God, that's who awesome. played Battletech with me. Speaking of, uh, I'm back. Okay, speaking of uh, Battletech weaving through oh, my friendships. Oh, that is amazing. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Craig, you said I think an explanation wasn't clear. Was that on the audiobooks? Where did I cut out? 
Okay, we, we're, we're both on. We're back. The mic is good. Yep. Thank you, everyone, for that. It's quiet. Let's move the mic a little closer to my big yeah, yeah. mouth. There we go. Just stick it in the mouth. It's kind of amazing because we both talk so much. I'm not so loud, no, right? I told you it's quiet. That's we are loud, loud people. people. There we go. Can, can you hear me now? Can we well, yell the Verizon line there or Sprint line, whatever it was. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, are we good? The, the audio dramas. Okay, yeah. So apparently that's a different rights class. Doing like a full voice with music, sound effects, that's a different, that's audio drama, it's a different <laughs> right. I can just split them off from the audio books if someone wants a more full experience. I was approached at Dragon Town by a company that does this. We had a talk. I was interested. I've got to look into it. It's a budgetary thing. Obviously, it comes down to numbers at the end of the day. Um, but if people are interested, let me know. If people want that experience, we'll see what we can do to produce that. Um, but yeah, it, it's all about what you guys are willing to pay for, what you guys want to buy. So... Uh, let's see. Power goes out. We still hear. <laughs> I have a loud voice, and all my kids have loud not voices. Not afraid to use it. No, yes, exactly. Not, not at all. Uh, David Mitchell, love to see more early clan stories. Well, we are doing the War of the Reaving trilogy, Wars of Reaving yeah. trilogy, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Again, well, I, one, love the, I love. I love worlds. I want to see more fiction in there. Yes. Well, and one Thank of you. my, one of my short stories, which is the start of a series of short stories, hopefully, is the Jennifer. Winston yes, Chronicles. Yes, what you talked about. Uh, and the, and the, I'm still waiting for the first the, one. Well, the the first one is when she's like 14. Yeah. And it, well, I was, I was it's, it, it, it's dark. No, it's not YA at all. She's a 14 year old girl in a really terrible spot. And so yeah. it's, I'm having to be very careful in putting it together. I'm making sure that my wife and and uh, my daughter is reading it. Okay. To make sure that it is put together appropriately. It's, yeah. it's a tough. Uh, but yeah, basically it's when she is just leaving, right. And just starting the trip because, uh, despite everything I did with the founding of the clans, there is still so much to go on, especially showing how much she did impact behind the scenes. Yeah. And I want to start slowly revealing how big her part was in all of that. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I appreciate you have readers doing that for sensitivity. Yep. Wow, Lorcan, you guys remember a lot of stuff. Uh, the artist may have her estate. Yes, I did mention that. I need to follow up on that. Uh, there has not been any progress as of late, but it's time to kind of hit them up again. So, uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Seamus, well, the, the audio dramas would be unabridged, too. I don't believe in abridging anything. Yeah, no, that's, that, that'd be, that'd a be few, terrible. Imagine a 10-hour full voice cast kind of uh, thing. So, Are we going to be able to purchase just, more BT mugs in the store? Absolutely. We have a complete uh, reprint of the entire thing being done. I'm not exactly sure where those are at, but hopefully they'll be just within the next month or so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Put that Tortuga on screen. Sorry, Mercurion. There is no plans for Clan Wolverine survivors at this time. That's <laughs> what I know for a fact. Yeah. Okay. Let's oh, let's see, see. about Kick that Kickstarter. Kickstarter Cuba, yeah. England isn't in the UE, EU anymore, and the transport costs oh, are ridiculously oh high. Hope you consider that. Oh, we did. We absolutely did. That's part of the problem. We've been dealing with getting the VAT for the EU as well as the VAT for the UK um, to help with all of that. And yeah, it's, it's all just a nightmare and that's, well, it, it's all being worked on. Absolutely. But it's just taking a while. Yep. There's more Fox patrol merch coming. Uh, so uh, until this show, really, I was not quite aware how well the Fox Patrol was being received. I love seeing that. Yep. And I see no reason why we shouldn't start doing some Fox Patrol merch to, to uh, you know, play I into mean, that. I mean, community so let me throw this out to the fans. Uh, how about a Fox Patrol force pack? What do you think of that? Uh, put your answers in the, in the uh, chat. So I, I wanted to go back up. Will we be seeing the war between Filthfelt and Tortuga on screen? Possibly. Uh, I, that's maybe. more of a Ray question. I'm yeah. not sure. I love to see, I love to see stories by, on that, by the way. I yeah. love to see stories in the corners of the universe, in the corners of the inner sphere that don't get a lot of time, screen time. One way to do that is fiction. Um, that, that would be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, have you found a replacement for Pegasus, and what about the German audiobooks? So there's, there's two different sides. There's the fiction side, which I'll let John talk about. Just really quick on the German side, we have not found a replacement yet for the localization of the miniatures game. 
Uh, we are still working on that, though. But on the I fiction side... I do have side, news on the fiction side. We are very close to wrapping up with a distributor for not only fiction, but po also ebook, And hopefully I want to get into POD as well. Oops, switch. So actual German editions on the nice. shelves available. Yeah, we are in final talks. It's been very good. They have been extremely patient with me, more patient than I have any right to expect. But we are making really good progress. I actually have to go talk to Lauren about that after this, come to think of it. So, yes. Your patience is about to be rewarded, and we're gonna they're going to go full steam ahead. So, yeah. Uh, there's a uh, Mercarian person I'm waiting for the novel about the Wolstergans beginning. Uh, that is called uh, The Den of Wolves, and we are all waiting for that novel from Stackpole yep. and Lauren. Uh, Mike and I talked about it on an earlier stream. We are going to make some progress on that, absolutely. So, yes, yes, uh, for sure. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, We're all looking forward to yeah, it. Oh, yes, very much so, very much so. Uh, Next force uh, patrol pack. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that's a good question. Post trapnel sixteen because a big change happened or pre. I mean, what? That's. I mean, let's let's, not, let, let's be clear. If I said right this second we are doing a fox patrol force pack, you would probably have it this time next year. <laughs> Uh, oh, these are these are not my okay. This is your next year. You've heard it here first. No, that's not what I said. He said if giant if, but just trying to set expectations. Well, uh, look, we're going to talk you, about you, it. Well, yeah. that is kind of. But so here's the difference. Oh, so, Gene so, is in penalty. Uh, <laughs> so the problem is post travel sixteen. It's an ion sparrow. Yeah. And I know that's not been created yet. I don't think. Uh, it's actually in another force pack in the list that everyone saw. It was in another force oh, pack. Oh, so it would exist by this time next year. So, uh, I mean, I'll we'll see. As updated as possible. We'll see. I would want to be in post. I'm going to I'm gonna nudge him for post. Anyways, um, there's only five options for the force pack. Well, technically that's true. Technically that's true. Uh, yes. Let's see. Why not found a German department of catalysts? Oh, we, we, we love we, you guys. We really can good. barely, like, you know, figure out how to do the English yeah, department. Yeah. Uh, so a German department, we really, really want to find a good partner that yeah. is going to do it right there. Uh, Aerotech Force Pack plans. Um, we would love to do that. <clears throat> we really need a game that works well, and the current aerospace rules don't work well. Yeah. Uh, so we are continuing to look at that. Uh, I would never say never, but I wouldn't look for that anytime too soon. So I want to go back up to Legend Killer because this is an odd question. Any chance of shrapnel printed books? Every shrapnel book is printed POD available on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Or news about the Battletech book. You're going to be more specific. Yeah, I'm not I sure what that means. A lot unless unless you're talking about the Battletech Universe book, oh, maybe. Uh, maybe. You Which wanna... is, uh, again, that's going to be part of the Kickstarter as soon as that gets delivered. Then yeah, we're to... That definitely is part of the Kickstarter. No, way, it absolutely is part yes. of the Kickstarter. Okay, okay. Um, and it will go out to backers as part of the Kickstarter and then be available right after that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Since your taker requests Randall, Phoenix Hawk Stinger, and Wasp Lamb Force Packs. So once again, <laughs> we actually, uh, when, so if you guys look, if you haven't seen it yet, if you look for the photos of our spreadsheets online somewhere of the next couple of years of product, there wasn't a lamb force pack there, but we had that discussion. We discussed it and it still comes back to, we really need a good game that supports the aerospace side. And that could support lambs, and then we could come back around to that. So, okay. never say never. It's not going to be soon, but if yeah. in you know three, four years suddenly a lamb force pack might show up because we now have good rules, then awesome. I like this one. Can we get a crescent hawks pack with a phoenix hawk lamb? Um, I'm I'm all down for that. Uh, possibly, possibly. That's what flavor though? I love the flavor. Right? And and yeah. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm. like, you're right. The rules kind of define what can be. That'd be fun. I think the Crescent Hawks Inception oh. was released in 1987. Oh, coming up. So doing a 40th anniversary yeah. force pack with something on the computer side. Oh, that, that would, would be, be pretty cool. Sweet. That, that would be, be so cool. sweet. A new Crescent Hawks video game would be uh, an unseen force pack, but with updated designs. Um, well, those are kind of spread uh, on all of them, right? Yeah, they're spread all over Kingdom Come, and there'd be like, there'd be like twenty to twenty-five of them. So not not sure what you mean there. Ray has not heard the chat, ladies uh, and gentlemen. Pictures from Krinsky Con. I saw the Somerset Strikers that was only supposed to be available on eight Mio stretch goals. Uh, will we really get it? Yes, absolutely. 
we did the Somerset Strikers uh, pack yeah. as a giant thank you. Even though we didn't reach the $8 million, we wanted to see it just as much as you guys it did. We so wanted cool. to thank yes. you for that. Yes. And it's fantastic. Not only do you get the Hotamoto and the Mauler, which are the last of the, the two, uh, you get a a bushwhacker that's uh, slamming down on, I believe it's a hunchback 2C, which is awesome. Um, and then last but not least, you get a wolf, wolf hound that's in this incredibly cool crouch down mode. It's awesome. Okay, so here's one. Clan home rolls force packs. Pete, Pete Moulton oh. at the top there, which is a really interesting idea. Interesting. So Pete, once again, I'm going to mention the Wars of Reaving trilogy in fiction, and I yeah, yeah, yeah. board. That's Clint awesome. It's barely been sure. scratched. Besides Randall's trilogy, to me, it's barely been scratched. There are so many stories we could tell there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mercarian, will you show the unveiled resin artworks on your website? I think you're referring to, um, is it called un Unveiled? Do they? No, it's anyways, it's it's the resin artwork that we've done. We actually had shared some videos, but now uh previously, but now that it is on uh here it shows and we're showing off, I'd have no problem putting together uh kind of a new spread of news about it and, and pointing it people at that. Ask, dropship's gonna be in retail? Yes, the dropship's yes. absolutely okay, there. Going I to be figured retail. as much because yes, but and they look fantastic. Yep. We got to see some of them. At the Currency Con earlier, and that was just amazing. Yep, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Force packs based on the old scenario books. Oh, Black Widow. Veiled Rivers. That's what it was. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I knew I was trying to do that, but I, my brain's I a little asking tired. asking about Rolling Thunder, Swords and Sabres, Black Widows. That would be a really cool idea. Force uh, packs based on the old scenario books. We've actually thought about looking at that. Um, certainly like the Black Widows, we've thought about oh, putting one of those together. Hands down. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I, I think at, you almost can always. That. There's just so much to do and, and so much awesome to do. And so trying to choose between which ones get done. You're trying to you're trying to support the line. You're trying to uh, support the force manuals that are coming out. You're trying to support the stories that are coming out. Yep. So there's a lot of factors at play where there's plenty of like, wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, but none of those quite work within yeah. the framework that, it needs this one instead. So. Okay, so, so, Rob, we're not making a CGL force pack. I'm sorry. We're not going to do that. Oh, we're that'd be kind of funny, though. The usual gang of idiots, the force pack. Uh, the entire force pack. I would love to see that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's probably well downstream. Yeah. But I love. I, I personally love what was done with the Scorpion Empire. Whoever, yeah. I can't remember who wrote that off the top of my head. is fantastic. Uh, yeah. But that was really cool what they did there. A uh, new version of the Wolstergun source book would be awesome. Uh well uh, what what patience. we're yeah what yes. we're trying to do is that it's not redoing them like we did the Tokyo book, but we are working towards getting those old books back available in PDF yes. and then in in POD. And it's a long term project but that just, we're working on. Yeah, but be be patient with us. We we have every intention. I want to get those source books back for you folks into print, including POD. I we can make it work in POD. So if you want to order one, you just order it ship it it comes to your door so just be patient with us we're working as quickly as we can it's it's a lot of books <laughs> 40 years worth so absolutely i don't uh i think we're gonna get time time and we're gonna stop. Stop. i don't i don't even know what i was looking at so so lauren was trying to show me yeah, something so randall i think they're giving us the high sign we got about a minute left uh okay. any final words it's 40 years we're at adepticon it's, it's just been an amazing ride. It's been glorious. Yeah. And I am so humbled and grateful that you guys have allowed us to to be doing this, that you're here supporting us. Yep. Uh, it's just never been a better time to be a Battletech fan, to be playing and enjoying it. And, and there's more to come. And there's, there's so much there's more to come. come. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So from all of us here at Adepticon at CGL and all the fans, players, and everyone here, we want to say thank you all very much for watching. Uh, I'm here for another panel for another hour. Um, I'm going to let release Randall back into the wild. Uh, He'll go do his thing. But I will say in one hour, I will be back here mm -hmm. with Jim Long, as in Blackthorn's Jim Long author, yes. who has designed a Battletech game. Uh, it is a... Uh, abstract tactical two-player game that is in the design space of uh, Command and Colors or Battle of Westeros Memoir 44. I'm literally going to go from here over there to start prepping the, the prototype pieces that we have. And then we're going to sit down and play it to show you guys uh, what we have coming. So thank you so much. And, okay, yes, uh, from all of we'll us talk here. To you later. Also, yeah, thank you. Yep, bye all. Bye-bye.
Good evening, folks, and welcome back to uh, Adepticon and the Catalyst Game Labs live stream. My name is Michael Ciravella. I'm one of the Battletech authors, and you are about to be seeing the Fiction Roundtable. We try to do these one of these every year, uh, just to tell you a little bit of what's going on with the changing cast of characters. Uh, first and foremost today, we have John Helfers, the executive editor, uh, Phil Lee, editor of Frappel, and, and Rusty Zimmerman, also published author. Uh, once again, we're going to be going today and talking a little bit about the fiction. We've got your uh, live stream right here, so we can also see some of your questions. So we're going to start right away. I would usually start with John right now, but I'm not. Phil's <laughs> here, and I have to Phil. <laughs> Phil, what's going on with Strapnel? I see that you just dropped one. Am I right? Yes, uh, Shrapnel 16 just came out on the, the Ides of March, actually. Very nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a lot of fun stuff in it. Uh, is that thematic, or is there a... Uh, no, that was just more just a, like a general general purpose issue. Uh, Sounds good. And no, for those who are asking, we could not get the POD in time for Adepticon. You'll have to order it yeah. on Amazon. That was, that was right here. Here. some twisting of the space-time continuum in order yeah, to make that happen. Something is going to be more <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. so I need to ask my two regular questions there before we dive into anything. Mm -hmm. How does one submit to Shrapnel? And uh, how are we looking right now? How's the slush pile? Oh, the slush pile is uh, it's robust. We've got lots of submissions. We have lots of great authors that just uh, want to uh, share their their uh, their love of Battletech. And we're looking forward to, to reading them all. And, and what's the best way to submit to Shrapnel? The best way to submit to Shrapnel is uh, to, um, we have a... Uh, there's a submissions page on the in the back of every issue, uh, and has a link to where you go to submit. So okay, there you go. And what is the uh, what, what is your response to the overwhelming comment that you are so much easier to work with than John Helfers? <laughs> I've actually never heard that before, so I will take it as a compliment. <laughs> I've heard it many times, usually being said by me. All right. Shuffle trial of birthright to 2028. Uh, one of the questions in a few minutes, we'll have to come back to those, so that is fine. All right, John. We've heard about Trapnel, the super popular portion of your line. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about whatever it is you do. Whatever it is I do, yes. Your little projects. Yeah, yeah, those little things. I brood cats. I brood author cats. I crack them up and try to make them write books on time. They usually fail. Then I have to make them write a better book. Then we go to the editing. I have a great team of editors and proofreaders and copy editors, and we try to turn out books that you folks will love, expanding more and more of the Battletech universe. Uh, and then we leap into the next question from Derek, Derek Knoll. When are we going to get the next novel, and what is it? The next novel is by Craig Reed, who I think is also in this chat as well, called In the Shadow of the Dragon. It is a Dark Age novel tying off one of the last uh, kind of threads of the Dark Age and has to do with Yuri Karita's rise to power. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Craig has written a fantastic novel. As a matter of fact, I think he's working on Final Pass. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to me, and I'm going to put it out very, very soon. So that is the next one. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to go into the next 2024s. Uh, uh, schedule. After that comes without question, Brian Young's sequel to A Question of Survival, dealing with more of the Jade Falcons. We go to Sedaton, where, again, I'm going to go back to Craig Reed's um, Hell's Horses Elements of Trees and Honor story told that, mm -hmm. uh, that battle from the Hell's Horses. Now we're going to see, see the Jade Falcon side of the battle for Sedaton. Really looking forward to that one. That is May 15th. So that's going to be coming out because we announced the date and I damn well better stick by it. Mm -hmm. After that, I believe it's Mr. Ciervella who's on this particular panel with uh -huh. trial of the birthright. <laughs> Makes me read it right. After three, three years real time, we are going back to Terra. We're going to find out what's been happening beyond, beyond the fortress wall. What are they doing? What is what's everyone been doing now? He's going to answer a lot of the stories. Last question tied into the uh, Ilkhan's Eyes Only source book. That is our Gen Con release. It'll be out in July, and we will be doing a big push for that in Gen Con. And finally, last but not least, I believe, Phil, you're slated for quarter four, right? November? I believe so, yeah. And that is Letter of the Law, mm -hmm. Phil's sequel to Hunting Season. We're going back to the Free Worlds League, absolutely. Oh. So, yeah, I've got a chocolate block, and of course, there's the Fortunes of War novellas to tie up. And other things that are going to come in here and there. I've been talking to Mike Stackpole about those novellas for that he did for um, the Hairbrain Skins Battletech game. We we're yeah. talking about doing those as well. So just a lot of Battletech fiction coming out. I am super excited about it. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 
Adepticon issue. Anyone Adepticon should buy issue 15, absolutely, because the Lorcan has two pieces in it. We have a few yeah. copies left, but they're going fast, and I mean that. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't expect them to last the show. So. Uh, yep, yep. Let's see. Plans bumped. Another piece. I can put it under my... <laughs> now they're talking about editorial on that side. All right. Um, let's see. In the back... Uh, the two in the back go in and out on the mic distortion mostly. If we can have a uh, sound check, please check that out. Okay, so Let's okay. see how many of Lorcan Nail submissions on Herman's face. Wow. <laughs> 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 Let's see. Uh, I think that's a trial of grievance right there. Uh, Yuri Karina novel been waiting on that one. Yes, uh, we're very excited to put that one out. So let's see. Uh, I see stuff in a different vibe, like Blood Avatar is fun, anything like that in the works. Well, you know, it's, Jeremy, I'm glad you asked that. We have one that's a little different. In the first book in 2025, it's going to be um, Brian Young's Void Breaker, which he describes as a James Bond novel in the Battletech universe. <laughs> so it's going to be some action, some intrigue, small duggery, but of course, we're going to still have plenty of big Snobby Max. I'm so, also waiting for Blood Avatar, too, so... <laughs> I, right on that. I am always a fan. What is Alaric doing being shirtless? Just as a, a quick warning, in Trial of Birthright, there are only two of the four scenes that he's in where he's actually wearing a shirt. <laughs> For all... The answer is Big Red lost a bet, <laughs> and that was the result. <laughs> and boy, it's a, it's an image. If you haven't gone to, he released it out onto the Instagram or wherever he goes. If you haven't seen it, it's. Uh, it's something, and now I can't unsee it. Yeah, <laughs> under two avatar. Absolutely. Uh, is there any plan to increase the number of shrapnel submissions being put out? The number of shrapnel submissions or shrapnel issues? Mm. I'm a little puzzled by that one. I think it's stories per issue type of thing. Mm. Um, we're at a good length right now. I mean, yeah, we're, yeah. we're we're, we're crushing what seventy thousand words. Oh yeah, issue? yeah. Each yeah. issue is roughly seventy seventy five thousand. So words. I, there's no we the double issues are rare since we had to do two and five issues. We're gonna take a break from those. Uh -huh. I think one thing we were talking about doing is more themed issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Yeah, yeah. The, the the next issue, uh, coming out is uh, number seventeen. We'll have a Solaris seven theme. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. which uh and uh Solaris seven and also just arena fighting in in general because. Slayer Seven is like the big dog among the. Uh, but it's not. It's the, not the. It's not the only one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So we kind of touched a little bit on that. So yeah. Okay. And then uh, we'll get, we can tease a hinterlands is going to be. Yeah. Uh, number eighteen is going to have a like a, a a hinterlands theme, sort of tie into the release of the Hot Spots hinterlands uh, uh, source book. Yep. The campaign book that's coming out. Yep. So and I've been bugging for we might next year do one of them might be a periphery uh themed issue mm -hmm. i think that would yeah. be a very cool one to do so yeah so yeah absolutely uh let's mm -hmm. see people are restricted or can i write a story about the reunification war oh example? absolutely i will take literally anything yeah. i have I, I i was actually talking to someone earlier today about a story that's set during the um um the outer reaches rebellion Oof. in like 2200s Oof. oh yeah wow. that was in uh issue four uh giles wrote that yes yeah. yes uh age of war would be great clan yeah. homeworld we sure mm -hmm. you can explore eras that don't get a lot of love and it's we've done phil's done a really great job i have to be honest uh mm -hmm. putting these issues together i love proofing every each and every one of them and just every time it comes here like this is incredible so mm -hmm. i know you're doing fantastic work well thank you i uh yes i'll tell you what else we have here is Mike going back and rapidly adding it? Well, we hadn't discussed it, but I have to run that by Ray first. But what he's not doing it. He's already starting. So what can I do? I can't help what them. What you need, exactly. Give the people what they want, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Which, let's talk to the scene. <laughs> <laughs> we made a few more questions. A game called Batletech. <laughs> I just learned about that. I'm a long time Shadowrun guy. I am still writing Shadowrun. Don't yes, worry. Yep. Uh, John, <laughs> I'm mean, my new hybrid author. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tossed me over the fence. I climbed on top of the fence and stayed in the middle. <laughs> uh, so I do have uh, three Shadowrun novels in the works, four after we talked this week. <laughs> so there's plenty of Shadowrun coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I've been hitting up Phil for shrapnel space. I've got stories in 11, 13, 15, 16, and I'm about to kick off some serial fiction. So if you've been enjoying the Mountain Wolf Battle Mechs, 
backstory. So good. That's so yeah, good. It's, yeah. Come yeah. up to the serial fiction. <laughs> Somebody congratulated me like last week when 16 came out. They were like, hey, congrats on your serial fiction being done. I'm like, <laughs> they were oh, all God. just uh, backstory ideas I got while working on the yeah. serial fiction. <laughs> And wanting to well, kind of set they the just, stage. They just dovetail so nicely together. So, so it's uh, it's fun. Uh -huh. uh, so I've got those coming. After the serial fiction is a novel that ties into it. Before that, there's a, a novel that ties into the Killhound piece I did for issue 15. Uh -huh. There's some Ill Clan stuff coming that's also Mountain Wolf Battle Max. <laughs> but it's, it's Ill Clan era. So yes. yeah, I've got a half million words or something like that of assorted battle tech goodness <laughs> slowly working its way through the pipeline. Well, you definitely got one fan, Jeremy Thompson, the Mountain Wolf Battle Tech stuff is great, and, and it, it really is. Uh, it really, take it to this uh, IP like a, well, a duck to water. It doesn't really work. A mech to water? I don't know. I mean, but yeah, honestly, reading your stuff is just fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. It's, uh, I, uh, originally I fell in love with the idea of Mountain Wolf Battle Mechs, but I hated the actual mechs they made. <laughs> More than like two. <laughs> and then you're reading the books, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Legitimately, the Shrapnel uh, issue 13 story, The yeah. Reckoning, that was my love letter to the Merlin uh -huh. because I had to make myself love it for what it was instead of what it's not. Right. It's not a right. specialist machine. Uh -huh. um, it's a jack of all trades. And those can be lovable too. Absolutely. Uh, that story was actually my story of liking the Merlin. So, uh -huh. yep. yeah, they're good times. Jeremy also has so crossover novels between the IPs coming when? Uh, probably not for for legal reasons. Okay, for some, uh -huh. I'm sure some of the pitch would be rusty. I just shuddered to think what that pitch would be. So, I'm just it saying, is really unlikely. Dragons great enough can shape shift and fit in the cockpits of mechs. Oh, dear God. <laughs> so imagine you're fighting a grand dragon, the pilot punches <laughs> out, and like out pops Lothwick. Yeah, so and he's like, you're yeah. you salt, man. Yeah. And the pilot comes uh, out, and knock you out. Yeah, so there you go. Okay. <laughs> the, the questions and comments are coming fast and furious, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oh, whoa. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Best car CC next safe. Question of the table, favorite shrapnel issue. Uh, oh. There's so that's, much good that's a good ball. I don't okay. I'll throw it open. I don't think I can actually narrow it down to a favorite issue. Although 15, the all mercs one. That one was that's pretty good. Gotta, I mean, we had cheating because it's a double issue. That's not yeah. really fair. I will say um I, I think issue seven is great because it's one where we were able to do uh more than just a couple pieces of uh um bespoke fiction yeah um because we we started we started the experiment with art in six right but we were only able to commission two pieces for it yeah so in seven we got like four pieces and then we've been slowly expanding ever since yeah, and like, just like that i get my answer like yeah my favorite issue is issue one because when we held that in our hands mm -hmm. and realized what we had done what okay mostly what you had done <laughs> but the fact that we got it into existence Mm. And looking at that image, which is a phenomenal image on the art, and flipping mm -hmm. through, yes, some things were a little rough. Yeah, kind of cobbled that together. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I was able to hold issue one in my hands, I realized we actually you had been advocating for this for what two years before. Uh, I think it was done? twenty uh, origins uh, twenty sixteen. I think was when I first God, that pitched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that is my favorite issue. It's number one because it meant it existed. It was real. Mm -hmm. There you go. The, the, the firstborn child. That's nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael, you had answer that one? Favorite issue? Uh, I'm very partial to uh, uh, number two right mm -hmm. there. I loved the short stories in that one. It's, it's just fun. It was enjoyable. It was still. And also happens to have you, one of your stories in it, yeah, which I have been, which my story, <laughs> which I've been using for to like to like hawk that issue this whole show. I mean, I like, appreciate. I really love the story. It's like it's a, it's a ghost story in BattleTech. Those okay, are always great. We do love our spooky stories, and that's yeah. the real reason. For yep. it. Yeah. I'm also super. Uh, uh, exci uh, excited about 19, mm -hmm. which has the first canonized uh, shirtless <laughs> dollar picture in it, or so <laughs> okay. fans just agreed to. 
I will get right on uh, that. I'm going to go with 15. It's the cop out. It's just a chunky boy. I, <laughs> the reason for it. Uh, I mean, it is uh, a brick. Right. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a big target. It's easy yeah. to hold. Um, about an hour and a half ago, I was sitting next to Mike Stackpole, and somebody came up to me with Shrapnel 15 and said, Hey, didn't you write? The Kellhound story in this one, <laughs> and I was to go. I, I wrote a Kellhound story in that, and like, wow, that is surreal. Uh, you know, like he's right here, you guys. Um, but yeah, that was just it was a cool moment. Um, the cover art was great. Mm. They had already planned the cover art before my story mm. stole the cover art by being a Kellhound striker, Lance. <laughs> Uh, but most people don't need to know that. Like, it's, it's fine. They had a perfectly good other cover. They read my story. They scrapped it. They just redid the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, no, 15, it was just, there's so much good stuff in there. And mercs are the the individual player characters of the setting, mm-hmm. right? Everybody has a favorite mercenary outfit. Yeah. So there's a lot to love in 15, you know? Right, it's, mm-hmm. it's right. Stuff. So let me ask you, Rusty, how was it like being published with Soft Mike Stackpole? Uh, terrifying. <laughs> Again, mostly because they were both Kellhound stories. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been in stuff before. What what I asked Phil for 15 mm-hmm. was just like, hey, like, what's the idea? Like, what do you want? And he said, just, you know, anything, Merc, we don't care. Bonus points, though, if it's one of the big name units that has a lance pack. Mm-hmm. And I was painting my Kellhound striker lance. <laughs> and I went, let's do it, man. Let's do a Wolfhound centric Kellhound story. Let's go big. Mm. It's not quite the striker lance because where I needed it in the timeline, the night sky wasn't a thing yet. So it's a guy in an ax man complaining about ammunition problems mm. and wishing he had an all energy version. Um but yeah, I just was like, let's do it. Let's write a Kellhound story. And it also appealed to me and a couple of the other writers I shared it with because it's a story about not being the Kellhounds guy. Right. It's a story about right. growing up in the Kellhounds, kind of in the shadow of Morgan Kell and uh-huh. Solo Ward and Chris Kell. And that resonates with a lot of us that grew up reading the stories. Yeah. You know, to to go, well, hey, we're we're still Kellhounds too. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. we might not be the Kells in the Kellhounds. But like, hey, it's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So yeah, um, it was it, it turned a little more autobi- autobiographical than I meant it to. <laughs> I think Wait, the, the, the character has red hair, right? <laughs> there was a tie in reason to some pre existing other things. Mm. Um, right. But yeah, just that yeah. I think that resonated with a lot of the other freelancers. Yeah. That, so, um, you know, that are. I feel like we need an obligatory wild dogs. Yeah, wild well dogs. <laughs> well, I want to jump in. There was a question earlier about German translations. Mm. Uh, and to answer that real quick, I actually have two German novels translated that we're working on. I don't have a timeline when they're going to come out. And if I have my druthers and they sell well enough, I will translate all the Germans back to English, the German only published novels. So, yes. And then we also uh, came up last time in the Randall chat that we are working on getting the new books translated into German and audio ebook and hopefully POD if it all works out. So yeah, we are in the final stages of finalizing that as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I have a lot of excitement on the, for the Germans there. Just be a little more patient. The person I've been talking with has been very patient with me, mm-hmm. and we are in final stages of, of getting that deal locked down. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's let's see. see, Rusty, are you actually losing your voice? I don't think. No, I lost <laughs> it a long time ago. <laughs> This is how I talk. Mike's trying to be like me. <laughs> he's he's guarding a bunch of glass and say, I'm trying to copy it. Uh, James wants to be one of the cool kids. So. I just got my voice back. Anyone who heard me yesterday, I was a mess. We are doing very well. Uh, question, is there a merchant Adepticon that will be available Sunday, or is pretty much everything going to be gone by then? Uh, we well, probably, we've, we've sold out of a couple couple books we look uh, we have plenty left in merch yeah. and fiction so yeah it's, we 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 planned for this we planned for a big run and mm-hmm. we've got a lot of stuff there's still plenty here um so yeah don't don't feel like you can't come down sunday and still pick up a lot of things uh some will be gone it's the nature of cons 
but we still have a lot here, so I don't think you're gonna miss. I don't think you're gonna feel like you missed out if you come. If you, if Sunday's the only day you can make it, we'll still be here, still be selling, and there will still be stuff for sale. So yeah. All right. What's everyone's favorite Merc unit, John? Oh, well, mine. Oh. It's gonna be on my jacket. Is a little known unit that barely is touched on in Sarna. It has like a two line entry called the Eisengrim. And I ran across them, and they just seem fantastic. And I actually want to think about commissioning some fiction for them. It, it is a not well known unit. It's not one of the big leagues. And they actually are, they were right now, they're not dead. I want to be very clear about that. Mm-hmm. They were operating like the 2750s. So, and there's nothing left on the bottom. And I'm like, I want to bring these guys back. So, yeah, that, that is my favorite unit. Phil? Uh, it's actually kind of hard for me to pick a favorite unit because there's a lot of them. Uh, but two that I've, that I've, uh, that I do like quite a bit are the uh, uh, McCarran's Armored Cavalry and the 21st Centauri Lancers. Okay. Yeah. Galhounds uh, are the ones that I grew up reading, uh, but I'm going to throw a curveball uh, in my Galhound spinoff novel. Let's go Wilson's Hussars. Oh, okay. the little rascals. <laughs> I don't know if want to shout out, but, but Mike, yeah. go ahead. I always want to say uh, Seychelles Stone Hearts just to give Aaron a little bit of a heart attack. <laughs> I love my Knights of St. Cameron. Okay. <laughs> and then I have to go back to so two ones. For the, the big ones that everyone knows, of course, the classic Aerodonny Light Horse. I really uh, I admire them quite a bit. But also a new unit on the scene, thanks to Mike Stackpole, the Death Kangaroos, baby. <laughs> just love that. It's, a, it's scruffy, down on luck nerf herders. Uh, he, he's a total street gang. Poor Swagger. Poor 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 Everybody seems to be giving me the love for the uh, Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> That's good. Uh, okay, we missed one of the good ones right there. Phil, yes. new author only edition of Shrapnel. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good idea. That, is that a good would idea. be yeah. a cool idea. Yeah, a lot of positive uh, if responses you there. Make it happen. Uh, you know, yeah, you have my blessing. I feel like that might might be like a special issue. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. All okay. TVs from yes. some some up and coming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ooh, would those German books become canon or stay apocrypha? Uh, uh I think that they will probably run through fact check to see yes. if there's anything that's actually conflicting. Right, right. Because it's, I don't think they've actually run through our fact checks. Yes, yeah, so we have to see, and uh, the, the question is what Ray would say about it. I have to get Ray's buy-in, of course. Yeah, because I think one happens during like the Andorian conflict in like mm-hmm. the early thirty uh, thirties. I don't think we really have a lot of fiction around there, so I think it would we would actually. So fit, as long as the but... Germans didn't wander too far afield, we should we should be okay. But yeah, it's going to be on a case by case basis, right? I and I th- myself, I would prefer them to be canon, but we're going to have to wait and find out. So, yeah, and I think if anything would be too far afield, that we probably have like a note or something about it. Yeah, very possibly, very yeah. possibly. So since we were talking about the Iridani Light Horse before, are you saying that all written uh, subunits of the Iridani Light Horse are canon? I mean, I can't really answer that. Well, what are you referring to? I believe there's going to be a new article coming out in uh, an upcoming shrapnel called uh, Helfer's Hindquarters, a subunit. <laughs> the logo is the yellow <laughs> with the black circle right there, just the rear end of the... I'm just reading from the Sierra novel there, the first Sierra novel. By the way, uh, I'm going to shout out Michael here, Sarah Mindy. I'm not sure if I got that name right. Speaking of weird horror, I will say Devil Take the Hind one. Some guy named Sierra Bella was also excellent. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We can dabble in the wheel with the kind of things and weird. That's always good to, to blend the two genres together. Yep. Uh, they were asking about where do you find the Death Kangaroo stories? The what? I'm sorry? Death Kangaroos. Uh, the first, okay, so I, I've got to actually put out, we, we need new cover art for the first one, which was released as part of the Kickstarter. Everyone should have gotten it free. So if you're a Kickstarter backer, that was one of the freebies you got with your backing pledge. Huh. The second one is in, in editing right now. We've got to go through that, get some cover art on that bad boy, and get that out. That should be out later this year. But I, I will re-release uh, Night at the Lake uh, soon as soon as we get some new cover art. I'll put print on that right away. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yes. The schwa, you are correct. Night of the Lake is the start of the of the series. Uh, Wandy, thank you, Calhouns Forever. Love the Calhouns stories. Uh, we have plans for Calhouns and Calandria messing around in the hinterlands. I'm not going to spill too much on that yet, but plans are afoot for that in both source book and fiction. 
So, yes. Yeah, Lorca, that is a, only a story out there just far, but there is more, many more to come. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Sorry about the mics, everybody. <laughs> yeah. The technology is wonderful, except when it ain't. <laughs> and also, there's some background noise because we're at Adepticon. Yeah. Where so, it has been huge recently. We've had yeah, thousands of people. Ooh, shots fired by Lorcan. Uh, <laughs> Rob Seward, the One Eyed Jacks, man. I first encountered the One Eyed Jacks in the Dark Age novels. That was an interesting unit. That was, and uh, mm. I would be love to see another One Eyed Jack story because that was a really interesting character I think could yeah. really play very well in the Ilkhan, that Ilkhan uh, era. I think would someone try to bring them back? Absolutely. Yeah, that was a fun one. Let's see. Uh, backstory of the Irby and the paint scheme for the. Oh, okay. So, Jeremy, which which Irby are you talking about? Are you talking about the pirate Irby, or are you talking about the Death Commando Irby? Because there's <laughs> two of them. Yeah. So that's a fair point. But both of them, one of them. I mean, either one would be very. I would love to see how a Death Commando Irby came to be. I'm just saying. So, you know. It, it could feature both. If it's Death Commandos against Pirates. Well, there you go. <laughs> trial of Champions, you know. Uh, any thoughts toward doing another Legacy Town anthology following a single unit? So, Lorcan, if you haven't seen No Greater Honor, we actually did that with the um, Aerodonny Light Horse. Mm -hmm. Followed that unit, what, we took three centuries? Yeah, it's uh, from the uh, the end of the Star League all the way up through uh, the Oakland the area. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, would I take another mech? Maybe if if I, I loved Legacy, I thought it was one of my favorite projects to do. Yeah. And maybe we take one and go back even further. Something I don't know, Age of War. Uh, that might be too old. I don't think we can cover that one. There is the Bounty Hunter. That is true. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Similar, yeah. similar vibe. Fantastic. Yeah, we're doing Bounty Hunter across the eras too. So, and uh, we're in the final stage of that one, right, Phil? Uh, Fair about, yeah. Getting there. Yeah. Getting there. So, yeah, that one's going to come out. Also part of the Kickstarter as well. Yeah. Can't wait to see that one. Looking forward to those stories. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, Rusty, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. 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 Munji's in there. Rusty, um, Mr. Ciovella is working on his as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we have a great a great lineup for that one. I cannot wait to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Will we see more private noble armies? See, they just have the kill house. Well, I don't think the Kelhans is necessarily a private noble army, per yeah. se. And the Lyrian yeah. regulars. A little bit. <laughs> uh, the, the Mountain Wolf stories are going somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> My friend, uh, Art. Rusty has a plan. We've got some Mountain Wolf battle mech stuff that's remaining affiliated with the O'Learys and the Rippin' Hearts of Vendrell. The relationships are going to change over the years. In part because Vendrell is over here and Alpharats is over here. There's a lot of interfere in between them, uh, but I'm I'm going in that direction a bit. Yeah, with okay. uh, with that. So yeah. All right. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, let's see. Any more stories with the Black Marauder? Um, so uh, those stories are all written by Lance uh, Skrinsky, and uh, he has given the fan base uh, license to write. Uh, future Black Marauder stories. Um, so, if you have a Black Marauder uh, story idea, then please send it our way. Oh, we would love Lorcan's to see it. Lorcan's idea, Legacy Two, a warship, start of the Star League, America Civil War, recovered by Comstar. That could be really cool. That's a good idea. I think a lot of people love them from Space Navy, and I'm one of them. <laughs> that could be really interesting. Wow! 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 Uh, okay. You know what, Lorcan? I'm going to think about that long and hard. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Someone up top was, oh, I, I got to bring this up. Karen, would love to see some more Mason Dunn. I wonder if maybe an author at this table might have been working on something a little Mason Dunn-esque. Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe shed a little light on that, perhaps? I know we heard this a little bit earlier, too, with Mike Stackpole asking about Mason Dunn as well. Mason's story has not concluded, but you will be seeing him in the upcoming Trial of Birthright. Uh, uh, how his story goes from there, I cannot say, but one of the most important things about Trial of Birthright is we really want to take our time to show some of the characters from the Dark Age era as we move forward into the history. So you're going to see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of twists, a lot of turns. I think you'll uh, you know, you'll have something fun to read. Mm -hmm. So for right now, his name is Mason, not done yet. <laughs> not done yet. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> um, 
Derek Noel, what about the Wall Street Journal's origin story? I know it's a dead horse. Not, not, no, no, no. Got to ask him. <laughs> so we talked, to, we talked about that one in the Michael Stackpole interview. Uh, look, hurting one author is difficult enough, but hurting two is nearly impossible, especially authors like uh, Mr. Coleman and Mr. Stackpole. However, progress is being made on that one. I am still hopeful that we will have that out before the end of the year. There were some uh, life complications. Sometimes life gets in the way. Uh-huh. Can't be helped. But those things have been straightened out. We're going to get that project back on track. So that's what I can tell you. Uh, let's see. Oh, right, Russell. Has anyone taken up the challenge of writing the reckoning up? That's a good question. Um, not exactly. Uh, for those that might have missed it in Shrapnel 13, I made up an off-the-circuit Solaris event called the reckoning, um, where there's always some dumb rule that sucks to be a mech warrior in, <laughs> where... Um, Maybe all mechs are throttled up completely the whole time. Oh my god, so to run forward. Maybe you have to walk backwards the whole time. Maybe you have to use your jump jets the full amount the whole time. Maybe you have no ammunition. Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah. And I was literally just making up like what would suck the most. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't. I haven't had any plans to try to write it up for uh, anything. This is a thing. Yeah, I mean, think. it actually could be, you could do that in Shrap Don't Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be good too. I yeah. would love to see that. So, Phil, get your game uh, game your game your authors on that one. I think that'd be super cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Lauren said he was making progress again yesterday. That's awesome. All right. Do I see Lorcan? Yes, Jason Hardy is lurking here. There's a, a couple Chevron books, so of course he had to come around and sniff around. So that's what's happening there. Well, this is his uh, his stomping grounds. So yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, true. He's actually local to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Still think I uh, still think it is sad. There's no Kerensky honor name under the dragoons. Uh, Fraser's name became one attached to much more while in the dragoons. It was nearly 50 years. I not the one who picks the honor name. I <laughs> not the petition. Whoever does that themselves, I tend to agree. I think there kind of should be one of their goons. That seems like it's a little odd. There's not, to be fair. I guess I'm just going to always assume that there was one. We just hadn't had a character actively use it. Well, that's, so, I, that makes sense. That I have to look that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd love some more views during the Jihad of the, or jihad of the Clans. Going full tilt on the Wobbies. Nova Cannon Stewart, just about everything Ghost Bear did come to mind. Well, um, interesting that you should mention that because, yes, as I mentioned at the Kresge Con, I mentioned it here, we are starting up a line of jihad era fiction. Yes, the most underrepresented because they weren't doing it during the time the jihad was active, but I am going to rectify that. So, yeah, it's uh, going to be a little slow going, but we're going to come out, but it's in, it's in the starting stages. I should, this time next year, I hope to have the first fiction out. I'm looking forward to that, so absolutely. And Kresge Honor Name would piss off Alaric royally uh <laughs> not wrong mercurion not wrong at all I mean, it's it's so so bad. Worse. <laughs> making so bad he takes his shirt off <laughs> my tear it off there you go yeah like the, the janitor from the simpsons who just <laughs> oh. let's see on a scale of one to ten <laughs> how many of you enjoy dropping isle of sky into maps and datelines and not explaining anything <laughs> Uh, I do not understand that. I feel like that's more of a rant question. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. We're going to take this because I have the answer for that one. Oh, okay. Isle of Sky. We have been we have been bandying about a story based in the Isle of Sky for literally going on a year and a half now. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, the vagaries of the schedule and just the authors involved have sent it the long way around. I, uh-huh. I, I can probably say we probably have not talked about that novel in nine months uh, or, or novella, I think it was right there. But Keep your eye out. The Isle of Sky is still a very interesting place, and uh, we definitely hope to get back there soon. Oh, here's always a classic from uh, Beskar66 Safe. Favorite mech? I'm going to start with Rusty on this one. Oh, he might have already seen it. You'll see. Um, I'm actually going to throw a bit of a curveball, and I'm going to go Thunderbolt. Uh Uh, I think they're just a great all-arounder. Oh, bye, John. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Thunderbolt for just general purpose, bad attitude, a uh-huh. little bit of everything. Um, not, yeah, like maybe not the standout choice 
that even I was expecting when I read the question. But a classic, um, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. I, need to, I need to write some Thunderbolt stuff now. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I, just, I just obliged myself. Sure, that's enough love. I would love to see some Thunderbolt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Big yeah. Thunderbolt fiction, yeah. We had one in a, a game at Kerensky Con that had a full clan assault lance shooting at one Thunderbolt for two rounds. <laughs> it did not die until the pilot failed the PSR uh -huh. and that damage took out the center torso. Wow. Like, it was just <laughs> doing Thunderbolt things and <laughs> and sucking it up. So it's like, they're just there's just something special about them. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to go Thunderbolt. All right. Uh, you can toss either the Phil or Mike, your choice. Let's go Phil. All right. Uh, that's easy. Uh, Stormcrow. I love I love the way that it looks because it looks like it's a cockpit welded onto uh, uh, a mech body. All right. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's mobile. It has a lot of weapons. It can hit really hard. It's just yeah. uh, I just have a fun time with it. I'm gonna go with the classic, and here's why. I'm gonna tell the story behind this. I'm actually seeing this my friend from high school later tonight. Hmm. It's mine's a battle master. So in Medford, a town of four thousand, we didn't have a game store. So it was a hobby store, but it wasn't really anything. So you had to go to Wausau, forty miles away. And one time I was taking a trip. We just gotten into battle tech, and my friend says, "Look, I really like you to get me a battle master." go down there so i went down there and i looked at the mech and it was so cool i bought it but i kept it for myself because i was a little bastard at that time <laughs> and just that that iconic the cockpit the big gun just you know just everything about it just that's that's my favorite hands down mike so what you're saying is you haven't changed much over the years <laughs> he got a little time <laughs> uh, i am always very very partial to the devastator uh which is coming out in the new mercenaries box set you can't really go wrong with uh, two Gauss rifles, two PPCs, and some medium lasers. <laughs> Except your heat. The heat Except. goes through the roof. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. let's see here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, did when is, is when Russell, Russell getting his first, yeah. uh, his own full length novel? I mean, I, I, <laughs> I've just been one. <laughs> I've got another one about ready to turn in. It's turning a short novel. Yeah, well, it was supposed it's to be still a novel, novel, though, right? You had to then get on me for it being too short. You can <laughs> no, only no, no, be too uh, short. No, so it's he, he, they went full rusty, exactly. Uh, um, but yeah, I've, I've turned one in. There's another one in the pipeline. There's a third one that's Ill Clan era stuff that I'm probably going to type up next week. <laughs> uh, I had some time on the drive up to just kind of think while I was driving, and I feel like it's about done, so... They're they're coming. They're coming. Yep. Yep. yep, yep the exactly. Okay. Yes. And and, and very soon. I mean, you, you know, actually, your cereal's done. Oh, that's all finished. We're, we're yeah, going to do it. Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Just gotta give him some notes. And, yeah. Very soon. Yeah. And I'm gonna have to hold them. You and Hansel, you have to hold back like wild horses. <laughs> and I said, look, this is your range. You gotta hit that. Not over. You're right there. So yes. Which I do when it really, really matters. Like a single page in a game trade magazine. Or is it? No, that, is right on. that is true. Yes, but yes, that is fair. I would <laughs> say Phil told me I could go a little over on the serial fiction. I asked him, and he said yes. So that's his fault, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> so you only have yourself to blame for those being a little bigger. Uh, someone asked, "When are we going to get more Davy and Nudge Nudge Mike?" That's a, that's a John question right there. I know where we'd like to go next, but we do have a few other novels coming before then uh, that uh, is going to mean well, we're at least a year out. It, uh, it's the same thing I said thing. with the Mike panel and the uh, Randall panel. There is so much going on in the inner sphere. It's an embarrassment of riches. Uh, it's so much to cover. Maybe we'll revisit David in a novella or two, something like that. We can do a little bit of shorter pieces. Um, yeah, it's just I have so much. To, it's almost covering... Yeah, so much to cover and, and a limited time to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, um, favorite battle text source book. That's an that's, interesting. That's one. an easy question for me. That's, so, uh, uh, my favorite is historical uh, Operation Klondike because I love the clans, but seeing the genesis of how they came to be what they are is just fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, like. Mercenary Handbook 3055. Uh, well, that's that's kind of a perpetual sweet spot in the timeline to me, mm -hmm. uh, where you've got a lot going on. The clan stuff is still unfolding, and they're still new and scary and dangerous, 
but you're starting to see clan tech on the other side and it's just kind of this timeless snapshot era that mid 3050s right um and and yeah and i've always liked the mercenary handbooks uh and that sort of thing because that feels like 30 different really short books right <laughs> they're, they're little snapshots of so much so yeah i'll go with like the 3055 mercenary handbook mike i'm going to say one of the jihad conspiracies books or uh or uh, star core dossiers I love the history. I love the the mysteriousness. I love the questions. That is always my one of my favorite parts. <laughs> I'm going to go into the classics, uh, Tales of the Black Widow Company. Mm. It really blew open what I think uh, Merc and a mercenary unit could do, and it just is really kind of defined a lot of that in that first era. So yeah, absolutely. It's great great question. Great question. We've got five minutes to go, so get your last few questions in now. Uh, Donovan. Tanal, any plans for Clan Snort? Clan Snort, really? Snort's a regular novel. <laughs> Someone gives me a good pitch that works. Sure, mm -hmm. I'll do that one. Yeah, um, a duel between a Devastator and Pleasure would be a party. Oh, wow, that would be a party destruction. Good golly. Yep. Now, yep, yep. uh, let's see. Russ was right. To fall in love with the machine you're writing about. Uh, the that's... people you could take a leave. Well, that's true, but but Rob, the characters have to be strong. Mm. Whether you like them or good or bad, but the characters, I mean, we look, we write character based fiction that are piloting big, stompy robots. There's only so much far you can mm. take a machine without characters you care about in the story. So I, I got to kind of slightly disagree with you on that one. Mm. Uh, let's see. Empire Alone. Can we start giving. Can, can we start giving the Free Rules League time to shine in the Kill Clan era? Oh, I, I guess. Clan. Okay, yeah, yeah. Clan. Yeah. Yeah. The law, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got a plan. It's going to be November. We love them stop being at the rest of the system. <laughs> I think Bill's doing a terrific job with the with the Merricks, absolutely. So, Letter of the Law, November, your first full Ill Clan Free Worlds League novel. Mm -hmm. And I bet a lot of the fans cannot wait for that. So, yes, mm -hmm. so yes, it's coming. It's coming, Kerman. Just, just wait, a little patience. Mm -hmm. The hell of that Merck's handbook. Okay, let's see. I did not. Da, 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 da. Phil's follow up to hunting season. Yeah, with this, I wouldn't call November soon necessarily, but it is going to be coming out <laughs> this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Star Corp dossier. <laughs> People not talking about the source book question. That's hilarious. Uh, it's a good question. It's not okay. Yes, yes. You, 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 you don't get to love them. You, you're absolutely correct. Yes. Yeah. Look, a good villain can be just as intriguing. Yeah. Just as 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 the character's compelling. That's the important thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think we're on the same page. Absolutely. But I do agree that it's important to. To highlight the mech, also, yeah, yeah, uh, in in this game, you know, yeah. I know. I mean, it is based on your robots. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. The coolest feedback I ever get on Shadowrun stories is when somebody says, "I'm trying to make a detective," or "I'm trying to make somebody like this character." Yeah, and it's like that's kind of like naming your kid after me or something. Right? Yeah. Like you want to play a character based on that fiction, right? And it's, right. it's I, I've had a lot of people reach out to me about the inner sphere heavy striker lance in the merch <laughs> box they're getting it for merlin's and then you add me for everything else that's in it and i'm like it's not my fault but so you just you trade with your friends you know that's you know part of the gig is to to make every mech lovable yep. yeah you know there's something cool about all of them you know hey shut up hey chris hartford good to see you here <laughs> uh more yarn or stories in the future more what? Yarn folk. Uh, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, I'll take stories if people write them. <laughs> you heard it from the man first, yeah. Uh, I, I, from Wandy, one question. Due to the map, uh, map, I guess, of the Oregon Nation, I assume, is near the planet Detroit. In the FM periphery, that area is likely jointly organized by the Torians of Kenopins at 3067. Now there is a nation. I'm going to put that one to Ray, unless, Mike, you know something about that. I have no idea. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> not the, three uh, planets like the FM said. Yeah, the, the, okay. The complete canonicity of the Oregon Reach and stuff, I, I think, as Phil told me, is <laughs> maybe. Because <laughs> I tried to change them a little bit in some of my it's stories. Nice. And it's, it's legal stuff, right? It's mm. uh, The game is owned by someone else. Some of the details are maybe owned by someone else. It's complicated. It's, yeah, it's, it's very complicated. Yeah. complicated. Yeah. So how we've approached it, and because I've got a couple of sh uh, stories in Shrapnel, is we've sort of kind of been playing only in the area in which we've already seen 
uh, stuff from from the games. Yeah. So anything beyond that is kind of like off the table. Yeah. Just yeah. just because of the tangle that so you know it would create. So there's one thing we... that's scarier than assault max. It's lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Best Quest 66 safe. Any Scorpion Empire stories? We just did one a couple of, uh, issues ago, right? Uh. Or was that the other Scorpion guy? No, Goliath Scorpions. I don't. Did I don't we, remember. Did off you top head. Doc, Doc Swift's Goliath Scorpion story. Oh yes, yes, that was in. Um... Oh, which issue was it? Yeah, recently, but I can't remember which one. So, I but Empire, it was, uh, I don't know, it maybe it was thirteen or fourteen, I think. Yeah, but again, someone's got to pitch it or or write it. Just go ahead and write it. Uh, let's see. I asked about House. Yeah, House of Rano is 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 canon. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but I think you're you're going to more details that I'm aware of on the map that I can't answer. So that's going to be a Ray question. Well, the big thing that we're running into is uh, I know what they're referring to say here. Nice try, folks. Stop trying to stump John. <laughs> the Oregon Reach and House of Rano, uh the transmissions from that region of space have always been a little weak. So who's actually in charge there may have changed over the centuries and real life uh, right out of sight of game time. So we apologize for any confusion. There is an Oregon Reach, there is a House of Rano, and there always has been. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, great. Uh, let's see. Can someone submit sh to shrapnel any time? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you want to tackle that second one, Phil. It's up to you. So, uh, yes, we do have a big lack backlog of submissions, but that's just because I've been getting so many submissions from people, and there, a lot of them are good, as we've all as we've all seen. True. Uh, yeah. So we we are working through them. We will get back to people, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, we've got uh trying to streamline our process there, but we are we are addressing it. So. But yeah. there you have it. And Karen Mindy, that was a good question. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh are we we are we are there, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. All right. So so thank you very much for sticking with us here at Adepticon. Uh once again, uh, I am blessed to be here with John Helfer's executive editor. Phil Lee, uh, editor of Shrapnel, and Rusty Zimmerman, uh, our wonderful author there. I'm Michael Ciravella. Stick around. In a few minutes, we're going to have a special guest. We're going to have Randall Bills and Jim Long uh, showing off a fun new game that uh, some of you will be seeing for the first time. So stick around. We'll, we'll be right back.
on either side. Um, it is pretty much almost every set of rules that you need in this game is on this reference sheet. And then, of course, what the cards are going to bring to the table. And so it really creates uh, a, a really quick way to learn. And then, of course, in the best of them, it takes absolutely forever. Uh, you now saying anything we can hear. Now we can hear Randall. Hang on. Maybe if we say it's Randall recommending lambs. <laughs> so Sorry. Can you guys hear me now? I didn't realize I wasn't there. I apologize. Our top story tonight. I know, right? <laughs> Okay, so uh, again, sorry about that. If uh, if we cut out a little bit again, uh, abstract tactical uh, game. Uh, it has a little bit of a chess vibe in it. Not really. Uh, we only just got the audio. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Ryan about that earlier. Uh, so resetting slightly. No worries. Uh, this is BattleTech Command. Um, Jim Long is here with me. He's a designer of this and has been. Uh, involved in Battletech at various stages for decades. 1987. Yeah, 1987. Well before me, I just stuck with it. And he, like, you know, went off and did other things. Yep. Um, and this is a game he pitched to us that we're going to be playing. Uh, for those that may have played it, uh, it is in the same design space as, say, the Command & Color series, uh, Memoir 44, or perhaps the best version of those styles, uh, which I believe is Battle of Westeros. Absolutely fantastic game. Uh, it's within that design space, but we bring a lot of unique elements to it. Um, and so, as I was saying, everything, almost everything you need to play is either on this one sheet uh, or, oh, maybe I want to be blocking with it. Uh, or it is on the cards. So really what we're going to do is we're just going to jump into the game and we're going to be describing it as we go along. Um and yes, if uh, obviously if you guys absolutely want to uh, paint these up, hopefully they will absolutely be paintable. They will be this size, uh, hopefully not as fragile. You, if you look closely, you'll see uh, busted arms, you know, authentic pedal damage. But really, it's just because they're 3D printed materials. Um, so we're just going to jump in. So right now at the start of this turn, um, on our card here, you have the draw card phase. Command full pay. So we should tell them it's it is oh. this is scenario based. Yes, thank so, you. So um, every, so we're set it up right now for an accidental encounter scenario. So there's multiple scenarios in the book. Um, we'll be doing more scenarios as times come out. So uh, yes, you're you're absolutely right. No, no, no. I I completely forgot that part again. Uh, very similar to command and colors. There will be at least fifteen. I'm kind of hoping for twenty scenarios, uh, in the box. Well, there. I know, I know. Uh, and then, obviously, we'll release them as we go along. One of the cool things that we're introducing, though, is there is, uh, again, and you're going to say it, so I will say it, kind of a stratego element in that there's hidden information that Jim doesn't know and that I don't know. So we each will have our own scenario books that will tell us what our objective is, and there will be different objectives based on the scenario. So we got a lot of cool options here. Okay, so... Uh, thanks for jumping in on that, Jim. I was getting ahead of myself. So we have the draw card phase, the uh, command pull phase, action phase, and end phase. So draw card phase. Draw card phase is normally drawing one card. You'll notice that there are three different decks. Actually, maybe put it a little like this so it's not quite so confusing. Uh, there is the common deck, and there's always one common card faced up so we can both see what's coming. There then is a unique Curita and Davian decks, and they will have the same backs so that if he's not paying, if Jim's not paying attention, and I've actually drawn some extra power out of my deck, he doesn't know, oh, he's got some extra power because they'll be a little more powerful in these, but it's also kind of nice to have these generic ones. I know exactly what I'm getting. Okay. How, so right now we're going to draw. I'm going to go ahead and what is that? Medium battle, adjacent light, medium heavy. Okay, so immediately you'll see medium battle. That is a type of unit. There are two basic types of units. There is a line unit, and then there's a battle unit. A line unit simply is a run-of-the-mill regular unit. He has no special abilities. A battle unit, then, you can think of it as a veteran unit. 
and it then has special abilities. So both he and I have different ones. So, for example, House Kirita has Cavalry, Faithful, Fanatic, Fusilier, and Support. And then House Davian has Cavalry, Cavalier, Dragoon, Grenadier, and Support. So we have two that are the same and then three that are unique. Each one of those brings something different. So when this says medium battle, if I'm going to play it, I then have to play it in coordination with a medium battle unit on the board. And then adjacent light, medium, heavy enemy units cannot receive actions on the turn following this turn. I need to make sure I have a medium battle. Uh, Which will tell me something right away about how you composed your forces. Exactly, right? Or if I'm playing it real deep, extra meta, I could take this even if I can't play it, making him think that I have something. Because all he can see is my weight classes. He can't see if I have medium or battle or what type of battle I have. So there's a lot of cool play back and forth. But I will go ahead and take this. Now, next thing then is on the draw, for every three light units that I have, I get to do an extra draw. I don't get to keep it, but I do get an extra draw. And I have one, two, three. So I do get the extra draw, which I'll just go ahead and draw both of these. So the different weight classes give you different abilities. One of the things we wanted to be really sure of is that someone who takes a bunch of assault mechs is not just going to crush someone who takes more medium and, and light mechs. There is absolutely a reason to take combined arms with different weight classes and have a good mixture. If you rely too much on the lights, you're going to get outgunned. If you lie too much on the heavies, you're going to get outmaneuvered. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, it can actually be scary sometimes. Uh, we've played games where there's three and four assault units, like a whole company of them, uh, and it looks really scary. And I have absolutely beaten them off with light and medium mechs on the right, uh, with the right thing. So uh, I can only keep one. That's put away. Also, though, if I for every three medium mechs, my maximum card size increases. So I only ever get to keep one off of the draw, but as the game progresses, I normally have a maximum of two, but for every three that I have access, that increases by one. So right now, I just have this one card. Uh, we each have a commander that has some cool abilities on here as well that we'll get into. Okay, I now have, you'll notice he has really cool tokens. I lost them because for a lot of those that uh, follow what I'm doing, I moved and I couldn't find them. So these are my three action tokens, okay? The action tokens are provided. One is provided by Daniel Sorensen, Tai Daniel Sorensen, and then two of them are provided by the headquarters. Okay. If Daniel Sorensen, well, one, if Daniel Sorensen in this particular, uh, actually, yep. I can't, it's if the leader goes down, right? Yep. HQ is captain, opposing commanding unit. Okay. So in larger scenarios, uh, you can almost double the size of this for what will be in the box. It can go really big. It's really awesome. And the tiles, obviously, as you can see, are modular. And somewhere around here, I have several more modular tiles. So we can literally double the size of this and double the number of units. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Um, but it means that, for example, you might have four or five command. And you might have, say, this is my Delta Company. And if I lose my Delta Company, that command point goes away. Or... It might have a command token that can only apply to it. So even though you desperately need to make a move over on this side, you may not have the command points to do it. So again, lots of cool flexibility. And so the big yes. thing about it too is that it's not random. You, you, your command tokens, you know exactly what you've got. And if you need to make sure you preserve command tokens to do a thing, then that's totally up to you. If you Absolutely. get back into a corner, that's just decision making. Yep. Now, the two things, now, uh, so a couple of things. One, we're going to get a couple of rules wrong uh, because Jim and I have not actually played this in a year or two. Uh, again, the the, th the things that we're keeping it from moving are now out of the way, and it's going to be whole hog, but that literally happened this week. <laughs> uh, and so we're going to get a couple of things wrong, so apologies. I blame uh, myself. <laughs> I'm okay with that. All right. Um, but some of the things, so... Um, you must use all of your command points, okay? 
it's about an initiative. It's about the momentum of a battlefield. Again, this is not an individual mech, and I'm that pilot. You are the commander of your entire force across a large battlefield. If you don't use all of your command points, which usually you can, but if you don't, that command point will actually go over to your opponent to be able to potentially use on their turn because you have given them the momentum. They've been able to take initiative from you because you did not maximize all the assets at hand. So I will go ahead and spend one here to move, let's say my, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move my assault here. Um, actually, no, because he can't go in the mountains. So I'm going to move the medium. I got to move the medium out of the way. Uh, movement is basically assault is one movement point, heavy two, medium three, light four. And then water is plus one to enter. Woods is plus one to enter. Um, it is plus, uh, you cannot enter a hex of even your own unit unless there's some card that allows you to do that, okay? So in this case, I got to get him out of the way. So I will go ahead and activate him, and he can move three, but I don't want to get him too far ahead. One, two, I think I'm going to do just that. Now, once again, I know what type of unit this is. Jim doesn't from the other side. I will go ahead and now activate the assault. Uh, I had to go around the mountain because you have to have a special card to be able to actually move into the mountain. And then the last one. Combat takes place while you're adjacent. So range combat is abstracted within the two hexes or the three or four, depending on how many units are involved. Correct. So right now, Randall's still outside of most of my range. And so then those were my three action points that I've taken. Um, cards can be maneuver. Cards can be combat oriented. Uh, usually you have to be adjacent to initiate a combat. Uh, nothing happened. So then it's going to move to the bottom of the round, okay. uh, which has Jim spinning his actions. So when it's your turn, you can do one of your actions can be really one of two things. You can take a maneuver action, which just is a maneuver and you move. You can take a combat action, which means you've already removed your in position to do an action, and that allows you to to actually attack. So you don't move and attack on the same time, typically. Um, I get to look at my cards first, right? So I'm going to... Oh, yeah, draw so, draw so cards first. Of all, we, to, oh, that's one right. Face one up. down. All right, so, so I you can here. choose that or pull here or pull that. And, and I, then how many lights do you have? Yeah, I've only got two companies so, of lights. So you do not get that extra draw. So just one so draw. If attacker... If attacker, if defender is eliminated, attacker turn. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take one a blind card and see what this is. Um, mighty, mighty. Randall doesn't know the trouble he's in. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to do something to, uh, to show how something works here. I'm going to take my first command point, and I'm going to move this medium group right here. You have to move in a straight line. I'm going to go one, two. And I'm, oh. gonna, and I'm actually going to go, oh, wait, three. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to get adjacent to those guys there. A little bit risky because I'm going on a two-for-one there, okay? And then I'm actually going to go, I'm going to move this guy forward. He's a heavy, one, two. That's my second one. And I'm going to activate this unit twice. Ooh. Okay, okay. so okay. saucy from the start. So if you... If you use a unit twice in the same turn, they start to overheat. And so they take an overheat token. Okay. And that's not necessarily a good thing. No. Okay. Um, so overheat does some things. And, and so normally I would never do this, but for the sake of showing the game and how. Oh, yeah. Works, that's what it is. You're yeah. just trying to show it. I lure you into a false yeah, sense yeah, of security. Yeah. yeah. Combat is, is very, very straightforward. I have a medium group. I'm going to attack this light group. Okay, so I look at the combat result charts, and I am one weight class heavier than them. So under normal circumstances, I'd get a good result. However, I've overheated. When you're overheated, you're minus one weight class, so we're right now we're even. Hope that makes sense, Randall? Yeah. Does that make sense? So um, attacker is the same size as the unit. We get a defender pull. Well, sorry, that's actually wrong. 
Because you do the action and, and then, then you put the overheat on. Awesome. It. Okay. So so you're not one size less. So I'm going to be. Um, so you're Randall's still made the game a lot better since I originally designed this. So so I got to make sure that I'm playing the game right. Uh, so, so yes, currently you're one size bigger. So, so I'm a size. Can, I'm a size two. So you're going to force me out. Size one, and so that's that. The attacker is one size larger than defender. The attacker pushes. Yep. And the defender overheats. And what that means is I get to decide where he goes. Each of these three. And so I'll go ahead and push him back here because that causes a bottleneck now. So even though right now nice. he's got that, so now I've forced him to be um, to get in the way of all his other units. I'm allowed to um, – I don't follow up typically, so now the defender has an overheat because – Yep. Okay. And now we take care of everything that happens after the attack. One, I overheated, so I get an overheat token. But yep. two, I lose a guy because yep. – There's an attrition, attrition that happens, effect. just the general combat. Again, thinking of this as not necessarily minutes of combat like you would have in Battletech, but more like the hours of combat uh, across an entire day. And so in that instance, we've engaged long enough in combat – that the attrition has knocked both of us down. Yep. So both of them got a little attrition. I overheated a little bit. That was my third action. And so that's it for my my phase. Okay. Um, so to remove this overheat token, I would need to not activate him for an entire turn to get to the end phase because we're actually now at the top of two. Um, so let me get my cards first, though. I still have the three lights, so I'm going to get the two draws. Uh, I will, in fact, go into this. Now, the difference between the generic deck and our uh, own unique deck is that when this generic deck gets to the end, you're going to shuffle it and use that again. But for our cards, they're a little more powerful, but once I have to discard them, they are gone from that game. So even right now, when I've drawn these two cards... I'm going to discard one, and I will never see it again this game. That moment within the battle has now passed, and you're never going to be able to recapture that moment. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Okay. And I'm still – so I'm at my normal maximum of two cards, and then I do have the three still for all of that. So I am going to go, yeah, you did plug me up nice and good, didn't you? That was the hope. Yeah, that was, that uh... was the hope. Now, if you, want, if you want to move when you have overheat, that's bad. Uh, you can do it. It can get desperate. But just like the, the full version of Battletech, doing something while you're overheated has a lot of negatives. Yeah, so if, if I get a... So there's two ways to eliminate somebody from the board. One is if I've lost all of the units on the top through attrition, the units immediately eliminated. At the end of any turn, when I have two overheat tokens on, that will also eliminate me. So I could go ahead and use him to do something, but then I'm going to lose him at the end. And sometimes that'll be worth doing. Other times it won't. Uh, so I will... Let's just go ahead and get some big boys up there to play. Setting up for a future turn. Um, I will do my second one here. Oh, I don't want to move him, though. Don't want to activate him. So I'll move him up. Now, I can only go in a straight line unless something allows me to do it. So then I have to go shooting off in a different direction. Uh, on a future turn. An important thing, too, is we have, um, one of the things that happened is that uh, when you encounter oh, each other. We totally forgot that. We, you expose yes. what they are. So we're revealed, and I am a line. I'm a cavalier. Cavalier. So cavalier is. During combat as attacker, treat the combat result as attacker push regardless of unit size. Okay. So I could pick that if I didn't get a better result, I could get the attacker pushes is, is a good result. Yep. So in this instance, I will go ahead and take the moment 
uh, because I'm a medium and he hasn't been activated yet. And he is a light, so he's one size smaller. Because of the overheat. Because yeah. of the overheat. And so what's going to end up happening is that will push him back over here. And that will force him to get a second overheat plus the attrition. And then I will take an attrition on my side. Uh, do I move in there? Nope. It should say. Because uh, I'm getting the one size attacker push. Following the push. Yeah, I think you do. No, I, yeah. I think I do get you to go in. Go in. Yep. So now I'm like that, but he's going to get an overheat token. Okay. However, at the end of a turn, there's two overheat tokens on there. Um, unless he can do something about that, he's going to die. I choose not to. <laughs> against uh, that So that was the top of the top of the unit. Now it's down to the bottom of the turn. So once again, this doesn't apply yet because he's now taking his turn. So now it's I back get to Jim. One draw. Okay. So I will move these guys out. So there. Uh, while you're doing that, answering a couple of questions. Uh, assuming the game is successful, would there be expansion sets for each faction? Absolutely. Uh, I would love to do that. In fact. Uh, one of the things you don't see here is there's also a mercenary set uh, that will potentially come in the box. Uh, so we're already absolutely looking at that. Uh, like a light version of Battle Force, uh, I mean, sort of. The scale's the same. Yeah, the scale's the but same, that's... but it really does play different. It really yeah. does have its own unique uh, play and feel. Uh, let's see. The, the top of these, it's not coming on and off of the cardboard. You're going to assemble the cardboard. You're going to put these tops on, and then really that's going to stay, right? And then you're just putting the pieces on each time you put it out. So hopefully you'll still get a lot of good um, durability and strength out of that. Um, okay, so you did everything you were doing? Yeah, so all I did was move. I moved my heavies up. I moved two assaults up, getting them in position. That's all I did. Okay, so then now. at the end of the turn... He has an overheat token on that, which is just going to flat eliminate that unit. Okay? So now start a turn three. This guy three. goes away because you didn't put an action uh, on it. Because I didn't use yep. him either. Yep. yep, that's still on there. i got to get to the end of this next turn. Uh, I get to draw my two cards. Uh, and then I have one, two, three mediums. So I still only get to keep one card, but I now get to go over a maximum of two. So I've lost a medium, so I think my hand size is going to be restricted to two because I've got two lights and two mediums. Yeah. So I'm, I've got less tactical opportunity than Yeah, Randall. and that's part of the balance. He has a much heavier force than I do, but that means he's slower moving. He's less able to respond to me. And so then that the cards allow me to get a lot more, uh, as Jim was saying, that tactical flexibility. So I've got these three. Um, so I will do that to move my assault. Um, and I think Gemini might be a little more foolhardy uh, than in normal situations because we're just trying to show off all that this game can do instead of, you know, the normal uh, painstaking thing we might do. So then what we're going to do here. I am going to. Oh, and he got revealed as well. I forgot from last turn. It's just normal line unit. Okay. Uh, so we have two special attacks you can always do irregardless of cards. One is an alpha strike which means that I can put a heat token on a unit to increase my size. The second one is the command coordinated attack, which means as long as I have an adjacent friendly unit adjacent to both the attacker and the target, I can put a overheat token on that to make him plus one. And you can combine those. 
So let's say we had started here without him moving. I could do a alpha strike to make him size one, or I could also then do a command coordinated to give him a plus two size. So that um, would make him three sizes larger, so which three, would eliminate Well, I, I don't even need to do that, right? So, But what I am going to do, again, just because I want to show you the flexibility of this, I will be doing what Jim did, which is giving the Assault Lance a second action. I am now one size bigger, and I will, in fact, be using Command Coordinated, which will throw an overheat token on him as I throw this guy around which will make him two over. So unless Jim has some card to stop me. I'm holding him might, off. I'm holding him off. Yeah, and I reveal him as a line, but that simply wipes him completely out. Okay, I'm going to move in the spot. He is going to get an overheat token for me assigning him a second action. Right, and combat could also give you, in some conditions, can give you a, a heat as well. In this case, he just rolls right over the top just of me with support. Just blasted through, and there's so much firepower right there, just took him away. And then the last one is I will, what do we got here and here? I will play two medium, uh, spiritual support, two medium. Two medium units may take a maneuver action of minus one MP. So that'll be the last one that I'm assigning to this guy. But using him, I now get to move two just at minus one. So then I go one. I can't go the two, three, but I'm just looking to position him out there. And then this guy. No, I want to do this guy. Uh, I will go one, two. And that is all my action. So that is then discarded and back over to Jim. All right. I have a hand size of only two. Because you can still draw, right. but you must immediately discard if you only have the hand size of, size of two. So. I oh, will. yes. Thank you for. They're paying, they're paying good attention. Oh, the my attrition. gosh. There we go. Thank nice you so time. much, guys. I'll discard that. I'll discard the sweeping movement I happen to draw there. Okay. So, all right. Are there house-themed models you plan for each army? Example, Curative Dragon. Uh, really, we need to get in production. I would love it if each one had their own, but that's really going to be about the cost of uh, on the production side and whether the game can afford to have that type of special unit use. All right. I'm going to do something uber clever. <laughs> All right, first action. One, two. Okay. Second action. One, two. So I'm now in water. Water helps me cool down, but it also makes me less powerful. So yeah, it minus one to the size. Yep. And then I am going to use my third action to attack with the heavy. Really? I am. Interesting. I'm okay. going to attack with the heavy, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to alpha strike. What? And I'm going to support. Wow. So command coordinated and alpha strike. Yep. So he's basically trying to make sure that the assault goes down and is going to lose the heavy to do it. Exactly. Because exactly. he's going to get a one heat because he just gave the heavy a second action. And he's going to alpha strike. So right now he's a medium, right? Because so he goes with, down one. Yep. Because I'm right? in the water. Because so he's start in the with water. Three to four. Right. Right. And so then he's going to get one back because of the alpha strike, strike, and another one back because of the command coordinated, which puts him at basically five. And my four is down to a three because of the overheat. So he wipes me out. Nothing I can do about it. And I don't think I have any cards. Nope. So I'm going to take uh, two overheats, though. Except I'm in water, so I'm going to I'm going to get rid of one over. Oh, uh, nice. So yes, two would go on there, but then at the end of the turn, it's going to take one back off. That's awesome. You do have to put one on him. And then when the command coordinated happens, no attrition happens on this guy, but they still have the attrition on the main. 
Oh, so, nice. I, I was think not we got thinking it, I about think we that. Got it right. I think we got no, it. no, no. We got, I think we got it right. Okay. That was that was a superb move. I love it. So um, now I'm vulnerable being in the water. Why I'm was there easy. two on there? Uh, because you support it. You I supported, it. so he was going to already go away. Yep, that's that's right. right. Man, just kind of blasted through this right side. Yikes. Okay, so that's going to be back up to the top. And let me get a few more of my guys. Ooh, man, that was brutal. Uh, well, so one of the, there are two ways to win this particular scenario. Um, the first is if he captures, all he has to do is move into my headquarters spot, either one, or eliminate our commanders. Uh, the commander mech on Jim's side is the guy here with the gray atlas. The one on my side is the gray uh, marauder. And and those command units have a little more special abilities. Um, and we'll get to that when we get there. So I will go ahead and just uh, get my heavy, heavy moving out to surprise, surprise, provide some cover if I can talk today. I'm going to do that. <clears throat> to quickly sprint my medium over the way so you can't just slide oh, in and grab okay. my uh, shooters. And then I will spend my last one to, yeah, just to kind of get my heavy movement again. Again, I'm just trying to screen by rotating over uh, to deal with what Jim just did to me. So um, you have to pay attention so to So back over to your, your turn. Center. Yep. So that Randall's this line was open. I was only a couple moves away from being able to to actually move in there and steal a victory. And will, yes, this is a BattleTech game without dice at all. Uh, there is a little bit of randomness in the cards, obviously, um, but you will find that the cards boost things along. They do not. I I I don't think I've ever left a game feeling like the cards decided things um it's more about did i set myself up appropriately to take advantage of the cards or to block what jim is bringing with the cards i will go right here and i'll move this medium one two three i will go right here and move this guy one i can't move into the mountains but nope. i'm going to go ahead and go right there and then i'm going to go ahead and move this guy one as well um I'll do this just to show you, even though it takes an extra one to move into woods, you're always allowed to move one one hex. Yeah. Well, in this instance, that's actually combined hex yeah, wood of and, woods and hills. Yeah. So normally it would take two extra movements, so three. So a medium moving in there would take it all away. But yeah, Jim's correct. Unless you are prohibited, like a mountain, from moving in, you can always move into the one hex. I did not do anything with these guys, so we'll take the heat off of them. And let Randall take a turn. Okay. And we'll go to turn four. I uh, will go back turn five. to, yeah, turn five. Let's get some more cards out here. Okay. Um, so I am going to go, Oof. yeah, I don't like what you're doing, Jim. That's definitely about putting I mean, look pressure. At this. I definitely, yes. Like that's disgusting. And all my uh, cards are assault. Yeah. So I need to, uh, I need to get my, uh. I'm going to get my thing going here. So I'm going to go. Um, I'm actually going to pull him back to, make, to room. make room for the assault. Can't quite get through the pass that's right here. Again, trying to think of it, it's the game's always about the, the much larger scale, not the normal battlefield you might be thinking of. Um, and then. I will play this guy one, two, and that's my three. So back over to you. A little more maneuvering right now. 
Is the game only for two players or can it scale up? It's really designed for two players, but uh, we have absolutely played it where on a larger, uh, a little more units, you could have, you could assign a player to do one command thing. Uh, one of the command, uh, like one of the companies within it. Uh, but it really is designed as a right. two player. Yeah. So we, we really wanted to have the command and control be part of this. So being able to have sub commanders and things like that um, is absolutely possible. But knowing the strategy, having one person that really is in control really is, is kind of important. Uh, how much can the game scale up player wise? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. It's It's really not designed for multiplayers. Um, but I would love to see a tournament. Oh, absolutely. I think this would be a brilliant tournament no dice, play. It's just, yeah, yeah you right? can't say bad. Okay, are you ready for me to surprise you again? Yeah, yeah, bring it. Here's one. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Okay. You going to do it again? Uh, Then I'm going to go here, one, two. Then I'm going to overheat the assault guys. Because they're just assault guys. They're <laughs> just assault they're guys. just assault guys. And I'm going to go ahead and hit you. So right here is a, so I start off with a, a four. I'm going to get support from this guy right here. So that'll cost me something there. So four, I will be up to a five. You're there at a puny three. So I am too bigger than you unless you can do something clever with those cards. I will smite them mightily. Uh, nope. Nope. All right. So you will simply smash me out of the way. Okay. So um, the defender is eliminated. I had to take two heat for that, and my assault had to, to lose an attrition guy. So it feels like that was a fair trade, like I got the better end of that. Yeah, I think you got the better end Did of that. I? Okay, well. So, uh, and you move in. No, you move in. <laughs> yeah, you no. pushed in. There. I did. I did push in. Yeah. There. So that's the deal. That's the deal. You so, moved in a position. That was a great position. Um, so I'm so about. Then, I'm about to get overextended and, yeah. and rolled. Okay. So then you are currently a heavy. Oh, sorry. It's back yep. over to me. i got to grab yep. my cards. Don't ever forget that. Uh, and... Okay, so then we're going to start out here. Okay, so then I will simply do a uh, an attack action or, or a combat action. Um, he is, they're currently the same size. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing that Jim did, which yeah. is alpha strike and command coordinated assault, uh, which will allow him to just smash him unless you have some type of card. I do not. Okay. That will give me an attrition right here. Okay. Yeah. And then he gets the overheat token for the assault. And then he gets the overheat token for the command coordinated assault. That was all just with the one move. Um, I will then. Medium battle. I am going to. Um. Activate him again. Oh, no, because that'll actually kill him. I don't want to do that. One, two, three, flight. If I can get up there. Two, three, four. Yeah, so I will go ahead and press this. Wall. I will activate my light here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, sorry. And this one uh, did get revealed because the attack. Come up here. 
And then, oh, no, I needed a medium up there. Sorry, just just sec, guys. I did that slightly wrong. Taking that back. I know I know I took my hand off the pawn. Trying to find. God, I really needed that one. Now I appreciate that Randall has put his heavies in harm's way here, because that that gives me something to shoot for. If I can make this unit overheat, then I can snake a victory here on, on turn six. Uh, well, uh, not quite. Oh, right. Remember, not that was going to say, there, there's I... some leader ones that I'll go over because, you know, let's face it, in Battletech, you know the second the leader is on the field. Initially, we had been hiding the leader, yep. but we realized that, one, that led to kind of accidental deaths, which was not fun at all. Uh, but it also meant like that's not very battle tech. And of course, because, you know, plot armor, <laughs> uh, leaders often have the coolest and biggest moments in the field. So there are some extra rules that apply to the leader that, uh, that mean that I'm still not feeling too comfy that I did that, but he's not going to be eliminated out of hand. Uh, so then I will go one, two, three, man, I cannot get over there. Uh, fine. I'll just move him up. And then, uh, prepare him to get moved up. No, I'm going to move him. Realized? One, two, three. My support or, unit was standing in one, water. One, two, three. My support unit. So he wouldn't have taken the heat. He would have been plus uh, Didn't one. you do a command coordinate with him? I, I thought you moved him and did the command coordinate. That's why you had he was, two. Do you guys remember? I thought I just... Yeah, I thought you were still going to keep that on because you, you removed one because of the water. Got it. No, got it. Okay. Uh, so we got about 10 more. Time ago. Yeah, we got about <laughs> 10 more minutes here, guys. We've got other awesome things coming. Um, hopefully, we will have shown you. I mean, obviously, I want to keep going because I want to beat Jim. and uh, But uh, that is it for me. So it is back over to you, sir. All right. So I'm going to draw a card. Oh, you're in trouble. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, see, Randall, am I correct? It doesn't look like it's changed a lot since KCON. I know we had some possible changes for it. I don't remember the leaders. Uh, the leaders were new. Uh, the, the, for those that can see, these are literally the scribbles from last KCON uh, that will be incorporated. You guys had some some fantastic feedback. Those, in fact, will be incorporated. But it's, you know, 99% the same, maybe 98% the same. I think we're really trying to detail the cards and be clear about our verbiage and, and, and some of the individual yeah, pieces. Yeah, no, no, it, it's 95% done. It is scenarios and then just continually polishing. Uh, also, for those that are interested, we will be building. It's actually about 60% built into TTS. And hopefully in the next month or two, it will be finalized into TTS. And we will then do one last open beta testing of it before we send it off to print in the summer to then be available in the fall. Are you ready for me to, like, blow your mind? Yeah, I'm ready. Bring it. I, th I think you've caught me off guard here, so I'm off my game, man. Bring it. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to uh, activate these guys over here. And I'm going to play uh, a plus one movement. On a light, so one, two, three, four, four change you go five. five, nice, okay, then I'm gonna overheat him to activate him again and play a can change movement direction one two one, two, three, four, you just did it, oh man, I did the same thing to you when we you did it, it. Oh, my okay. gosh. Uh, one two, nice three, stinking four. in. Four. So, all the way over here, that's why you have light mechs. Yes. Light mechs can win you the game. It, and that's why I was screening against that. But he hit me hard here, and I kind of forgot that he had the light, and that pulled me out of position. Yep. It's and that was perfect. So that's important. That's exactly so, yeah, what it was. Yeah. I was worried you were going to move this guy just to block lanes. Yeah, and yeah. Like I kind of forgot you yeah. had the light just camped out there waiting yeah. for it. So, so there you go. This is uh, Battletech Command. Again, 
there's so much more than what we just showed off to it. Devon, treachery. Deviant treachery. That's exactly right, sir. Oh, that's hurtful. <laughs> That's hurtful, man. Um, yeah, I uh, I absolutely fell in love with this game. I know it's not going to be for everyone. We don't expect every single BattleTech player uh, to grab a hold of this. Uh, but I think for a good bit of our player base, they're absolutely going to love this game to death. Like I said, I hope by next year uh, to see tournaments of this off and running. Uh, I would love to actually be in a tournament myself. I just, yeah. I've loved what Jim and I and Bryn, don't forget, Bryn's done a lot of work on this with me. Uh, and we've really pulled it into a great place. So like I said, uh, we'll be putting calls out for TTS for those uh, that want to be involved with that final play test on this. Uh, thank you so much for coming and being a part of this uh, live stream with us. It's been great. Thank yeah. you, Randall. Appreciate awesome. the opportunity. Very much. Thank and you. so we'll, uh, we'll sign off for now and uh, fire up. I think there's another one coming here shortly. And I'm going to go peek in that awesome Leviathans game that's on. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Good day on over there.
2024, my favorite con of the year. Yeah. Um, uh, always giant shout outs to uh, Greg and Shelly at Adepticon for them and their whole team. Also a shout out to uh, the uh, people here running the show or, or running the live stream, uh, Ryan and his team. Uh, for all that they do in putting up with our ridiculousness and many, many, many hours of live streaming action. So this is going to be the last part of our uh, evening. We'll go for about 40 minutes or so, right around 8 o'clock, just here to talk, uh, throw around ideas and answer questions. So right out of the gate, we've got a question from uh, Stephen Stephen Prussian Havoc Strobel. That's a great handle. Uh, for Randall, Leviathan's a magnificent game. Thank you. What is the single aspect of Leviathan's Great War that will capture gamers' imaginations the most? Um, well, I mean, it's hard to overstate how awesome the minis are, uh, particularly when the last time we only had two fleets, and this time out of the gate when it releases out, there's going to be five fleets. Uh, and it just... They play very differently. They're very asymmetrical play. Um, and then uh, one of the things that I'm hoping to, uh, there'll be a um, a die cut of it in the box, uh, but there is also something called a Hindenburg Fort that's in the game uh, that is incredibly fun to have a whole scenario based around. And uh, man, I'm hoping we get a mini of that someday. But uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, can I ask if there's a specific focus to this segment? Really not. I don't think so. We're just going to be talking. If there was one, we abandoned it five minutes. Uh, just, yeah. We're just going to be talking. We're going to be answering questions. So please start powering questions out to us, and we will get through as many as we can. Maple cookies. We could focus on the maple cookies. Brian says, uh, I wish we had taken on, but it was retiring. Well, that's a great reason to uh, – not be the show. To not be the show. Yeah. But, uh, is a big thing, but, but there'll be more of them. I was going to say, there's going to be more KCONs. We have had an absolute blast with them. So grateful for all of those backers that have been out. I love every one of them. And more will come in when hopefully we'll see you. Uh, what mech would you like to see receive more love in the fiction? Sagittaire. I mean, that's a... <laughs> that's a Lauren, always the Sagittaire. Love the Sagittaire. Uh, Ray? I don't think we've seen enough of the urban mech. <laughs> wow, I can't believe you said that. Dude. You didn't burst into flames. Gonna make it happen now. Chasing everything. I have an idea for Urbeck that turns into a tank and then back uh-huh. to Urbeck. We got rules for it. We have rules yeah. for it. Right. Uh, Brent, what mech do you think needs more love? I-, I-, I hate to say this. We actually haven't had the Sagittarius Central in a in a novel in a very long time. See? Yeah, it's true. He's not wrong. <laughs> and it's just, there's not many mechs that look like it. It's got a, a really unique profile. Well, I love it. But it's also a yeah. total brawler beast. Oh, I yes. think can weather and go for a long, long time without having to worry about resupply. It is a great mercenary at commander unit. Like It's got a lot of, a lot of place in the universe, to my mind. Yeah, I'm already going to get what I want, which is I wanted to see more celestial action, and we're finally going to get some Jihad novels, so I'm super excited for that. Uh, we have scro- there was a you guys- scroll off the table. Off the- <laughs> yeah, you guys are moving so fast now. Thank you for all the great questions. There was a uh, there was a KCON for the Kerensky backers. Will we get a Rinchowski con for the Leviathans backers? Yeah. Uh, uh, that'll be a little more yeah, difficult, but, don't, 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 don't. but uh, we'll we'll see about that. If nothing else, at some of these cons, it would be great to have uh, special games that uh, maybe some of the backers could be a part of. Uh, we'll look at some of that. That's awesome. I saw a question scroll off saying, "Are any chance of modernizing the uh, Catalyst websites?" Which I assume could mean anything from the corporate site to the 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 the, the uh, IP site to the mm-hmm. store site. Yeah. Uh, short answer is yes. Actually, uh, Town is working with a uh, company right now, looking at doing doing some uh, updates and modernization yeah, of, all our, of all of our websites from the ground up. So yeah. uh, watch for that. You know, coming soon. You know, uh, somebody was just commenting up above. Uh, we've been doing this for like two straight days, and sometimes we forget that there are brand new people joining us. Uh, so we're gonna jump in and kind of introduce ourselves for a sec. My name is Randall Bills. Creative Director for Catalyst Game Labs, and I've been doing Battletech for a very long time in about every capacity. Lauren Coleman, uh, owner, CEO of uh, Catalyst Game Labs, and uh, 
all around stir of trouble. Very, very apt discussion, Ray. I'm Ray Rastia. I'm the Battletech line developer, and I've also been doing Battletech now for longer than I could imagine. <laughs> and I'm Brent Evans. I'm the senior art director at Catalyst Game Items. Me and my team, we make it look pretty. That's our job. And people want to know, did you lose a bet because you're wearing a Draconis Combine hat? Uh, it's secret code. Okay. Secret code. You know who you are. <laughs> the call to action has gone out. Nice. Uh, question for Lauren. What is your favorite CGO game and why? Ooh. That's, Playing that's, favorites. That's, that's all, like that's, choosing your favorite kid. Like, yeah, well, <laughs> um, my favorite game, I there, I love playing them. If I don't love playing any of them, I wouldn't publish them. So I like playing all the games. But my favorite, the one that calls me the most, has got to be the Duke still. Yep. I knew you were going to say that. Writing, I'll always write in the Bowser universe because you know, it's, it's such a great universe to write in. But play it. I have played so many games of the Duke. I have never gotten tired of it. I would play it right now because I just, I, it, it just, Something in my mind loves what happens when I'm playing that game. I know. There's a huge amount of replayability. I the love, the Duke Duke so love that game. Yep, totally so, agree. It, it's the Duke. But, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, more standard weight tripods win, Ray? Standard weight? Yeah, meaning not super heavies. Uh, we've got enough. We've got enough. <laughs> we'll, do a, uh, we'll do an Urbivec. Uh, let's see. Will the Celestial Metals come with lane. a coupon for a free Tetanus Shop booster? <laughs> Uh, probably not. Uh, when are we going to see a Davian Lau character? Lau is the only great house we don't have people descended from Hans. <laughs> um, wow. There, 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 there may be one out there actually. Yeah. Just uh, is there is, is it, there a ha Hans descendant from? Well, Eric? there there was a thing about uh, Caleb and Denai. There may have. I'm not sure if anything happened to happen oh, that or not. It's a thread we haven't. Pulled yeah, on. I don't Does think it's mean, been fully pulled on. I don't so think we should pull on that out, one. Well, I don't know if it's actually even been hinted at. It's been, I know it was, uh, we left it open. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, Rand, are you still scheduled to visit Noble Night Games on Monday, March 25th? Absolutely. I would love that, to see you there. Is that, is that the after Noble Night Games? That's like the, after the, that's the Monday night. No, is that Noble Night Games asking just to make sure they get that out? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. I, I love it if it is. Uh, for Ray. Actually, it's a Brent question. Oh, well, the brand. Do you have any new artists joining the team for Leviathan's The Great War? Uh, I haven't received the specs for it, but if there are, if, if there's going to be the need for it, then we'll have to find somebody. Uh, we have uh, Marco Penichetti. And Tan. And Tan, Tan are yeah. the two artists that have carried almost the entire load for Leviathan's. Well, they both kind of came out of, out of and, the woodwork, threw their names in the hat, and yeah. just wowed us both. Like, they and, did and amazing both of work. them have been monster artists just for Battletech, Leviathan's. Yeah. They do it all, and we love both of them. Absolutely fantastic. Conductifier, any chance for better shipping rates from the store? Uh, sometimes the rate is half my order cost. It helped if I knew where you were add if you're like overseas and yeah obviously shipping is going to be crazy we're trying to fix that by getting a foreign hub going if you're seeing problems like that domestically all i can guess is that uh your your orders are, are probably a heavier weight small item numbers um there is a magic number where you start getting really great shipping costs on a per dollar basis for the for the product yeah. but I, I don't know exactly where that that falls um we all i can say is we we look at that all the time and uh, we try to always make sure there's a, we have the best ship rates possible. And often Catalyst underwrites a small portion of all shipping anyway for uh, for pick pack and uh, other fees to keep the prices down. But we'll keep we'll keep looking at it. And if uh, if you want to throw me in a little note in there saying, oh, you're from Canada, so yeah, so we're we're mailing you international at the moment. If we can get a Canada hub going, which is in our plans you will get uh, shipping at more local rates. Yeah. So that will be an easy fix once we have the ever-elusive Canadian hub lockdown. The ever-elusive. Yeah, somebody in one of the other questions actually made a recommendation thing on that one, and we we're going to look on, into that. What is the plan for Leviathans at Gen Con this year? Uh, that is really a bring question. I know there's there's going to be lots of fun games. There's lots of stuff going on, but I don't know the exact details on that. Um, so hold that for when they're back in there. Trial under fire. I believe it exists. Trial under fire. That's the uh, the uh, serial I wrote way back when uh, with the uh, Damocles Commando, I think. Um, and I believe the entire story is out there now, available on uh, the Catalyst 
store. So if it's not out there, then it, it fell into the cracks somewhere. Uh, please let me know if you can't find it on the Cattle's Game Lab Shopify store. Yeah, we can. Shipping pick to up. Australia for a single force pack is two twenty five Australian. I thought we had a hub in Australia. No, yet. Well, so we do, but it didn't have it didn't have enough stuff in it yet. So we are oh. we're, we're revamping that one. So it was a, that was our first hub, and it was kind of working. We're fixing it to make it work better, and then we'll basically restock it, okay. and that will basically allow them to order that stuff from the uh, the yeah. local hub. Okay, somebody earlier was asking about my tour directly after Adepticon. I have just reposted to our social media, uh, both my own Instagram as well as Catalyst Instagrams, as well as my own Facebook page, the graphic, so you can see the Monday to Saturday dates that I will be at. So please go ahead and look at that. Also, uh, we're going to be expanding those tours. Aaron and myself are also going to be going out, so look for that soon. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, have you looked into faction flags? Absolutely, we've looked into that. Um, yeah, t uh, our our swag our swag expert really wants to get those uh, figure out how to get those done. Flags or banners? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's being looked into. Trying to find a really good material um, is what he's working on right now. Yeah, you got to make sure it can handle handle weather. <laughs> yeah, like that. That's actually um, pretty brutal. I saw a few things scroll off. One was, will Lauren be at, at Essence Beal this coming year? I don't, I think I'll be going to one of the international shows um, this year at the end of the year. I don't know which one at this moment. Um, uh, my, my, my travel was a little limited recently. I'll be, I'll be getting back into the game here. And uh, I don't know if I'll be at Essence or at our first year at um, potentially demoing at uh, uh, PAX Australia. But my, my plan is to be at one of those two. So I'll, I'll know more a little bit later. And if you, if you saw your question scroll up a ways and we didn't answer it, it probably scrolled up too fast. I yeah. saw a few others. Yeah. If you haven't gotten a question answered, feel free to I, post it again. I saw a great Leviathan's question about, about something about the fleets, and I just couldn't read it fast enough before it disappeared. Yeah. So there's a, why are almost all of the items and clothing of certain sizes out of stock? Uh, there's kind of a twofold there. Uh, one is when we first started putting them in at the beginning of last year, uh, it's always just kind of a guess as to which factions are going to, you know, that are going to get a lot of sales and which aren't. Um, and then the second part is really you can always blame the Leviathan's Kickstarter. It just sucks all of the energy and time out of everything. We have a massive T-shirt order uh, underway right now, both new ones as well as restocks. And so hopefully in the next month or two, there'll be a huge restock of shirts to the store. Uh, let's see. What is the biggest change from 2012 Leviathans to Leviathans the Great War? Um, I think the biggest change is it has been a little more oriented towards the uh, modern kind of tournament army builder play. Uh, you absolutely certainly can just build and play how you wish. Uh, but there is now a point system built in from the get-go um, and a fleet building uh, that is really designed. And uh, also uh, uh, Admiral cards. There's also ground fleet. So there's or uh, uh, like ground troops you can have, artillery pieces. There's planes. So there's actually, you know, the game's 85% the same. But that last 15% really makes a big difference in how much flavor and the way you can play it. Trial and Fire was only available as an ebook, not print on demand. I missed that part of the question earlier. You want to do a print on demand for Trial and Fire. Um, I will ask John Helfers about that. I don't see why we couldn't do it. Um, the biggest issue would just be is it thick enough? It was a chapter serial. I want to say it was like better than a novella, but not really novel length, if I'm remembering correctly. So I'm not sure if it's got enough thickness to put a good spine on it, but I'll find out. I'll ask John uh, tonight. Uh, yeah, there's been a couple of questions asking about the uh, ETA on the Hour of the Wolf audiobook. I don't know that answer at all. That's uh, another thing we'll need to ask John and hopefully have him put into the next Q&A that he's in. Um what are the plans for Leviathan's past American and Japanese fleet boxes after the Kickstarter fulfillment later this year? I was that question again. Uh, well, the uh, the first five factions fulfill later this year. 
uh, we will then be looking towards, we will wait until it also goes out into distribution to see how the game does in stores. Uh, based upon that, we will then look at, are we going to run a second Kickstarter for the Japanese, Austro-Hungarians, or Americans, or just put them out and release them? Uh, we don't really need to think beyond those because that's already a year to plan. Um, and then we'll get into what what do we do next beyond that. And Leviathan's Kickstarter question, is 90% fulfillment prior to Gen Con 24 possible? Uh I, I mean, I guess it's possible. I would say it's probably not likely, um, but the molds are underway now. We really need to get another six to eight weeks under our belt before we'll really be able to understand are we going to be able to do that or not. Yeah, we. Uh, I, I am on your side. I, I want, I'm pressing these guys to get Leviathans, you know, through faster than maybe they want me to, to do it because I, I really want to get this thing fulfilled. I understand you've been waiting a lot longer than the uh, the uh, Mercenaries Kickstarter. Uh, Leviathans took a little longer than we thought it would to get all, we wanted to get all the fleets in. Well, and, it, and, and, and it was Battletech. You yeah, keep Battletech, trying to dissemble on that. No, Battletech, Battletech, Battletech Kickstarter Battletech destroyed, derailed destroyed every other aspect but of our we, company. We, there was also a it choice, for a a choice on our part to, because that's where we had, you know. That, that's where you got to put the resources. Yeah. So, and it's all glorious, and every yeah. every bit of success that Battletech has cascades down to more success for other, every other game yeah. we do. So just we, to be clear that when we say that, we're not necessarily trying to make excuses. We're just trying to be blunt, yeah. but also say it's amazing the other things we get to do with our other properties yeah. because of the success of the Mercy. Yeah, Leviathan will have a much better rollout because of it. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, let's see. Is there, uh, with the massive success you all had, is there any guys looking forward to it? Is there anything that you guys are looking forward to doing other than looking like you're waiting for a heart attack? Look at you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, type uh, <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, to be honest, as much as I'm going to crawl across the finish line at the end of the year, a, a broken husk. Uh, I am very much looking forward to all the traveling I'm going to do yes. uh, to shake hands and hand out patches to absolutely everyone. Who you may I? Yes. That, that is just a uh, sacrifice. sacrifice. Sacrifice I am willing, willing to, to make. make. So, no, that that's what I'm looking most towards is just this year and all this traveling and sitting down at your gaming tables and your stores and tossing some dice. Uh, will we ever get the good partial cover rollback, the plus three? <laughs> uh, no. No. no, the that it is. Uh, we we love that where it's at. Uh, any Can I idea just say, for... as an aside, that uh, as far as the heart attack comment, that my team really does look out for me, and these guys here really look out for me and make sure that I'm not um, too um, overloaded. Uh, let's see. Do we have an ETA and Leviathan's the Thank Great you. War You're rules welcome. release? Uh, hopefully. Maybe the next four to six weeks. Uh, it is in the final stages of uh, development. It'll head to edit uh, over into layout very quickly. Um, so it is coming. Uh, so can I use the ship quirks and crew ability cards from the 2012 in the new game? Probably not. Uh, I think there's been enough drift and enough rebalancing on some of those that those probably won't work. You'll need to redo them or something? Uh, uh, yeah, we'd have ones. to rebalance them do new for, ones. for what we've done. Do new ones. There are a lot of mechs from the old Kickstarters not yet produced as plastics. Uh, I, I assume what you mean is there's just a lot of mechs that we haven't gotten to. Uh, and yes, we're moving on. You know, <laughs> if, if ask somebody and they will share you the spreadsheet that uh, we allowed the Kerenskis to share online, of the next like three years of force packs that we are looking at, so yeah, a big part of that is that we started releasing uh, vehicles. Yeah, uh, and like that, if it feels like there's fewer mechs going, it's also because they're being reinforced by the sheer number of vehicles that we added. Yeah, uh, yep. Crazy Slings, uh, he wants to know about a set of maps that recreate a timeline event scenario. Example: the war games between House Davian and House Lau. 
We're um, not at that place yet, but it's a cool idea. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Well, we we've we've we done have a we've done a scenario like like um I mean back when we went the Dragon Roars we did we did like wave maps and we've done wave maps for other big invasions. So we do we have done some things like that like star maps. Um, no, that I think you're talking about playable scenario maps. Playable right? scenario maps. I think okay. it's playable scenario maps, but at a larger scale. Okay. I think that's worth referring to. Like all, to. like all the uh, two kid maps of, uh, kind of things, and that's kind of yeah. cool. Uh, will the battlefield support rules be included with the Mercs box? Absolutely, including all of the um, rules for the vehicles part of the battlefield supporter in there. Uh, Brent, there was a question up there about is there going to be more high quality prints? We really, really hope so. We've been trying to get high quality prints for 15 years, and this is the first time we've ever actually pulled it off. Uh, at, at a quality level that we felt hit the mark we were aiming at. Uh, so hopefully this has proven the success model, and we just got to dial things in and pr figure out what we're printing moving forward because we do have a pretty amazing library of illustrations built We up. do. We really do. Someone said, did you, did, so sorry, did we hear you say that you tend to be at PAX Australia this year? We are on the waiting list for, for doing a, a, a booth at PAX Australia. We sent a scout force down there last year. And so we know we would like to do something. Um, and so if we, I heard we maybe move off the waiting list and getting a booth, we will see. And uh, a few more things scrolled off the map. The there was map a question again. about, does CGL have any convention traditions, models, or superstitions? So if anyone can see that, uh, the tradition is don't let Randall hurt himself or kill himself. And uh, generally, if I if I'm not bleeding, then the convention hasn't started yet. So yeah, you do have a supernatural ability to to trip into, fall over, or get under. Yeah, a wide variety of heavy items. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I've had some uh, pretty close brushes with some a lot of pain. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Let's see. How do the Inner Sphere battle armor look up close? Improvement in quality over the clan elementals. Off the top of my head, I can't remember on the uh, on the those themselves. I can say that as a whole, if you look at the mercenary plastics and compare them with the inner sphere plastics, yeah. there absolutely is percentage points improvement. You you can see it. Yeah, degrees of sharpness, degrees yeah. of just clarity. Clearly, when they were pulling from the from molds, and, that, and right. that's and that's a big shout out to Leah, our yeah. manufacturer, who is a fantastic partner. Chris and John and and yeah. Leah and all of them and they just continue to do better and better yeah, products just for us. Yeah, kind of dial in and yep. ranch when, it up. When will the Irby Lamb find its way onto the web store? Uh, maybe two months or so. It's uh, it may be three. It really depends on where it is on the water. Uh, but it is all on the water and it's not tied to the Kickstarter. So whenever we have it, it's going to go up. Uh, let's see. Can you please have a separate Leviathan fiction submission process email? The Battletech submission queue is 400 plus days long. Uh, I will mention that to John. I think that's a great idea. That is a great idea. Uh, will we get more alien world maps? Yes. Absolutely want that. I thought those turned out magnificent, and I would love to do more wacky worlds. Yeah, when we were looking at the upcoming sets and what we wanted to do next, we actually were talking about how the Alien Worlds were some of the most satisfying ones we did just because they looked so unusual. How heavy and solid is the Precinct or Marshall of the Universe book? Asking for wanting to beat the lore into people. <laughs> you, it is it is big and it is solid and you absolutely could beat the lore into people. It is a deadly blunt <laughs> instrument. Yeah. We do recommend that you just let them read it instead. <laughs> you know, I, I, I guess. How, how heavy is that thing? Do you know? Oh, no, off the top it, of my head. five pounds, maybe? No, I think, it's, I think it's more than that. Is it? It's pretty heavy. It is. I, it's I, heavy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, when will the first Starling pack arrive for sale on the web store? Uh, that, I think, is within, say, around 30 days. It has cleared the canal, and so it's just it's got to get into the warehouse and start selling it. Who'd have thought we'd ever say that about a product? Well, it's cleared the canal. Yeah. Uh, will there be a high-end high prints on the CGL store? We don't currently have a plan for that. It's uh, a, yeah, it's a pack the logistics it's a packaging, behind it's a, it and yeah. packaging are the, the packaging like, mail will be a pain. Yeah, high-end art prints, you can't have any damage, so. Yep. You can the Great War rules release. I think we already answered that one, right? Yeah, I already answered that one. 
Well, they may have been on here. Uh, uh, the the Leviathan's War. Great War will release hopefully within about six to eight weeks, maybe less. Um, World or map packs. Battletech terrain. Are you going to have GF9 Hextech take care of that side of the market? GF9 and Hextech are not Battletech uh, official Battletech anything. Um, uh, they are doing their own their own thing, and they're not coordinating with us, or uh, it's not part of Battletech. Um, are we doing our own Battletech terrain? We would really like to do Battletech terrain. Now, whether that is us ourselves doing it or we license it out, uh, we will literally be having meetings tomorrow to discuss yes. those possibilities. It's but funny. This yeah. is the first one I'd clearly say yes to, and you guys are... I, I was like, well, I want yeah, to say yes. I don't say yes. Actually yet. When I say yes, I get that Randall says he get upset with me. Uh, but in this instance, I think we can say yes. yes I think it's going to be Battletech terrain. I, I think it's going to happen. So long as you don't follow up that yes with, we will be making an MMO, I think we're good to with... Do we do, do, do that too? It'll be out tomorrow. <laughs> uh, let's see. There. Mad Cat 2 and 3 win... Uh, we actually had a big old long conversation about, about those, and ultimately they were one of the some of the last that got cut uh, from our big. Uh, I I didn't think they were in that list. I, I thought, thought two in. made it, three got cut. Am I no, wrong? No, I think that you may be right. No, yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think, we opted, I think Mad Because we had to rejigger and we ended up shifting some No, no, no. I think you're right. I think Mad Cat 2 did get into one of those yeah. future packs. And three, three will get done eventually. It just we didn't just make, haven't found yeah. it. Let's yep. just sneak um, We have access. I saw Coho yeah. asking about Kappas up there, too, about the uh, their their big two-year um, um, item release, uh, th especially like the mugs. So, yes, we do better about getting yourself set aside for shipping. When we invent a new item like the mugs, the first run is going to hit, probably hit our web store just to see how popular it's going to be. If it hadn't been as popular as they were, we would have probably had enough for the Kappas. But because it was so popular, yeah. we knew we'd have to carry the Kappas on a second printing of a second production run of the mugs. So it's actually a good thing it's so late because that means we, we've invented another item that's very popular with the fan base. But yeah, we we will be doing putting more effort into that. I know Rem and Talon are both talking about how to do that to make sure we get you guys out some big boxes in the near future. Uh, that one in particular had an extra element to it is we wanted to make sure that our uh, warehouse and fulfillment could handle the, the breakage possibility. Yeah, we were really worried about that. We were that. worried with the breakage. Yeah. Uh, oh, Rem's on there. Hi, guys. Anything announced that'll be a surprise to me? Well, it hasn't shown up uh, from my personal Instagram yet, so I don't think it's a surprise yet. Nope. Nope. Love you, Rem. <laughs> there there was a question about the terrain can we do buildings but that's we're talking about buildings as well buildings and terrain and and, and that all that all falls in the same category absolutely yeah. uh for the bfms what train would you like next on the list alien worlds arctic volcanic uh I, i'm i'm all fine the just above. yeah all the above uh, they we do have a volcanic map set coming Yes, it is spectacular. That might be, uh, like right now, right? It's always different when you actually put it down and yep. play it. But from the visuals, it might be the coolest looking maps we've done yet. They are stunning. And I cannot wait to see the lush, vibrant colors in a BFM when yeah, we get absolutely. it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. so cool. Yeah, the Alien Worlds one was one of my favorites. I just threw yeah. it out there one day, and then Brett made it look so pretty. Oh, yeah. So it's just a matter of, like, what we need to find out what the next theme is so we can play with, like, really right. weird, awesome colors. And, and honestly, that's a big part of these. The The plan is literally when we're at the demo player area looking across a con convention player area. Yeah. You know, having 30 tables, and each one is, uh, like, a totally different color scheme and a vibrant mass that's, like, bouncing off the table and shining out. It's awesome. So yep. we think and about that. How about a snow Arctic map? Do we have one uh, of those? We do have one of those in, in yes, uh, we do plant. Have it in, yep. Yep. There are fact, so the many maps in plan. Yep. <laughs> uh, how would a second Battletech cartoon impact CGO plans moving forward? I would love any kind of like just online anything? cartoon, movie, TV, streaming, anything. It's just not in our control. Yeah, that's ultimately up to a would, degree of licensing and contacts that yeah, we have that's, no. And how it affects CGL? Only in a good way because yeah. anything that promotes the Battletech property or other properties, shadow any property out to the public, is simply good for us. Well, and we've proven that we can crank out product faster than anybody else can. So even if we have to play catch up, we yeah. can get there. Yeah. 
but unfortunately, utterly out of our control. Uh, would you guys do C uh, STLs of items to start people with printers? Uh, talking about terrain, right? We have no problem. In fact, some of the discussions we'll be having tomorrow is about STLs for terrain. Absolutely. And earlier today. Yeah. Uh, is there an ETA for Leviathan's TTS? That should be coming any day now. In fact, I believe this convention just kind of caught in the way. I would not be surprised if just the next week or two that's finally available to backers. Hi, Rem. It's going fine. Thank you. I appreciate you asking. Can it be this? We miss. We miss. I uh, sorry. We and we sorry. We missed you here. We'd like to have seen you, but we'll. I'll, I'll catch up with you next time. Oh, I missed that. Favorite moment of Adepticon. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Do we miss another one above? Yeah. The the can it uh, can it be that some of the new maps are refurbished old designs? One of the Kickstarter maps looks like the all favorite base map from the 90s and the answer is yes yes absolutely the both the mercenaries box as well as the uh savannah's map pack and neoprene maps are all refurbished maps uh and we literally went to the demo agents yeah they gave us a list of these and the they gave a list to say these are the best maps that we have used for decades and we both refurbished it, but we used it as an opportunity as needed to redesign them a little bit sometimes to make them a little more playable. Yeah. So like the two old large lake maps uh, or the, um, oh my gosh, one with all the rivers. Uh, Lakes and rivers? The, 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 lake, the, the river delta. delta. The river Lakes and river rivers, delta. river delta. delta. We're almost unplayable. And we've now add, snuck in that, that wonderful level zero depth water, zero the water. depth zero water. Yeah. Uh, and they are fantastically playable now. So, yeah. yep. Favorite moment of Adepticon. Let's go around the table. Hooray. I mean, it's kind of early. So, you guys, okay, raising a mouthful of water right. and cookie. Uh, so my, far. Not a, one particular thing, but uh, talking to everybody, meeting all the people and talking, and it's a good time in general. I mean, you're cooking. No, not you. I'll go next. I'll go next. I, I think that was when. Uh, Michael Stackpole and Brian Young co-opted my partner in the two-on-two -two battle deck earlier. And they stacked in the back. In the back oh, I, heard the back. I wasn't here, but I heard Dude, about it. Dude, it was glorious. Oh, if I oh, refer to movie, I had that moment of, please tell me this is the heavy armor, armor version. It, it was not the heavy armor version. <laughs> and that's how Bronx's Horde was born. Yes. Uh, I think my favorite, um, trying to stay different from that, because obviously... Obviously, uh, this was the best, but yeah. Well, and like, you know, talking with people, being able to hand, give a handshakes and hand out yeah. patches. I've given out over 250 patches already, so it's been fantastic. But actually, this show has gotten so big that there's actually ancillary um, things going on in other hotels, and I've never been able to make it over there. So earlier today with another industry person, John, uh, we went over to there. And suddenly to see a whole other area, giant room filled with historical gamings, uh, most of which I've played, to be able to sit there and talk with them. And then right in the middle of it, suddenly have a batch of guys stand up as Battletech fans to come over and shake my hand nice. and get patches. So, yeah, that was that was probably mine. For me, it's just been just catching up with a lot of friends who I really uh, had been missing, you know, recently. So just showing up and being on the floor, getting the, you know, being around the energy of a convention again. Uh, really needed that. So just I I love conventions. I love the energy. I love the the the, the chaos. I, yeah. I just it's, love everything about them. So this felt good. Uh, let's see. So far, every day, everybody's feeling pretty good on day two. Poor Michael lost his voice, but he's feeling feeling good. I checked on him. <clears throat> um, how is poor Michael's voice holding up? Not well. Uh, better than yesterday. Yeah. We're, inst we're, inst we're installing some electronics to make them uh, a little more ro robust. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you seen shirtless Alaric? I have. It was the highlight of breakfast. I have. Oh. There's a story behind this. I mean, okay, but why? Oh, poor decisions were made. And people doubled down on, on the, so on the bet. Big, big Red 40 Tech. Or is it Big Red Tech? Or big, big Red, red 40, 40 Tech. Boy, big Red 40 Tech during the Kickstarter was running some stuff and then basically said, hey, I'll commission a shirtless Alaric piece if we get X number of people 
uh, in the stream, I think it was. And he made sure when he told us that that, that he this was some, an impossible number. He did number. some astronomically There's high no number. There's no way this was even. And so of course, no, they I immediately. Had not, I had not seen a shirtless Aller, but now I can't unsee it. So now no. it's. Thank yeah. you for putting that in my head. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> if we all saw it, you had to see it too. Yeah. Yeah, that's been burned into the retinas. Uh, how is a hiring of rebel shirts affected CGL operations? Um, in many, many ways. Both, almost all of them good. Um, uh, Rem has brought a lot of energy and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of passion to to all of our our, our operations. She um, also lended a hand on things that a lot of us were just so over yeah overly taxed to handle. So. Um, she she brought a lot of, a lot of new uh, new thoughts and some new ideas on marketing and advertising and, and other Which things. Has been very good. Um, she worked really hard on some of our Kickstarters to allow you know. Kickstarters have a tendency to like distract the whole company, and because yeah. Rem and other people were on it, Randall and I did not have to go fully down the rabbit hole. We got more stuff done. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, she's she's still finding her way at Catalyst. We are still finding our way with her. Yeah. So as that continues to move forward, I expect it to uh, to keep me you know, producing good things. Explosive growth always has growing pains. <laughs> yeah, I know you were there. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm yeah. being nice. I love you, Rem. <laughs> Uh, let's so, see, it was um, mentioned it's hard to bring back the old source books for reprint, but is there anything in the works to bring <laughs> print on demand to drive through RPG? Um, drive through RPG is simply the mechanism at the very tail end that allows you to host and then do print on demand. All of the work that you have to do to get a file ready for that still has to happen. Yeah. And so. And we it's would, a lot of work. And it it's is not a quick, so easy push much button. work. Someday, I w I'm hoping we will share a video or at least a series of blog posts that show the insane amount of work we did as we have created a replica of Shadowrun First Edition that will be out this summer as part of uh, the uh, 35th anniversary for Shadowrun. So we, we have this massive backlog, and we want to get there. It's just time-consuming. Yeah. I like someone said. Lauren looks toasted brown next to Randall. I think they're calling you pasty white, is what they're uh, really saying. Uh, no, I'm not you pasty white. You have pretty white. good color, though. You, look you just have a lot of color. Spend, spend, spend a month in Puerto Rico. I know. You're, you're getting color whether yeah, you want it or not. So, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. By the way, I'd really like to see the Mech Warrior Slayer's Guide up on the website soon. There's a there's just a long list of of products to get up on there. Absolutely. What's that about? T POD TRO Vehicle Annex Revised. It was one of the books that we started putting their POD it in the review process, the physical book we got back was riddled with problems, and it was like, "Am I going to keep digging into this book, or yeah, get or get those, stuff yeah. out, or, 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 stuff out. Well, or get stuff out for the Kickstarter?" Yeah, okay, exactly. that's what. Did. Yeah, Kickstarter stuff has to take priority. Yeah, no so doubt. so I, could that happen this year? I Possibly. think so. Possibly. I think so. Uh, dear Randall, Lauren, Brent, and Uncle Ray, can we pretty pretty please have an updated Thorn? That amount of firepower to 20 ton deserves some TLC. We were actually talking about another Comstar yeah. pack that we could do because we absolutely could fill it with those other 2750 designs. Yeah, and there's actually a and really good there, looking list when you get down. Absolutely. To so a thorn in there, you bet. Mechware Slar 7 Guide. Yeah, just uh, putting that back in the. I want to do more solar. I mean, I want to do some more solar solar products anyway. So. Oh well, yeah. So well, do the we. truth is, we want to do it, but in order to do that, we have to have those re redesigned uh, uh, bat maps for the different. Yeah. Uh, so and that's yeah. that's. We were gonna just reskin those, and then the more we thought about, it, we're like, no, we need to we need to really redesign these a bit. Do, make them. Yeah. Awesome. So the the There's amount. Of, so know. for those that have been able to play on the Tukiad maps, yeah, I hope you can appreciate how insanely difficult those were to do and how much time and attention. But also and, totally worth and, it. And so we want to make sure. No, no, it's that. totally worth yeah. it. But it was so difficult and time but, consuming to do those. And I think we want to give the Solaris maps the same, same level, of level of attention. And they will be a whole other level of difficulty. Yep. So we have them in the works, but it is definitely downstream. I've seen two questions about the shrapnel submission backlog. I'll have, a, I'll have a conversation with John Helfers about that because sure. if, if there is a truly a 400-day backlog of of shrapnel submissions, uh, someone needs to we'll start wading into that. So, uh, let's see. Randall, let see aren't, do. Uh, aren't we doing for a Beard-Off event for the Clan Invasion Kickstarter? There's actually a few last little uh, 
ephemeral things uh, like the beard off uh, that we need to try and get through. It's yeah, actually this is the day two, day two of this con. I think that's come up like six times. Yeah, well, that's people really want to shave your beard. No, 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 no. That was the beard off with give me some scissors. Uh, right yeah, with just, uh, uh, Mitch and Lauren. Oh yeah. Yeah. When we won. Yeah, we did. In fact, uh, was it Jordan's son who was throwing insane amounts of money on the table to get those artillery shots? And we were still winning. Yeah. So, was, yeah. We were then, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I was able to, I was able to grow a beard to be able, be able to shave a beard. Oh, there's that, too. Admittedly, for the beard off thing, at dinner, the dinner that you weren't able to make with Jordan. Uh, I said, just so you know, you know, at the, when last we did the beard off, the challenge was that the next one was going to be in their game. And I now have 3,800 hours logged in his game. He laughs he's like, oh, you're going to toast me in my game too, aren't you? I'm like, well, that's what I said, because they, they were saying the next time we play, right, that we're going to flip it. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure. Bro. I mean, I wouldn't, <laughs> but Brent told, yeah, manhandling all over the place. I saw a few good questions scroll off the screen before I could I could really get them into memory. So Is that Avanti's Angel shirt? Yes. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Angel shirt. So, uh, let's see what uh, what time is it? Oh, we're uh we're actually past time that here. Past. That's that, right. That went like lightning fast. Okay, so all right. All right. How about this, guys? How about no new questions? But if you asked a question that got skipped, we'll give you a few more minutes to get it back in there. So we before we uh, wrap up. Wow, yeah. there's actually like a priority list, and they know what, what number they're at. That's kind of cool. I didn't realize we had a new yeah. numerical queue. Yes. Uh, in Mechware Destiny, is there any plans to expand Battletech Override? Someone asked uh, of a third battle system, but Override already exists. Could it expand? I mean, maybe? Why? I've never heard of that. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. Uh, this is for Ray. Is it? Do we know if the Interfury is able to make jump-capable battle armor? Aren't they all, aren't all battle armor? I thought a lot capable? of them were. Yeah. With the Esser impact on the, the back great, shoulders. The Great yeah. Death Legion, the Kagi. We, yeah. yeah. I don't see why not. Uh, I've been I've been far enough away from those rules that I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> how is the Battletech cookbook coming? Oh, it is getting yeah. on a ship right now. Uh, That's how it's coming in the, next, in the next seven days, I think, roughly. Oh, I thought it was getting on a ship. We had to stop it to like, divide out for the different hubs. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. Uh, looking forward to meeting Randall and Chums at UK Games Expo in June. I can't wait to be there. We're going to storm into that show and just throw Battletech hard. And take lots of photos smiling. Absolutely. Yes. Just like this. I saw it. You heard it. Hold on. Do it again. There you go. That's kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> uh, everyone says one mech and make that first fork pass, <laughs> that force pack tomorrow. Well, I know I can name Brent's <laughs> mech, or uh, Lauren's mech. He wants a solitaire. I do want the we solitaire. We haven't gotten to the solitaire yet. What's the mech you want to do that you haven't done yet? Albatross. Oh, that's right. You said that. Um, Mad Cat 2. MK2. Um, man, I've had so many of the ones I want done. I want... Uh... Don't take yours, then. Oh. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think the next one that I wanted was like the Scarabus, and I'm pretty sure we snuck that into a pack. Mm -hmm. Such a brutal pack. Because it's awesome. That, oh, those 3050 designs are fantastic. Um, the Vise and Ship Sprues purchased separately. Kit oh, ships. kit bashing. Uh, we will see. Uh, I think we're just need to get it out. <laughs> and if it does well, then I would love to look at just doing it as Sprues. Yeah. All right. Um, I think and with that, we are good. Thank you once again so much for being here and enjoying this with us. We love uh, these Q&A sessions. <clears throat> and uh, I think we will call it good for tonight, and we will fire it up tomorrow morning. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thank yep. you for the people who are in the audience being uh, really uh, awesome shills for us. Thank you, Ram. Uh, <laughs> have, a good, have a good night, guys. Thanks, gang. Thank you all. Night.